borderline TOS unacceptable due to the racism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Realize, oh, that wasn't. Oh, that wasn't live. Oh. Oh man. So to remember well, those. Remember those. Sorry, you missed it, everyone. Luckily, Dev's here, ben, so he can ben, give us the seat ben, pass. Ben, ben. <laughs> <laughs> Rags, before the show started, you were praising Nazis. Tell me about it. What, what was going well, on? <laughs> well, you know, ever since I learned about Hitler's city beautification projects and his mandatory scoliosis testing and the Autobahn and Volkswagen, I was like, you know what? I can see the good side and the bad side. You know? <laughs> History always, you know, they always leave out all the good Dude, stuff. I'm setting up a video, and in the bottom right, it's got this pop-up I've never seen in my life on YouTube saying, do you see that your video has fully processed? It's like, I've set up a... St- what are you talking about? <laughs> What? You this is like press yes, eyes? no, or I'm not no. sure. They're gonna find out this is all pre-recorded. Oh my god! Oh no! Speaking of things also, on the bottom right, I don't. I I still hate those little emoji icon thingies that pop. Oh, it's not on the stream. You made it go away. Wait, I did. How did you do that? It was, it's not on the stream. But I, I didn't do anything to get rid of them, but I guess they're gone now. Oh yeah. I wonder if because... it's just one of uh, Google's like testing things, so they just got rid of it silently. Yeah, I don't on see the that live... anymore. Yeah, the yeah, live stream is right. It's not there I, anymore. I don't know. No, I it's it's on mine. Yeah, it's on, on, my uh, on the it's on the EFAB stream, stream, it's not there. But uh, I don't know. I, I, like oh, I said, I didn't weird. do nothing. Good. I didn't Good. do nothing. I hate it. I don't need more emojis in my life. I need other things. Yeah, like friends while gaming. But <laughs> I don't need more emojis Rags. in my life. Rags, do you, do you happen to need more dev in your life? Uh. Is that hmm. the fact that he hesitated? Well, I want to. <laughs> you Dev answered the question already. <laughs> Dev, can, of all people, he would appreciate me actually thinking about an answer before blurting something out. And oh my god, you want to get into the crazy conversations we've had <laughs> over the past three months, we, Rex? <laughs> we haven't gotten into any. Have we? <laughs> have you and I? No, no, no. You've been watching them, and you I've always been, post prize Pikachu that. faces. <laughs> I, I, I poke my head in there. And I'm going like, why the fuck does Dev even? Dev has got to have more productive things to do. <laughs> to be honest, it actually helps me kind of hone my eventual video on those topics a lot. We're talking about a secret Discord, by the way, chat. <gasps> yeah, but, this is a know, secret Discord. Yeah. yeah. The, the, reason, the reason that I, the reason I, the reason I ask is because uh, I'm looking at the thumbnail of the stream mauler, and there's two devs. Are oh. there two devs? That's you put me in there twice. <laughs> arguably, two too many. Mauler. Well, isn't that just evidence that, that I love you? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Besides, they're different eras of Dev. You you know that. If you That's love true. Dev, you post his face. Twice. Also, <laughs> neither of them are the current era. <laughs> <laughs> I, I prefer a, I, I prefer classic to, uh, and you're orange. You're dead naming Dev. Dev. I think it's a reference Dead to imaging. Dev's your favorite show. Mm. All right. Who did I miss Dev, out? Like, Who did I not care you about? Don't, you don't actually like Devs, do you, Dev? Um, I don't even know what it is. Oh, good. Thank God. I actually just like anything called Dev specifically. Oh, okay. Oh man, okay, you know what's great? So what? Dev is actually a short form for my full name, right? But I go by Dev in Devin's pretty much everything team. I do. Is your full name everything Devastator? Devin Devin Clayter? <laughs> Devolisher. Dev Listen, Oliver. Whenever, here. The Devastator. So, Devin's you know how when I, digital. Devbird. Oh God. Okay, listen. You know how whenever you you like have to call someone and it's annoying because calling someone sucks now because you you call up a uh, a company on the phone and on the phone. You call up a company on the phone and it's like, okay, I gotta actually talk to a real person to resolve this issue. And then it always so sends you want. to. Yeah. yeah, sometimes. But here's the thing, though. It always the downside is it always sends you to some foreign call center in India where you can barely understand yeah. them. And so you're talking to them, right? And I say, my name's Dev. And they're like, oh, are you Indian? Because Dev's actually an Indian name. And I have to be like, oh, no, no, I can't actually understand your native language. Please don't. They can probably tell by your accent. <laughs> you, have a, you have a very, very thick Indian accent. Mm. I've always known that a about North, him, yeah. The North New Delhi accent. You've now reminded me of something <laughs> really fucking annoying that happened to me. So wait, go, go ahead and finish whatever you were saying, because now I want to complain about something. Nope, I'm good. Go ahead. All right, oh, that so... was it? Oh okay. You know, uh, you know, I was, I was. Uh... Wait, 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 Mahler, wait. Sorry, Dev never told us what Dev is short for. Oh right, go ahead. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> oh, like, or is is that? Why your would real you? Name? Why would you set up the like... mystery just not to say anything? Ah. What are you, J.J. Abrams? What is this? <laughs> yep. Super secret. <laughs> That's how it is. That's how it is. It's well, in the vault. You know what? Maybe listen, in the listen... next stream, we'll we'll unwrap <laughs> that mystery box. I'm gonna tell if those everybody. Those you guys. If, if there are crazies in the chat who actually care, I have a Kiwi Farms thread, so go, you know, knock yourself out. But 
Yeah. All right. All I, 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 <laughs> just like, I, I do keep, like, oh, what's your name, friend? And he's like, if you want to know all my information, I guess you could go fast. Uh, my information <laughs> is actually leaked. Here's the thing. Farms, like, I, really I keep I keep as much as I can private because there are some weirdos out there. I have had, like, a few threats and, like, some stuff be sent to my house. But, like, it's still all out there if you really want to know. What do know? they send to your house? Cheese? Um, pizzas? Cheese pizza. Which I guess would, would have cheese. Yeah. Really? Cheese pizzas? Somebody in the chat said David. I think that's canon. David. Oh, Devin. Devin Sawa. Devin. I did. I did get a box of poop once. Hmm. If, from from the pleasant. dollar. What poop did you store. do? What did you do? From the dollar it? poop store. No. <laughs> no, just someone who doesn't like my takes. I guess mailed me a box of poop, and it's like, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Damn. Fuck. Well, have you considered so buy one get your one free on everything now? Consider that was. <laughs> That's, That's right. Do it. All my political persuasions have completely flipped 180. That would be funny, though. Because the box that of way. poop. Like, poop <laughs> have sent me a receptacle of, of feces. <laughs> like, hey, you're you're gonna say them all, or like what? What, what did right. you? So I was uh, I was yeah. I was just doing a browse on my phone, and I got a message from my own company, the phone company I'm with, saying, uh, in in like a week from now. Uh, your account will no longer be able to browse anything adult, including like violence, drugs, or uh, explicit content. And I was like, "What the fuck?" And bear in mind, I've been with uh, the people I'm with for fucking ages. So I was like, "Why is that happening?" And I kind of ignored it. So I was like, I, "That can't be real." Like, I'm sure it's it's, it, it's probably like a restriction that doesn't actually do anything. But you know. Lo and behold, a week later, uh, loads of sites were just blocked off because it was like this is too adult for you. And I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" So I um I ring them you up. You can go to like E six two one or I couldn't go to all of my yeah. favorites. It was horrifying. It was no point in living. Dang. So I had to make sure you know something was a mistake. Inside galleries, U eighteen Chan. And so I, I I contact the. You know how it works these days. Everything is fucking automated. It's like please press one if you want blah blah blah. And I uh, followed the exact one to what I needed solved. And so it was like, you need to go to the website. And I was like, okay. I went to the website to start up an account that apparently I didn't have yet, uh, just to sign in and confirm that I'm old enough to be able to see fucking someone punching someone, I guess. I don't know. And um, they, they were like, no, uh, you, you got to do it through the app. And I was like, the app? Okay, well, where, where, where's that? And they were like, that, you have to do that on your phone. I was like, all right, fine, on the app. Then the app was like, you can't. So you can't create the account on the app. You have to create the account on the website. And then the website was like, you still have, you have to start with the app though. You have to make sure you have an account first with the app. Then you can come to the website in order to sign in to then unlock the app usage. So then, then you can uh, change the settings on your, your, uh, Jeez, they really and, don't want you beaten off. Oh, oh, that was just like this is uh <laughs> this is this is excessive. Like what the fuck is going on? And so uh, I ended up trying to get through to a human. You know how it works on those fucking press one, press two, press three things. I was just like, which which one of these gets me to a person? And um, I checked a couple of them, but uh, they were all dead ends. The one that uh, I needed help on, it was like press one for you know this answer, press two for this answer, press three for this answer, press four if. And I was like, is this the one where it says I can talk to a person or hang on to talk to a person? And it was like, please go to the website. I was just like, press five for blue ball. It's uh, just absolute pain. So um, I was going to go to the, the, the company for it in my town. I was like, I'll just talk to someone in person. And then I thought, well, wait, I'll just ring that building so that then whoever's in there can tell me what I'm supposed to do. And this fucking guy, he answers, and you might be expecting a bad result. No, this is like the best result ever. He was, he was just like, hi. And I was like, so I got this restriction on my account. How do I get rid of it? And he was like, oh, yeah, we've had a few people so just... just Press one, two, four, four, and then say you want to cancel your contract. And I was like, but I don't. He's like, no, no, that you you won't. That they'll get scared and they'll send a human to you straight away. And then you can oh, just really? talk to them about it. <laughs> and I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, thanks. And I did. And it's so funny. The robot was like, do you want to cancel your contract? <laughs> I'm not using that voice for any particular thanks, reason. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, I was like, yes, I'd like to tell you, like, are you sure? And it's like, yes, it's like, it's just started ringing immediately. And so I was like, hello, what's, uh, what's, what's happening? What are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I just need you to unrestrict my account. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that easily. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> this is a great service, suddenly. Um, <laughs> are they, I bet, are they having to do that because of a government thing? Probably something like that, yeah. 
And then once they do it, they can say, yep, we've done it, government. Don't worry about us. And they just revert everything if people ask. And then they get shit tons of calls of people trying to game this stupid robot so they can get back to having a regular phone. <laughs> I mean, they probably yeah, what, what I've heard, really actually. Stupid. Yeah, well, I think Sargon did a video on it like last year or something is the conservatives in the UK passed a bill or something that made it that you had to opt into pornography in the UK. And that's probably coming into effect. So if you have like internet or you have a phone that has to access certain things, you have to like call your private provider and say, hey, can I have my porn, please? It's probably, it's probably that. <laughs> Imagine to talk to like a representative personally, like a little, little Zoom call. <laughs> like, may I have my porn? He's like, what are you using it for, sir? What kind sir? I wonder if it's just a I wonder if it's just a domain name service block where if you put the IP address into the address bar, it'll actually go through. Um... It was probably something yeah. shitty, but I'm not like, like doing it. crappy. But I was, I was just like, "What the fuck?" And it was so easy to undo, but you couldn't do it through the automated shit because I guess they haven't updated that to just have an easy option. You do, you know what it needs? It's like if you if you if you want to browse porn, just press six, and we'll unblock it. <laughs> like, thank you, bye. Yeah, it's like the websites that say uh, "click here" if you're over eighteen, and then they're like, "Well, they said they're over 18, so I believe yeah. them. There we go. I, I guess it. the issue with that is you'll have like a thirteen year old who's like uh four, please, and he just presses it. And well, you know what? Like, it's well. a big scary world out there. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out, I guess. Oh everything's fixed now, I think. The thumbnail. Yeah, I even had the number of the episode wrong. It's just carnage here today. But <laughs> What is it? We're half, yeah, we're half an hour over the, 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 the <laughs> supposed to start time for me. And over here. We're nearly just good to go. Because everyone's really excited to talk about extra credits. I'm They're, excited uh, to talk mm. about extra credits. One of the greatest it's been quite YouTube some channels. time. Well, it feels weird to talk about them now because uh, I don't even know how much of the history I'm, I'm trying to like share about them is, is within no knowledge or if this is just like ancient lost knowledge. Because the first thing I noticed about them. They've deleted everything. You notice this? What? They, really? They've got uh, really? Their, their history really? only goes up to a year now. Oh shit! That's what? a lot what of stuff that's gone. They killed Dude, it all. That is an insane amount of stuff that's gone. What about extra? Uh, is it the same on like extra history? Uh, I'll their have to check. But channel? the earliest uh, video they've got now is from one year ago, and it's uh, watch extra credits because gaming matters, and it's with the new dude. The uh, the everything is racist dude. That's so they got rid of the pitch up dude? Yeah, pitch up dude's gone. He's been gone for a while. I wonder if they had like a breakup and so they wanted all the old content deleted or something. <laughs> yeah. Your voice is too annoying. You got to go. Yo, but I, his voice oh, was too sorry. annoying, but the new looks guy, like, you know, <laughs> it's going to be great. Like <laughs> still keeps going back. So we need a good. more annoying voice. <laughs> that's wild. That's so much content that just got yeeted. Yeah. It's got to be some Damn. kind of That's years and years. Thing. That, we're talking know. We're, they must be going back a decade of stuff. Well, and of wasn't, course, um, wasn't didn't do you think it had something to do with the escapist? Were they on the escapist before? I don't know. I feel like this is something that somebody's going to. I know think about that's there. right. Because like, oh, they, you know, you know what I think what happened? What? Um, extra history has all the old videos. Uh, so okay. they, yeah, I just noticed that too. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so oh, they've got I videos going back around. twelve years. So I think they okay. renamed extra. They've also got all the uh, extra. They got all the subs as well, haven't they? Yeah, they do like three and a half mil. Because I was like, extra credits has got to have more than a hundred k. That's what I was thinking too. Um, yeah, like, you're right. So does that mean all they're just rebranding? Yeah. Is the cringe voice man is still findable on extra history? What's the <laughs> most popular video? Oh, it is all extra history credits. stuff. Where's the first extra credits video that makes it to the top? Um, um, making it's your not first all game history basics. Stuff, though. Yeah, so probably the first extra credits video on extra history that uh, the top one is four four point four mil. Making your first game basics, I think. At least that's what's coming up. Oh, why the Vita failed? No. Hmm. I liked the Vita. It was all right, you know. It was a cool yeah, Vita was, yeah, it was good hardware. Yeah. So here, the one that went viral a few years back was the uh, evil races are bad game design. This, is. Is. this is the orcs are black yeah, people. Yeah, orcs. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are the orcs yeah. are black people. <laughs> that's on, extra on the internet yeah. during 2019 and 2020. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this fucking yeah, the classic. Nazi one. Bio you didn't ask for it. Enrolled. You didn't choose it. Yet, there it is. <laughs> or, oh, You're a Nazi. This is the thing. Extra credits to us has just been a, like, it just comes up once per, I think it's like one and a half, two years. It's usually about the, about the amount of time. They yeah, say you'll do some something terrible cringe. 
you know, some video that's like, oh, were you paid by like a massive corporation to sling <laughs> their propaganda? Are you real? Are you human? Be honest. Because <laughs> they did, I think it was about six years ago, they released that first video on um, how games should cost more. Um, it was, mm. I think it was six years ago. Uh, they said, yeah, it's, it's crazy that games are $60. They should actually be more. And then everyone was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Who are you Did working you know? for? <laughs> Whose side are you on here? And so yeah. I, guess they didn't get the, I guess they didn't get the picture because two weeks ago, or was it two weeks? Yeah, about two weeks ago. Oh, they haven't done anything since. Interesting. Well, from the sound then, of things, they're going to get their wish because apparently Rockstar is planning to release GTA 6 for more than 60. Probably like 100 or something. I don't oh know where I heard boy. that. but Damn. It seems like something they would do, and then I think the video game industry would be all like, there, the glass ceiling's been broken. Let's all do it now. Mm -hmm. Is it that impressive so if it was glass? You know, it's not hard to break. You could throw like a stove. <laughs> <hard. laughs> like, here, here's the thing. I kind of get their point. <gasps> about the, about, sorry, I have to disagree a little bit. Right? Can I can I at least give you my reasoning though before you lynch me? No. No. I'm not an orc. I'm not an orc. You can't lynch me, okay? Here, <laughs> you're Canadian. Um, Dev here, didn't me, me just, You didn't choose. I'm the here. protagonist. I'm yep. the protagonist from Fallout Four. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'll argument, post man. this. What's your argument? If you, if you don't mind looking at this, I'm just gonna post this image. So this is like a flyer from back in the day, right? I don't and you know see why. It, don't this already, but I know anyway, I, I've already yeah. got so many things <laughs> to comment on. But let well, let's let him say his thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, listen. I'm not married to this position, so if you stomp me into the ground on it, it's okay. You're gonna I get just a divorce want to, today. I, I, I just you want know... to hear what you guys have to say about this. So, like, I, this I see, was, I see. This that... was back in the '90s when you could say "colored Game Boy." Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Instead of Game Boys of Color, no, no, but Game Boys of Color like, these days, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Games are like back. You can see the prices on these games, right? They're around the cost that they are now, but we have inflation now, and also games are more complicated now. So, I mean. Should should game prices actually change based on this data? Uh, is your argument that they should be higher because in the past they were higher? Well, the counter argument to that I already know is that the games suck now, and these are actually good games on this. That page. wasn't going to be my argument. My argument. Was, yeah, oh, that's I, mine though. That's know. mine. <laughs> that's that's mine. A lot. That's that's a lot. <laughs> Let's be fair. Maybe, maybe okay, some of these arguments wanna... are brought up by extra credits. Well, here's the thing because say, I, I don't know do the. It. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I don't know what arguments are gonna, you guys are going to present, I, and I want to know, so you know, fill me in. Yeah, you, uh, you keep those in your like, pocket for when we progress through the oh, video. Oh, we going to fill you up. Uh, yeah. As somebody who uh, bought games in that era, I do not remember most games being above 40. Ah, I do old. remember some of the first-party games on the N64 being 60, though. Mm -hmm. I believe Zelda 64, or Zelda yep. whatever, Ocarina was 60. And a lot of first party games, there was more of a variance than there is now. Like there were some games that released at a slightly lower price. I believe the standard price of PlayStation one games was 40 as well. So I don't know where they're getting 80, 80 bucks. Like I can understand it for Mario paint, for example, being a bit more because that actually came with a, I believe that came with the mouse peripheral. Um, yeah. Well, but didn't it also, I mean, if, if you, if you look like for super, super NES or whatever the hell that was attachment. Yeah, it, there was actually a mouse. You had, to, you, had to, you had to use the mouse with Mario Paint, or at least you would be almost impossible to use it without a mouse. Um, you so can't use that, it with a controller, Mario Paint. Yeah, you need the yeah, mouse. Yeah, so yeah. that's like a bit, that's a bit more than just a game. So things like that were a bit more like they're bundles with like games that came with like a, uh, you know, a light gun or whatever. But yeah, man, I'd this say... Is, this is back in the day when they put John Madden on the Madden video game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I, I don't think pricing was quite as locked down as it is now. Like there were some companies yeah, that so would just too. charge extra, yeah. like 80 bucks for, for uh killer instinct is insane. I don't know whoever charged that, but personally, so, I don't know how valid these prices are. So I, I grew, I grew up with like an N64, right? Um, I grew up in the 90s, and I do recall even as a kid, like looking at these prices and being like, "Oh man, that's half a year's of allowance to get this game." I like a two dollar allowance for the week, you know. So I was like <laughs> saving up for like, for like a game. But I know I, I recall these prices being mostly accurate, you know. Some cheaper but, games are like I, thirty or forty or fifty. Some more expensive games are like sixty or seventy. That seems about right to me, from what I remember. Um, are I these mean, in Canadian dollars? These are American. Oh, dollars. I, I was thinking. Yeah, of I was about to say Actually, Canadian would be different. Why do well, they no, fleece you guys on books? Uh, hold on, though. Back in the 90s, uh, the Canadian and American dollar were on par. So it was, there was no difference. Hmm. Well, I, oh. So the argument is that they cost more in the past, so they should necessarily cost more now? If, if we're taking inflation into account because the money is worth less now. 
Well, why would we like advancement of technology people. usually makes things cheaper, doesn't it? But true, I, the I games are also like, more complicated. Why would it just be a matter of like, yeah, but people don't want to pay that much. Like, why isn't that? Why isn't that just a factor? Well, also I agree with that too. The hard is it supply and demand. Is then, like yeah. The, this, yeah, exactly. And, and, and of course, this is not even you know talking about digital and how digital completely changes the profit margins that, that yeah. are being made on games. Oh my yeah. god! No, wait, that's the biggest uh, shit of all. Well, he's going to give us a brief history yeah. of some of that as well. No middleman. Fringy, you just like jogged uh, a memory in my brain. Do you remember in like 2010 to 2012 that brief window where digital well, games? Digital games actually cost a little bit less because there was no price to like print a disc. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, it was I mean, there just for, just for a bit, like and then that, it like went away. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was probably oh, the, never the gonna temporary. Lost. The the yeah. I was gonna say we're all of that generation. We we all would have lived through that. I think judging by our yeah. assumed age. You know, it, if you're buying like. If you're buying like a like a PS3 game in the late PS3 era, they were like, "Hey, listen, you can get your Last of Us for five dollars off if you buy it digital because there's no, you know, we'll pass the savings on to you, the consumer, because there's no cost to print a disc." And then like two years later, that was just gone, and they were the same mm -hmm. price. It's like, oh, thanks. yeah. I, I, uh, I would also say that a, a good argument against that. Um, I mean, forty bucks in 1995, for example, would be about eighty bucks today. Um, so. Regardless, the, the prices have gone down overall, but you also got to look at how much of the game is being chopped up and DLC'd and how many subscriptions you have to subscribe to to play it. I mean, the games have a lot more complicated now, but... Well, I would say yeah. likely the, the be deal better I... placed against oh, extra right. credits making arguments in the opposite. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, segue. Wait, are we watching the... Are we watching the him being a lonely loser? I figure at this point we'll <laughs> probably do that one <laughs> oh, later. Okay. All right. Okay. Also, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people and watch together. Who's not no. there? I am not there. Chio is oh, not there. Uh, God. Oh, there it is. Um, well, I guess before we start, do, is there any like introduction to extra credits you want to, or any like well, deep lore about these guys? Like, how, I feel how like there's going to be several people in chat who know so much more about it. But between us, know. I'm sure we'll be able to construct something of a history. They made videos that were about gaming and the industry and design and everything. And I think they made videos that some people thought were good, right? Right. I think that back in the day, they At did mostly they mostly good content. It was it mm -hmm. was mostly like video game. Uh, like video game nerd culture-y kind of stuff. Yeah, back yeah, in the of, pitch up guy of, era. Yeah, yeah, kind of a, in a broad sense. And there, there think... were some videos that even I remember really enjoying that they made back in the day. But that was that's going way back at this point. Yeah, well, they. I, I think they um they oh, outsource their writing, and uh, that tends Ooh. to lead to them having a lot of cringe. Yeah. So, for example, <laughs> the um the orcs are black people thing actually yeah, came from a that. from an out uh, outside guy, just some weirdo who had a blog yeah. that pushed that stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was like Mendez Hodes or something like that. It was in yeah. the video that I did as a response to it, and I was like, oh shit, who is this guy? And then I looked him up, and he had a channel. Oh, he I remember crazy that crazy yeah. shit on his. Yeah, he said like crazy shit on his channel, and he's like this weird. So that was probably oh, part of the God. reason why some of their episodes were very well received, and others were cringe. <laughs> okay, um, just, just real quick, I, I pulled out my extra credits file because I autistically keep, keep everything right. And I found I out my I, extra credits. Oh my God. File. I have a I have a file on everything I do ever. Period. Do you have an EFAP um, file? Yes. Oh my God. Oh, it's all good stuff. Though. Oh, it's, it's all, all good, good stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Of, course. Yeah, of, course, yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Um, of course. But no. Um. I found the Stop Normalizing Nazis video, and it's been unlisted. They're like, we're, we're embarrassed <laughs> this one now. It's got to go. Ah, <laughs> oh, classic. <laughs> but is that Look because that. They, they moved all their stuff over? Or... Yeah. <laughs> Expert um, is described as intellectual discourse know. on important issues. Of course. Like, yeah, can so... you find it on their new channel that they've like uploaded all their stuff to? I don't think so. I think that's just when they're trying to Maybe desperately they... bury... Oh yeah, yeah that we'll one. give it five Same years and they'll try again, maybe. Yeah, maybe, right. maybe. So, so these guys kind of—they occupy the same headspace for me as um, people like actual Jake or the Amazing Atheist, right? Where oh. they had their peak really? like ten years oh, ago or yeah. more, and they were doing a different type of content. But then they 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 moved into more explicitly progressive content. Yeah, you know, it used to be Hugo and Jake were a atheist channel. Yeah, um, back, back in, in the, the day. day. Back in the day. Everyone's so and I guess um, if you want an extra drop of lore about these guys that <clears throat> I might be the only one here who knows this because this is some some stuff I dug up recently. 
Do you guys happen to know of the old, like, 2010s era edgy webcomic called Fanboys Online? No. I have heard no. that name, but I don't recall it. Yeah, they were uh, they were really good, actually, back in the day. Really, really good. Probably, probably the best web webcomic I've ever read, oh. frankly. And and their Ooh. stuff is still on their stuff is still on like Internet Archive or whatever. But um the guy who made it, despite you know blowing up in twenty twelve or whatever it was, and his, you know, everything going really well for him, he vanished out of nowhere. He disappeared just when the, the world needed the internet. him. Yep. <laughs> but it turns out he actually he actually works um behind the scenes at extra credits now. Uh. And he left to take that job. Hmm. And he basically he purged his online presence because he had an edgy old webcomic and cool. this is a more progressive leaning channel, so you know you know how it goes, right? Yeah, that's just a an an extra drop of lore, basically. Huh. Well, interesting. Uh, it should probably be mentioned because a lot of people in chat have said it that the the value they found in the channel was definitely the history stuff, not the gaming stuff. So, worth mentioning. I never really watched any of their history videos, so I wouldn't know. But I they assume... started with gaming, didn't they? Oh yeah, but like the I don't, I, I the history really stuff don't know much about took off. Like they, and they did, yeah, Fringy. They absolutely yeah, yeah. did start with gaming. Yeah, right. Like Can I ask, was there ever actually an official connection between them and Spirit Science? Uh, if anybody knows what that oh, channel is. Oh, I know is. why you're asking, because the art is kind of, <laughs> like, it's got the yeah, same the art sort and of the voice, style. Yeah. Yeah, what yeah. is Spirit Science? <laughs> oh, boy. We can't be going down these rabbit holes, man. Dude, this Spirit Science everywhere. is one of those weird, if you wacko, know, you know. astrology, <laughs> earth energy, ley line, the Mr. Incredible channels. Oh. oh, wait. Wait, there, there's like... Uh, <laughs> da, 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 Reality is not what you think. Everything explained. Oh, wow. <laughs> you Hell yes. Power. Except... Oh, I did not know that. We've just got so much to check out today that's not that. You know, it's unfortunate. But <laughs> I was going to say, if you, for anybody who doesn't remember, the voice used to be not only high-pitched, was it sped up as well to make it even yes. higher-pitched? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was oh, grating, you're... to say the fucking least. I did not like that voice at all. But I'm not going to say that I prefer the new one because the new one is a very different kind of absolute cringe. Like, uh, they went from the <laughs> to the <laughs> like the fucking Mario <laughs> character or something. It's, Anything uh, but a normal voice. It has to be annoying. Guys. Yeah, it can't just be it's a guy. The voice in the middle where it's sort of human. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> extremes only here. We'll, just, we'll yeah. annoy them in different ways now. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that the the EFAP has covered them several times. I can't remember if we ever covered high pitch voice. I know we've covered uh, low pitch man or different pitch man, lame man, man man. Low pitch man. Oh, yeah. you've, Every you've, pitch never done, man. you've never done the Spectrum Crunch episode. Spectrum Crunch. That that was an old school uh, cringe episode of theirs. <laughs> it might have been before the time of EFAP, but that doesn't mean we can't. Jump to it someday. Yeah, yeah, it would available. definitely be a, a revisiting of history. Mm. Well, uh, they've released a video semi recently that got the attention of several people, and I was like, it's about time to check out all extra credits again. So we got the gang together to have a little chit chat about the state of gaming or whatever the hell this is about. It's called Games Are Cheaper Than They've Ever Been. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. With an mm. asterisk in it. Ooh. Yeah, it's got a little star on it, so that could mean anything. Mm -hmm. So, the, yeah, the asterisk just points to something in the fine print that just says, not. <laughs> we don't want I to mean, click it. Might... <laughs> does it actually have, does it link to something on the actual page for the channel? Uh, I don't think so. I think he's doing a meme -y. Uh, Let me. Well, I, I'm, I'm actually curious if they, uh, if they did that. So if I go to the page... I'm looking for the asterisk here. No, no, no. The, the asterisk um, is in the title. title. It's in the title. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it actually is. There, yeah. there, are, there are asterisks in the description where it leads to, but they're completely, they're not, they're, they're irrelevant. They're not helpful. They're just they just the watch us on Nebula. <laughs> you searched oh, for God, the context, probably right. and you didn't find it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right then. <laughs> watch but us and is. all the other people who hate you on Nebula. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. He should be on Nebula. Is there, is there, is, is there anyone decent on Nebula? <laughs> Extra credits. There are definitely uh, decent on. credits on Nebula. There's He's too lonely be. to be on Nebula. I think so. Definitely. I mean, like, Legal Eagle's not bad, eh? He's on there. He's sure. 
I think Tizzo yeah. is uh, <laughs> on. <laughs> Silence in the room. For just you guys hate Legal, Legal Eagle? Eagle? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> no, no. I, I haven't a watched him, so. Fine yeah. gentleman. I'm he's sure. like a law YouTuber, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. If he's a lawyer, then he's scum. Yeah. So it's <laughs> oh, okay. Fair I, I yeah. need say no more. <laughs> All right. We Speaking loved his scum, Captain Marvel video. Yes, we did. It was Captain good. <laughs> it was... is okay to break someone's hand if they touch your newspaper. <laughs> good fucking hey, God. Don't remind me. Oh, he, I mean, meant, did he... he said that? Really? Or I mean, it, that's. It. It, if you touch your newspaper him. sexually, that is, you know, if you there sexually a, touch the mm -hmm. newspaper. There was a deleted wow. scene in the movie Captain Marvel where a gentleman is very, uh, very mildly coming on to uh, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, the the god. I can see why they had to cut it for realism purposes. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and and he sort of, she was reading like a newspaper, and he put it, he put his hand on the newspaper and kind of lowered it because he was like, "Hey, what's that? Hey, yeah, yeah." He called it and Dalin, so she so. grabbed his hand and like crushed his hand and then stole his motorcycle from him. And she, said it that looked like she electrocuted his hand too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and she's she like, him. Yeah. That she like grabbed his hand and crushed it, and then she was given it the old flute power that she has, mm -hmm. and he was in pain, and she's like a god. She's insanely powerful. She can travel at the speed of light, and she's pretty much indestructible. And this guy is just a guy, and and she she assaulted him. And she stole his property. This and, did not. And the make film it was the like, this is good, actually. <laughs> was was that really not in the theatrical? Because I remember her getting on a bike to go from A to B. Like she, she just stole the bike. Yeah. She didn't break the hand. And, yeah. Yeah, in the okay. theatrical release, she stole the bicycle from him, but they didn't have an actual con uh, confrontation. She just like stole the keys and took his bike and stole it. Oh, gotcha. To be yeah. fair, I think really? he did say, "Give me a smile, darling," or something like that. So obviously, she should have oh. killed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think so, Legal on, Eagle's point was like touching, like the moving of the newspaper was considered battery, and now it was okay or some shit. What? Well, no, I think that's 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 fucking retarded. Oh my god, he was he was What's insane. Really interesting yeah, um, is... He didn't take into account whatsoever the nature that would come up in court that she couldn't possibly be harmed by him and she knew that because she's a fucking god person. Like the idea that she would fear for her life in any way, shape or form because he's crimpling her fucking map. Like, no. <laughs> he, he didn't even crimple it, he just slightly moved it down. What a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair to Captain Marvel, like she had amnesia at the time, so she didn't know that newspapers were like not a weakness of hers. <laughs> She'd have to end. His lawyer oh, says geez. that, and the judge is like, "What?" <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so you know what? I I gotta admit, I haven't seen that legally eagle video. I've seen only a couple, and they seemed okay. I guess. What was uh, his? Maybe what was his he's stance on Rittenhouse was because if he was. If he's anti Rittenhouse, but he was okay with Captain Marvel <laughs> assaulting that guy, that would be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I didn't see that one either. Actually, but oh, yeah. uh, that's the only video we saw from him. I'm sure he makes wonderful videos, Dev, that you love and enjoy and feel it is informative. Oh, and oh my God! I am getting lynched today eight no. different times. <laughs> <laughs> you fell into our trap, Mr. Dev. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna he hit play so we can make fun of. Don't say Stay into Dev's trap. Did you know that right this very moment oh, we are the I wow. hate this already. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Did you know? <laughs> he doesn't speak like that the whole video. Sure. Yeah. Oh, he will. Sure? He speaks like that the whole tired. fucking channel. He would channel. get exhausted. <laughs> he would become exhausted from this acting. You know what? It's got to suck for him is that he gets into the booth. And he's like, man, I love putting on that voice, and everyone loves it so much. It's hard work, but by gum, it makes for entertainment. And everyone's just like, no. <laughs> You don't oh, need yeah. to do that at all. Wait, what are wait, you wait, doing? Wait. This guy, I I knew something was coming to mind. This guy looks like Steve Shives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve right. Shives. oh you're, that, that's a deep cut. That is a deep cut. Wow. That, what happened to Steve Shives, by the way? Every time it's Steve Shives comes up, feminism. either myself or Fringy needs to remind everybody that uh, he had a video where he, he admitted <laughs> to his either wife or girlfriend at the time, whatever, that... After watching Buffy and Angel, he preferred Angel, and uh, they, they theorized together that that's probably because he's sexist. Mm -hmm. Simple mm -hmm. as that. Oh. Okay. Um, wow. What a relationship. Wow. What what fun. <laughs> like if, if you just that's that's uh, <laughs> you get to break down media all the time just like that. Uh huh.
not that this is him. <laughs> no, like... this isn't. This isn't him. It just looks like a cartoon depiction of Steve Jive. <laughs> it does actually, yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's let's watch this video. See what this gentleman has to say. All right, Did you go. know that right this very moment we are paying less than anybody has ever paid for video games? That they are currently cheaper than they have ever been. Now Whoa. I can. No. I'm going to go ahead and disagree. Right. <laughs> um, anyway. the only way, um, yeah. Not by dollar value, just strictly. But <laughs> if, I was to, um, if I was to come up with a reason why, I might pull out the idea that today we have way more access to far more indie games and super cheap games than ever, and that's what I maybe, would run with. But Maybe less AAA games, games, games are being made. Mm. Yeah, how much is Big Mario Steam Odyssey sales? again these days? Oh, Two dollars. It's worth two dollars. I fucking hate oh, that game. How many hours? <laughs> <are you? laughs> oh man, Jesus! Get him uh, free. Are you, are you sure? trying to avoid being lynched today, Dad? <laughs> listen, I'm, listen, listen. Of all the various 3D Mario's, I think I hate Odyssey the most. I didn't hate it. It just wasn't for me. He didn't Once even. Got to, like, he didn't even phrase world, it. He didn't even like, phrase ah, it as okay. I liked it the least. He said, I, yeah, I, I hate, hate it. it. Yeah. I, j man, it just, it didn't click with me. I like Galaxy. I like 64. I like again. Sunshine. Yeah, but if something, if oh, something man. doesn't click with me, that, that doesn't equal hate. That equals like, <laughs> yes, it does. I hate. No, it, no, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Just, don't bring up so anyone. I think just in, my, my favorite 3D Mario is probably 3D World. Just in terms of you know the tightness of the gameplay, okay, that's really interesting. But I have a very soft spot in my heart for for the weirdness of Sunshine. I adore Sunshine. Yeah, I think, I, I think a lot Sunshine's of people here. Good. It's like those two. Sunshine those two are like tied are, for me. Yeah, I'm, I suppose it's interesting that you picked. I don't know if anybody is uh, like picks 3D World. I think it's a fair choice, but that's surprising because 3D World that's... is like very straightforward. But it's like it that's kind of where its charm comes from. It knows exactly mm -hmm. what it is and what it wants to offer as an experience, and it does it really well. Yeah, three D World kind of like reminded me of uh, kind of reminded me of like a, an evolution of um, Mario sixty four, and that it's not trying to reinvent anything; it's just trying to bring the classic Mario experience into three D. Oh, I, I like I like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's basically what that game is. Why do you hate Odyssey though? The moons. I would have to go go back and think about it. I just have this like I played it when it came out. And I enjoyed it for a bit. Um, and then, like, by the end of it, I was like, I just don't like this. And I don't know why. And then I just put it down and, and go back and think about it. It's just interesting that you hate I gotta go back and think about it. Like, arguably has the best, like, downright platforming mechanics of, of, any, of any 3D Mario game. But, all right. Does it have anything yeah, um, to do with a mix of aesthetics? Like, you have a hyper-realistic T-Rex, or, like, relative to, like, Mario oh, cartoony no, graphics. That's, and then you have the no. city, like, new bonk city or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. I, I, I love all that. You guys There's a video that I watch. New donk city. Get it right. <laughs> new donk, new donk, donk city? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, I so mean, there, like, there I'm, was... I'm sort of in the same camp. It was just for collectathons. I'm just kind of out of it now. Like, I don't really care for collectathons anymore, so that's why I didn't really stick with it. But hate, okay, that's, that's a pretty strong enough, word. But yeah, hate, I just find that fascinating. <laughs> that's a strong um, word. I mean, like, well, so here's the thing. Like, I, I still like collectathons. I can go back and play like Banjo Kazooie or something just fine. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There, there was a video I... that I watched. Maybe so when you were, maybe when you were year, playing I... the incredibly robust mechanics of Odyssey, you know, and you all of the these move sets that you had in that game, and just the sheer versatility of those moves, you thought, man, this is lame. I, I have to go back and rethink it. It's been like five years since I played it, man. <laughs> Dev's got the one just... on trial here, everybody. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember it. Okay. I, I would have to go back and think about it, to be honest. Well, you guys should have a... I, I didn't think video. I needed to brush up on this, of all things. <laughs> He's running. <laughs> <He's running. laughs> <laughs> you brought it up. You brought it up. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. No, so, so here, here. Um, there, there was a video that came out. I can't, I can't tell you the name of the video. I can't tell you who made it. But I remember watching it and thinking, this actually makes a lot of sense. And it was a video about... about um, about Odyssey. And it said, here's the intro level of Odyssey. And then it laid out all of the quests from the Mushroom Kingdom level, which is the final level of Odyssey. And then it said, do you see the problem? Because everything in the final level of Odyssey is, is fit for an intro level of a game. And the, like, the game just feels way too handholdy. I'm like, yeah, actually, that is part of it. There's something here that just, mm. it, it holds your hand too much, I think. But that, that's part of why I don't like it, but it's not the Was whole story. Was this a Joseph Anderson video? I don't recall who, who made it. I don't recall who made two it. Two hours long. Hey, Patrician, what um, do you think of Joseph Anderson? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he, he has his moments of uh, brilliance. 
You know what? I'm inclined to agree. He also has his moments of insanity. So anyway, you guys want to Oh, that's what I'm that. saying is brilliant. Oh, also, I didn't like hat. I, also, I, didn't, I didn't like hat bouncing. Where you like throw the hat and then roll onto it and bounce and throw it again, then roll onto it and bounce. I just hated that shit. Oh, okay. Like, that infinite hat bounce. I was like, uh. <laughs> I, wow. I can hear Fringy's arms folding right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fringy. I'm That's sorry. Okay. Look, we got an extra Fighters video to watch. <laughs> we <laughs> oh my god. Friendship ended with Dev. Uh... Extra credits is my new friend. For about five no, minutes. Uh, don't worry, Dev. I won't tell him about that. If, it, if right. it's uh, any right. consolation, so... I believe Moriarty didn't like uh, Odyssey that much either. So. Yeah, some yeah, people guess don't like Odyssey. Debate. For reason, Ultra but... mid? If... Is ultra mid you know, mean you know it's what? better than mid or I, worse than mid? I will say, you know, I'll say, I won't say I hate it. I'll say it's mid. Okay. okay. I'll, Wait, say, but, I'll say it's mid. I'll, 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 I'll say it's, it's, it's it, is, it is the lowest of the three Ds. I'll say. Well, I mean, I mean, one of them's got to be the lowest of three D, and I don't yeah. necessarily fault anybody for picking any given one. Mm, wow. Okay, here, for Galaxy. If someone picked Galaxy as the worst one, that would be. Oh, I love Galaxy. Okay. I love Bre Galaxy. Before we get back to it, brief uh, redemption arc. Do you like Mario sixty four? <laughs> Um, yes, Oof. but I haven't played oh it in god. many years, yeah, so, that, so that, that, that might be nostalgia. Like, oh my god, it, it holds up pretty well. That like, game, I haven't even played if you played today, I yeah, no, it in years, but I want to, I want to play it again. Oh my god, yeah, quickly, um, game I back believe this. the respect of the audience. Say that you think the OT is great, uh, Indiana Jones trilogy is great. Uh, what else have we got here? We should spam them, you know, get them out there. Lord of the Rings, say yes, Lord of the Rings spam. is really good. Say Lord of the Rings is really good, yeah. Do you mean, um, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power? <laughs> of course, you know, really we don't, don't boot people there. usually. But... Dev, you just, Dev, you just say what you believe. You know, be true to yourself. He's a free thinker. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, the, uh, speaking of free thinker, um, mm, Steve uh, Shire already here with his. Uh, <laughs> uh, he th thinks what his wife tells him to think. But um, speak, so Moriarty here says, has it been long enough Wait. where I can say this game is what? Oh, I thought you meant Steve. Sh I was getting confused with the joke. I'm sorry. Steve yeah. Shives the well, one so, that somebody just it's not a, it's not a, it's fired not a that into the ether. In I'm case, just saying that Moriarty here says, "Has it been long enough where I can say this game is ultra mid?" I'm going to assume it's a question. He didn't put a question mark at the end. So what I'll do, I'll send him some links uh, on Discord to some cheap keyboards because his is clearly broken and his mm -hmm, uh, yeah. question mark uh, key isn't working. Um, well, we but we love Moriarty, is, but he can't spell either. He can't spell his own name. So. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wait, no, I understand now. I, I understand now, Mahler. You meant Lord of the Ring Gollum. Okay, I get it. Lord yes. of the Ring Gollum. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Game. Well, yeah, I it mean, brought me incredible joy. That game it brought was pretty me joy to the fucking... point of pain. It's getting a movie adaptation. I doubt it was that bad. Like everyone's oh my like, God, oh, is it? so bad. Yeah. yeah, of course. Peter Jackson's okay. at the helm. Oh, okay. He loved Lord That's of the Ring Gollum. Yeah, he played it like on Twitch, I think. Somebody oh. died. Patricia Someone died. just walked out of the mention of Gollum. Sorry. Well, anyway, I, I keep getting distracted, but my question is, if you say that something is ultra mid, is that better than mid or worse than mid? It might be worse than mid. Okay. I, well, my that doesn't get us any closer to maybe, uh, what you're maybe it's most I mid. Think it's worse. Ultra most mid? I would say word and relation, you know? Yeah, I, I, would, I, I think you're right, Fringy. So, like, here, here. So, so mid means middle, right? So, middle of the road. So, like, let's say that Silo's mid is, it is a span of, like, let's say 45 to 55 on the scale, and ultra mid just hones right into the center. So, it's like a, just a straight 50. It's like yeah. locked on the 50. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would yeah. agree with yeah. that. It's the, it's the most mid. The world treats mid as bad. And uh, with a lot of true, yeah. how, you know, ratings are skewed, you rarely ever see anything. But if mid is like five, people rarely rate fucking movies or games that are new below five anyway. Like it's, mm -hmm. So it, it's like, calling it ultra mid, I assume, is indicative that it's bad. Yeah, five um, out of ten's been like terrible for a long time for games. It's it's kind of stupid. That's so what I hate it about shouldn't the, be that way. That fucking word, yeah. by the way, it's yeah, made everything then. confusing because I think a lot of people would be like, "No, I didn't say it was bad. I said it was mid." And it's like, "Well, but but, but like you, but but." It, when you say <laughs> mid, you mean bad. <laughs> Let's be real. It always sounds Theo, like you're saying it's bad. Theo, what do you think about Super Mario Odyssey? Uh, I've never played a Mario game before in my life. Wow, really? Oh my God. Not one. Call Not yourself a, single a one. gamer. Yeah. I have some to accomplish never playing a Mario game, never playing a Zelda game, Whoa. never playing a Pokemon game.
Why, why, why not? <laughs> why not? You're missing out, man. Yeah, uh, the game was good. Four the Swords was right fun. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, when I was a kid, I was just always on my PC. I didn't have consoles, so... Oh, damn. I don't know. You were there Nintendo before it was cool. Yeah, well, I, guess, um, I was there playing know. Quake 3, you know? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I was, uh, there was, I was a all right. well, you know, there was a very very brief time where a couple Mario games came out on PC and uh, but yeah then they stopped. <laughs> it's yeah, you like... never played Mario teaches typing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mario is missing. I played Mario Mario's is missing. Adventures. It it's somewhere on the bucket list to go and explore like that huge untapped well of like really good games like assuredly really good games that I've missed out on from mm, Nintendo yeah, and whatnot. Definitely. But just need to get around to that at some point. That's actually a thing. Um, I know that uh, Nintendo wasn't quite as big in the UK, so I have a few uh, UK friends who had actually had to go back and play like Super Metroid and stuff. And I'm like, oh man, all the great games you missed. Hmm. Oh god, it's such a mm-hmm. good fucking game, Super Metroid. That's one that like. Okay, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna also torch myself yet again. I don't oh. like Super Metroid that much. <laughs> oh, oh, Dev, you're testing me. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Come on, man. <laughs> listen, listen, hold on. I love Metroid Prime. That's probably my favorite Metroid game is Prime. Okay. Prime One. Oh my God, it's a masterpiece. Super Metroid. I it just didn't Boy do it for me. The, Super Metroid it? is one of the greatest games yeah. of all time. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, the design in it is fucking I, incredible. I, so, I love Metroid games, and Super Metroid's but pretty good. Like it's like Metroid. okay, but like I love Prime. I loved Prime Two not as much. Prime Three was meh. But like, man, Metroid Prime I think is probably one of my top ten games of all time. Such a good game, Prime. You can't recover from saying Super Metroid is mid. <laughs> it's sorry. <laughs> oh. hey, you know what? You know it's what? Ultra I'll mid. Me- ultra. Mid. Keep, keep in mind, I'm not using mid as bad. I'm using mid to mean you know mid, right? So I, I'd say I would Metroid say like Super Metroid is good. Like, Super Metroid is like like a six point five or maybe maybe a seven. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, I told you we can't control. trust him. He does politics. He doesn't understand media. <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry. <laughs> listen, listen. I, I think like the game Prime is like a nine out of ten. Prime's a re- wait. Hold on. Does no one here like Metro I, Prime? Why would you assume I, that? I yeah, I like. Metro I don't know. I, <laughs> Prime. When you said the Super Metroid is mid. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh, um, I like Metroid Prime. Oh, so I like Lord of the that, Rings, but, but you know, okay, fair enough. Godfather is cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm, hey, I like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, if you step one fucking toe out of line, I'll tell them your dirty secret. I swear to God, I will. Oh, which one? I have so many. The one <laughs> about the the one about the game that you're wrong about. Oh, that's like all of them. It sounds like. <laughs> well, we can. Anyway, we, can, yeah. we, anyway, we, we sure do, Fringy. Thanks. That they've ever been. The All right. We, we made why don't we get like to the I'd like to see where he's coming from here. <laughs> well, oh, now yeah. that now that Theo is here, we best go back to the beginning, all the way Ten back. Ten seconds. Yeah. I yep. All the way. All back. five seconds oh, back. A lot of ground to retread, oh, yeah. We're all doing this for you. Did you know that? <laughs> 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 Did you know? Did you know? God. <laughs> That's right just to get your th- attention at the beginning. He doesn't do that the whole video. He's of course, but he wouldn't keep this right. up for the it's whole. It's not video. Human human impossible. Okay. I you need to know who is, who is the little fella on that uh, on that calendar there. Oh, that's, that is that's that the is extra the, credits look guy. That's I think well, so. Yeah. That's I John extra it credits. Is, it's a uh, calendar. It anthropomorphized <laughs> video game with a face that's, on it. That's Aunt oh, May. Yeah. The eight video. Game. That's Aunt May. That's Aunt oh, May. Okay. There she is. He's a happy lad, isn't he? He's happy. He's very square jawed. Very stout. Yes. Green, I could, I could see like what Uncle Ben saw in her. Or is it a smile that's hiding true pain? <laughs> Did you know that yes. Aunt May and Uncle Ben, that's their first names, aunt and uncle. That's not actually their roles right. in Peter's life. That's yeah. just They were names. meant for each other. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that. Is this like yeah. a Mario Mario situation? Yeah. On the gravestone, it says Uncle Ben. Speaking of Mr. <laughs> ben. Aunt and uncle. Yeah. Aunt well, we did, I'm pretty sure we had ben, like... They were like, man, I hope our siblings have kids. I'm sure we had a whole episode going over how, like, the Spider-Man fandom do treat Uncle Ben as though he he exists solely to motivate Spider-Man. He's not a person. That's only slightly uh, dumber than, or less dumb than the Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. That's canonical. Uh, that was a way. genius yeah. idea. <laughs> Hello, Mario. 
genius. That's what that was. Very awesome. moment. We are paying less than anybody has ever paid for video games. That they are currently cheaper than they have ever been. Whoa. Now, I can hear you all being like, that absolutely cannot be right. What's with that? That looks hand? like a real gamer on the left there. That's what. That's a real gamer there. <laughs> what is she, that? Well, you know she plays fucking Candy Crush constantly. That's, She's a proper that's, gamer. That's, that's <laughs> Ethel. Ethel <laughs> plays. She, oof, Ethel <laughs> is. She plays Yu-Gi-Oh. And but, Ethel. Is, yeah, on her like, phone. <laughs> Is that her? Is that her right arm that's like backwards? I'm trying to figure out. You can out tell the... by the thumbs. Yeah, but like, yeah. but but isn't? I'm kind of. Oh my god! Right. Yeah, I guess that... is it bad? No, no, well, it the, looks backwards, it's, it's but I think it's right actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's yeah. missing a finger clearly. But I was gonna say, why did they draw it so that it looks like the fourth finger was taken out when they're all three fingered? It's like because you have to crank like... out 700 of these she... per it... shitty videos. Oh, they're yakuza. The games were so expensive. She had to. She had to sever a finger. Exactly. She's got quite the backstory. She made a deal. She's like an ex. She's like an ex yakuza. She got busted. You wouldn't yeah. use a finger to pay for a video game. That would be incredibly foolish. Yeah. What? That's you like didn't paying, ask a, for paying it. a leg for a soccer ball. <laughs> and yet, there it goes. There goes your finger. Anyway, because Apple, I hmm. had the exact same reaction. Whoa. Honestly, when James brought this up, I couldn't believe it. And Ooh, who's James? Yeah. This is his like, long term writer. Fucking, he's, 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 he's somebody been on before. staff for a while, I guess. I think yeah. so. I remember seeing James before because no, he, he wears helped. like a Walmart greeter outfit. <laughs> uh -huh. He helped write the Spectrum Crunch <laughs> episode. He like contracted for somebody and learned about it. Yeah. So th this is like a recurring character. Yeah, he just keeps on referring to James, but I never know who he's talking about. All I know is he's got a soul patch. He does have a soul patch. He needs to shave it, and he also needs to get rid of that ridiculous cowlick. Yeah, that that well, that soul hair. You know, it's it's just sorry, man. It's not working. I don't think. I get it. Even as a cartoon, I get that you're trying to make it work, but it's just not working. Also, also, his laptop is an Xbox OG. I grabbed the staff list. It looks like James is the head writer of the channel. And okay. Daniel's the host. So there's, there's 17 there seasons? Why are they counted in seasons? Is that years? Wait, wait could Makes it be more official, years, I guess? I don't know. It? Well, seasons aren't necessarily years, right? Because uh, our that... oldest video is like 12 years ago, I think. Or... Oh, that. So is Daniel Floyd the OG high pitch guy? And he's you're telling me, you're telling me there's been 17 years of extra credits. Um, the, their videos go back 12, so I, I don't oh, think it's been Jesus. 17. You 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 probably bring up a good point. Daniel Floyd is probably pitch up man, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So Matt Crawl is uh, you didn't ask for it, man. Yeah, there he Matt is. Crawl? Okay, that makes sense. Oh, so crawl. Matt. So we have low pitch man is Matt. Got it. Wait, Matt came out of nowhere to become the host. Mm -hmm. Why not? He's just the face <laughs> of extra credits. Oh, you, Raz, you know when they had the interview, you didn't he ask said, for this. You didn't ask you didn't for me. You this. didn't choose me. <laughs> but here I am. <laughs> and now you're the host wow. of extra credits. Yeah. He's like Zack you know, Snyder. He has dirt on all the executives who make decisions and keep the lights on. So he's like, I'm going to be the host now. You will draw me. No wonder yeah, gone to shit. Them. They lost their media draw director. my white circle head and my fucking hat. With my dots on it, it's actually they some chives. <laughs> yeah. They asked him like, oh, uh, yeah. where, "Where do you where do you see yourself in five years?" And he's like, "Good question." And then they're like, "You're hired." Yeah, that's all <laughs> you five years is a long. So, so, so Mala, regarding losing the uh, the media director, there was actually a bit of drama about that because there was some sort of quasi sexual harassment claim that came out like uh -oh. in like 2018. Uh oh, and that. That oh, like any going nowhere, but you know, you know, you know how it is. Yeah, you know how it is. Some of the stuff. Did somebody touch somebody else's newspaper? Possibly. Could have been. Didn't either. But then he told me how he found this great Ars Technica article on the subject from a few mm. years back, and that he reacted so violently to it that he spent all night digging up historical game prices and inflation data, ran those numbers, and yeah. I like to spend a real night, hard as, as if that wouldn't take yeah. like Planning five minutes night. to get both That's of those crazy. pieces of information. No offense. Why the fuck are you not holding your cup by the handle? It's weird when the handle's sticking <laughs> towards you and you're holding it from the it, like. Hot, you know? You're like yeah, yeah, in defiance so, of that. I don't know. I mean, the cup's design. The cup seems to enjoy it. Yeah. Exactly. Oh wait, but, his and, goatee's but, colored now. I'm oh, sorry, goatee I, of color. See? I know, I know that this video is like more than ten minutes, so I imagine that it's not just going to be this argument. It, but I sure hope that they've got more of an argument than just 
hey, did you know that inflation is a thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so real quick, Rags, regarding the mug, surely you've seen this before, right? The the mug alignment chart. What am I? What what kind of? I don't really do much, but chaotic evil. What the fuck? Um, Stick your hand right in the mug. That's how you hold it. You're chaotic evil. I, oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I found mine. I'm chaotic good. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm chaotic yeah. good. I'm chaotic good or chaotic neutral. Sometimes uh, neutral, neutral, true neutral, I guess. Yeah, I'd say. How do you finger same. your mug? <laughs> so the the first time I found this, I tried all nine of them. I'm um, obviously even chaotic, chaotic evil. Stupid. <laughs> yes, it's really stupid. <laughs> But I mean, I kind of gravitate towards like chaotic good, true neutral, sometimes lawful neutral, sometimes lawful evil. I, I tried them all pretty much. Like most of them are comfortable, you know? All right. It's not a contest. All right. Calm down. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'd say that lawful good is comfortable. Like, honestly, I don't. I no, it's not. not no. Like that. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's very, it's, it's very, it's thing. very British. It was yeah. like it takes a lot of conscious effort to do that. Honestly, <laughs> pink is hot. Ooh, the tea is hot. That's what it, yeah, that's it, what it just, does to your voice when you do it that way. It just fucks your voice up. Like, so which, which one is the way that you gotta <laughs> hold it? Oh, okay, so you gotta hold it, what? You gotta hold it chaotic uh, neutral to sound like this guy then. Yeah, chaotic neutral. So like, neutral as soon as you hold it like that, your voice yep. starts to go, did you burn your hand. Oh my this God, guy seems so like a neutral <laughs> neutral where yeah. he's almost like hesitant to even... Well, look like, at his face yeah. when he found out yeah. about inflation. Yeah, he was stunned. He's like, wait a minute. My, my savings what? account did what? What is this arcane magic? What is this <laughs> madness? And, and yeah, Fringy, you mentioned, I think earlier, before you got off on mugs, um, you said something like, it, it wouldn't take you all night to figure this out. We did uh, half no, that conversation in five minutes yeah. on this stream. I pulled out those yeah, flyers. But, like, but yeah. he's but he's getting paid for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, well, he, he had to he had to print out on oh, Manila he, folders and everything. He typed it out for mm. like five minutes and then he went, Man, I've worked on this all night I, I for the I channel. Funny, like, I had to check the inflation numbers. Like, what are you talking about? It went up. Like that's it. Like, <laughs> it went up. It's, what? It's like, yeah, inflation normally specific. goes up. That's just kind of normal at this point. Maybe so. he's, no. he's just Finding the specific numbers and comparing them to other specific numbers. I still don't see how that would take quit, him quit all being reasonable. night. Well, maybe he was busy making coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Trying out all nine of the poses, how to hold well, his mug. Maybe how to find the one he, he likes most. Well, as he does things, he has to draw it. So most of his time was well, spent hey, maybe him drawing what he was doing. This could be a snapshot in motion, and that's not steam coming out of the mug. That's like a slime monster like trying to escape and <laughs> I, grab him. Man, he yeah, found our I'm secrets. Annoyed. I'm starting to get annoyed by this whole, like, man, I was up all night, like, figuring out the inflation numbers and, and checking all the data to figure out, like, that games cost more, because it almost implies that, like, there's a real argument here. <laughs> like, well, it's literally, like, know. four Yeah, to make it sound... Well, Heavier yeah. when you know for a fact you would have researched probably for a half hour to an I mean, hour like, while having YouTube like, videos exactly, play in the background. Exactly what we did. It's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, here's like a pamphlet from you know like 1995, and this is how much the games cost and inflation happened. There you go. Yeah. We, did we it. solved it. We figured it out. Well, I mean, they yeah. gotta fill. Take, take care of yourself. Don't eight more minutes, online. right? With something. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, so there's got to be yeah. arguments. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Also, Why does I this... have I have noticed that there's definitely a a type of YouTuber out there that likes to just, in general, inflate how much research they've done. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh man, I've been working on this for months, dude. It's like, so you mean you worked on it like a couple hours a day, maybe at the most? Like you weren't just sitting there hammering it for 18 no, hours? No, no. I, I did three some months. Google searches today, and then four <laughs> months ago, I did some Google searches. That's Kit. months of research. I typed the first yeah, and, and then I had like the idea bouncing around in my head a bit, like in the shower yeah. every once in a while. Yeah, yeah that counts. In times yeah. of... Yeah, it's Kiss, probably one of those like uh, all encompassing things where it's all like, oh, look at all the research that I did. It's irrefutable because it took me all night, you know. I well, covered like all research. the bases. No, that's how shocking it was that he, yeah, he was so just, shocked. He looked at shocked. Couldn't sleep. Look at it. Look he, at it. he reads look very up. slowly. He's like, hot it's, what? It scared color into his what you, goatee. What do you guys think about like the the mug is happy about this information? You know, he's looking at the sheet too, and it's like, yeah, he likes inflation. <laughs> the mug Maybe. loves inflation. <laughs> Maybe well, it's one of those mugs good? that changes when it's it gets warm. You know what I'm talking about? Like the mugs, like the, the coffee mugs, well, when they get frowned, hot. He frowned when he's uh, what cold and empty. unused. Yeah, I think when he's just oblivious oh, yeah, to the, the document. Change. He's just naturally happy. He's, like, he's happy when he has. 
when he has coffee in him, he's happy. No. He's that's his thing. He, ha am, he hasn't uh, been used this much in a while. I have since to say, I'm rooting for the mug. Like he looks pretty happy. Sense. I'm rooting for the slime monster. He's very happy to be doing what he was created team. for. He's fulfilling his purpose. He oh, is experiencing a euphoria none of us will ever know. I think the mug is happy because it found out it's more. It's probably more expensive now than it was well, when it was created. Has anybody noticed that he's in like a sky <laughs> castle? Like how did how does he they live does in he the sky? No. The clouds no. and the oh, I, I the clouds was, in the ground. I thought that was just a picture, not like a window to the outside world. <laughs> I, I thought this was uh, like the only window to the outside like, world. It's, it's, he's terminally online. So or no, maybe it's winter and that's snow. Yeah, it could be. Is... I I prefer the sky snow. castle theory, but I, I I can get behind sky all of that. Sky castle is nice. Yeah. Maybe they're Crazy in Colombia. Into every image. You know? well, <laughs> not to slow us down, but I'm wondering why his vest has armholes. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> is that? Is that oh, oh, his vest saying? has armholes, but his shirt doesn't. Because you can see oh, the shirt through the hole. Oh, you're right. Oh, my God. Oh, you're right. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, that no. should be a pink hole. Oh, no. Oh, God. I hope they fired someone for that blunder. Oh, geez. he was up all night making these thousand images. You got to commit. You have to go, it. like, do I go half and half and ruin everything? Do I go full sleeves? Do I go rim world? Mm -hmm. What do I do? If we go two sleeves, it might show nudity. <gasps> Yeah, that's what I'd like it is. to return you know, this you know vest. It it's got unnecessary holes in it. <laughs> Those, oh, uh, so the the arm sockets. So, so in this continuity, the arm sockets are like erogenous zones. So you got to cover them up at least with something. Ooh, yeah. But if you want to be risque and you have like two layers on, you have one layer show a hole down to the other layer. So it's like it's kind of like showing off cleavage. It gives off a sense like character. teasing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the sky yeah. castle is in a Muslim country. You know, could be, could be. they're like, oh, well, can't show the arm socket because you know. That's haram. Don't want to go too far. I do like the idea of returning it though and asking if they can sew it up. And they're like, um. <laughs> <laughs> sew what up? It's. Yeah. Sure uh, enough, I, just, I don't it know how it stays was on. True. But it sure as heck does not feel. Why does that have sleeves? What arms exist? <laughs> this oh world is God, confusing and scary. Oh, my God. The, oh God. <laughs> the, the hands Actually, are no. hovering <laughs> inside the sleeves. That's why it's yeah, they are. drooping a little bit. At least the left side one. So is yeah, this ableist them, in this so, universe? If you look at it, right? The hands are hovering inside the sleeves. And the sleeves are pulled tight on the top. So it's like, it's like a fixed point in space where the hand is hovering. So you what, see if it? You tied, what if you tied up like a knot? in between the hand and the shoulder, would that disconnect the hand and it would just fall to the ground, or...? So it's like a, like a Bluetooth you would go device? Numb? You know they have a lore master who's fucking panicking right now. He's like, shit! <laughs> the thing that I found strange was, um, it, before I noticed the sleeves, was his visual representation that he learned something was true is some random woman with a sweater that says true. She well, can't bear the, the weight of it. The, the idea is really it showing some true. serious it cleavage. Fit right. Yeah, it doesn't. The, the the truth may be true, but it don't fit right. Is is what he's doing. And so it's it's very clever, actually, Rags. You just didn't get it. Uh, oh, but this is good because you can like roll up the sleeves for however long you want the sleeves to be. I don't know. That's like by design. Though. I guess so. You wouldn't want think... really hefty roll ups, you know. My takeaway is just that I want a jumper that says true on it. <laughs> <laughs> a big sweater that says true. Yeah. They have, remember uh, the, five remember the artists, people, by the way. Soon after TLJ came out and all like the discourse that. was happening, several people bought a shirt that just said written and directed by Ryan Johnson on it because they made that a part of their identity. Because oh they don't have any friends. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was so sad. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Uh, several people. Their listening. life is a disaster. They just... no, if I ever see someone wearing that, I'll just assume they have no friends and their parents are dead. <laughs> B believe it or not, back when that movie came out, I wasn't like fully plugged into the online media culture war, so that me completely neither. passed me by. I don't That's even think one would argue it existed like as it certainly as it does now did not exist back then. The TLJ was arguably the start of like a new era of. Uh... Yeah, wow, that movie was fucking on. bad, and something should be done about it. <laughs> 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 That, it that was, was bad, but it was like subversively bad. It's like holy shit, this well, is. It was one of those things where it's like, take it back. And Disney were like, "What do you mean? It's like, take it the fuck back. I, we need you to. <laughs> we need something else." Yeah, sure enough, it was true, but it sure as heck does not feel true, right? So let's dive in and unpack. Wait, how is a true oh. sweatshirt supposed to feel? 
Oh, look, he, look, he's diving down to open Wait, he has box. legs now. Do they all have legs? Yeah, they all That would be legs. a really soggy Why don't they have arms? Box? Oh, yeah. Wait, because, why are the Rayman, legs connected? Yeah, Rayman, his arms and legs are both non-existent, you know? It's just like, hmm. they're both floating. That's okay. Here, like, be a, yeah, it's not... a style. He doesn't have a neck either. I, uh, man, I would... Uh, when he <laughs> eats, <laughs> you know? Just, oh, uh, gross. He, like, pulls down and, onto his yeah. body. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm just thinking about Crash like Bandicoot ten. diving down and, and getting those crates. I feel like there's a joke there, you know, of like Crash yeah. Bandicoot diving down and then spinning to open up the box that reveals the topic of the video. Ooh. I feel like in all my doodles, my head and body are always connected because it just would be weird, you know, if they weren't. I'm pro neck. Like, even Weekend Warriors figured this out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, he's got one there, not... right? Like a little line. Oh wait, no, that's just the background. No, no mind. yeah, it's the background. it could be. It could be in your head cannon that that's his. Yeah, yeah. Your neck Very cannon. Very easy to that... strangle. Very easy to strangle. Just ask mother... what you wanted to see. Well, hold on. Kind of How can you even swim? Well, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's got fins. He's got fins. Well, yeah, but like if he's moving his hands, yeah, the, yeah, they're not connected, so he's not, you can't you can't like propel right. himself using his hands. <laughs> it's they not going to drag the body unless you count the teams. invisible force that's sort of connecting yeah, the torso with magnetism. the hands. It's magnetism. The only thing yeah. keeping his head together is the tank. No, well, what, what bothers me is that I think somebody said that it's a cardboard box. You drew this. Well, yeah, you went out of your way to, yeah, you drew you drew this like guy going all the way down the bottom of the sea to just open a fucking cardboard box. Yeah, it's not even an old like sunken up. chest full of treasure or anything. It's a cardboard <laughs> yeah. box yeah. or table. Yeah, like, it's oh. gonna get soggy. It needs to be a treasure chest. <laughs> this doesn't well, guys, of the image. He said well, unpack, so I think he was trying to like go about the unpack thing. Like let these these images are literal I'm, interpretations why not just of this well, yeah. why, yeah. why is he in the um, ocean? Yeah, it is useless now, it's soggy. Well, he said dive. Let's dive in and unpack. Yeah, so well, it does actually make okay, so, uh, sense. I, I'm sure we've all ordered from Amazon before. You know, you have a you have a a, yeah. a, a box outside your front door. You mm -hmm. go get it. Sometimes it's maybe it's on it's like on your neighbor's house. Sometimes it's on your lawn. On sometimes house. it's under the ocean. You just got to go get it. Sometimes you know. Yeah, how it is. It happens. I, um, I got lazy that day. Been, to be fair, this could be steel. It could be a steel chest. Yeah, it's just my, colored this my way. My delivery That's address true. on Amazon mm. is King Triton's Castle, and so every once in a while, I gotta be like, "Oh shit! Oh, that up yeah. there! I gotta go get I, it. Uh, I gotta drive I all the way out I to think, Carolina." I think I would have preferred it if it was this guy like diving into the box, like just jumping up and then yeah, diving like packing into peanuts. That is why almost packing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. he splash up back in in in, yeah. It's actually like a portal to a different dimension. Yeah, and he and he starts to realize time. He's like, went into the background. He has this big realization. The magical he world of Amazon. All the images of inflation and like you're just economics in That's general. Right. And he's like, oh my god, look at this world that was in this tiny little. Well, box. Yeah, it's, it's it's like 2001 when all of the lights are going by, but except it's I don't know, like the stock stuff, like in the you know the Dow Jones, like the stock exchange just flying by. <laughs> I like to think that uh, this guy was like typing his address. And he did instead of one two three any street, he did one two three under the sea. You know, <laughs> just like end up <laughs> well, on the ocean at, somehow. Um, you work at uh, Amazon. They're like, "Where's this one going?" Just like the city of Atlantis. You're like, oh god, again! Like, like gotta, god damn it! Gotta get my scuba gear. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> How this could possibly be, and why despite all the data, games costing the least they ever have is still so hard ah, to despite swallow. Despite all the data, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah just go back one, one scene data. there, real quick. You know, mm -hmm. it's not really good practice to, like, be like, guys, there's just so much data without presenting <laughs> any so of it. so much of it. Don't show any of the data. Yeah, well, look, look, really has, like, that, that, look at all that data. That's 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 like, so much data. Now. They're confident. Yeah, you know what I'm wondering it up. is those little Should pages we of count data. How many times he says it's true? Those pages of data that he's losing there. I wonder if there are very important arguments that he's going to ignore. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> they're all floating away. Keep in yeah, mind, guys, he got this. In, he got this whole pack in one night, guys. Like this is a one lot night, of research yeah. for one night. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. it's a lot yeah. of printing. <laughs> I spent all night just printing all work and no play <laughs> on these pages over and over on three thousand pieces of paper. <laughs> Man, that feels like a reference you gotta be careful with. Like, too many people won't even get that anymore, you know? Feels like it's been yeah. too long. We're getting old, man. We're getting old. Like, I don't know about you guys, I'm in my 30s, and tomorrow I'll be in my 60s. That's yeah. what it feels like. Mm. Oh, well. Must be we had here. a good run, Dev. <laughs> <laughs> Despite all the data, games costing the least they ever have is still so hard voice. to...
Look at those very <laughs> big pills. Where's her armhole? I don't know. I don't know how the video essayist manages to constantly concoct the most annoying voice. <laughs> I know. I know delivery isn't easy, but surely we can get something just shy of the most annoying voice. You have the it's like the wounded animal, right? He comes in like, I'm going to <laughs> fix the industry with my voice. It's like, shut the fuck up. Why can't you just talk like a normal person? I, I feel like that... Ah, go ahead, Indigo. No, I was just gonna say, like the the only end result now is the next host has to be Fred from like early YouTube. That's, oh. the, that's the only direction they can go now. Uh, <laughs> bring back yeah. Fred. An annoying <laughs> orange. Classic too. <laughs> just the voice saying, "Trust me, it's true." It's <laughs> it's like I don't believe him. We're like like the trust me, bro. Yeah, he's like trying so hard to be. Oh, we have data. Some guy <laughs> took all night to get it. It's like, shut up. No, I no feel way. like he's he's trying to sell me like a crypto scam or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's going to explode <laughs> any day now. Get We're in on the ground the floor. God, Activision like paid us ten thousand dollars to make this video. <laughs> This pill bothers me. It's like the new "Don't Dead" open inside. We have cheapest the games. We, we have, have cheapest, cheapest the games. Oh, I hate that <laughs> shit. Yeah. We have cheapest the games. We have cheapest the games. It's like old English. <laughs> we have cheapest of the games. Truly, the only have game you shop. Lord of oh. Lord of Gollum the Ring. The scuffed like resale shop. It, here's a oh, here's a nice thing. The... Sorry, go ahead, man. The blue no, it's, side it's is like... so much bigger. I'm just gonna say it ties back to the lawful good alignment chart because it has the glove and the pinky up. We have this the games. And it's just funny. Anyway. It looks I, like he I ripped just... off a police siren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you, the and police you notice, so, uh, we have cheapest the games. That's their thing. They just run around. Like, we are the game police. You didn't pirate that Terraria, did you? Did you <laughs> know <laughs> pirating is actually detrimental to the industry? <laughs> Maybe it's just me being uh, pedantic, but did you notice that the text isn't aligned on very big pills? It almost makes it seem like there's another word before pills. It's like very big dick pills or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't take very small dick pills. <laughs> I mean, I want, it wants to, I want you to buy big. them, and Could you're like, big pill. does it make my dick smaller or are they small pills? The, the, the cashier's like, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, the instructions are inside. I didn't believe it was true, but these my work. dick's just too big. I need Dude, small this... dick pills, please. Yeah, you, I literally, I just need to get it smaller so that I can. It's just, it's not usable in its default state. There are infinite jokes to make with this dumb fucking voice. Imagine you ring a suicide hotline. It's like, hello, how are you doing today? <laughs> like, I feel like I'm talking of a gun on the other Oh, end. I thought you meant that he was calling the hotline. Because he he <laughs> he's so lucky. <laughs> I'm thinking of killing myself, and I was looking for any reason not to. Thank you for calling the suicide hotline. Have you heard of hotline. extra credits? <laughs> Remember, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Does he call the, the hotline and call him dear viewers? Like, dear viewer, I'm thinking about ending things. <laughs> you, you pick up the phone and it goes, da na 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 Have you considered calligraphy or skating? And you go like, no, I don't think so. And he goes, all right, well, that's that then. <laughs> don't kill yourself. Did you know that games are the cheapest that they've ever been? <laughs> Despite you... the data? Don't kill yourself now. You, you can buy so many video games. games. <laughs> are you interested in very small dick pills? <laughs> you should have shot yourself in the head when John Madden was on the cover of the Madden games. If there was a time to kill yourself, it was when video games were more expensive. No backsies. <laughs> Now, now buy skull and bones. Eventually he's like, are you okay though? I mean, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> You're just like, I just want to make sure. I don't know. <laughs> the only thing oh, stopping man. me from killing myself is apathy. <laughs> Am I real? Oh. Who knows? I could be a robot. I just spent all night figuring out the price of bullets have increased, so I can't afford to anymore. Bullets are more expensive than they've ever been. I can't Amazon. afford to kill myself. <laughs> Amazon doesn't sell them. Seems like a lot of work. Did you I'm know sure alimony nice is man. killing me? I don't want to exist in this world. <laughs> My I've children hate me. 
My <laughs> wife won't let me see them. You're just crying on the phone. You're like, oh, jeez. And you're the one that ragged. Do you know how hard it is to buy a shirt without armholes? <laughs> <laughs> you have to sew them up yourself. It's horrible. Wait. Oh, that's the hotline we, we theme. theme. As the suicide the hotline. Theme. Theme. So, so far, the suicide says, hotline theme is extra that's credits. The suicide hotline theme. <laughs> yeah, just put a little high pass filter on there, and there you go. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they were able to just rip off a Mario song like that and and you know make it their own. Yeah, yeah, it's transformative. Kind of also, this video is nine eleven. Hmm. I was gonna make that oh, joke when we were talking about Uncle Ben. Oh, Uncle Ben is Spider Man. You gotta you gotta say these things. Well, uh, you know, it reminds me of that tragedy. Over. Yeah. Thanks so much to Factor for delivering me great meals right to my door so I could spend yeah, less time yeah, cooking man. and more time playing games. But you have no <laughs> Totally <laughs> something somebody's suicidal <laughs> would say. No Do you have to inject it <laughs> straight into food. your stomach? <laughs> Do you have a hatch? Do you have a hatch you open? <laughs> <laughs> and shove in the back here. Yeah, it's, 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 or it's like giant pills because you have no neck. It's like Bender. You you just have a little hatch. Yeah, you throw in burgers and What's shit. It throw it in it. your butt. You know? It's kind oh. of a messed up story, but there was actually uh, a case where um, a farmer uh, beheaded a chicken to in order to like you know prep them for food, as food or whatever. But the chicken survived, and so it had no stem. head. I'd heard about this. Yeah, it missed, yeah, it missed the brainstem. Stem, yeah. And the chicken lived for like another year, I think. Ooh. And it had to, had, <laughs> yep. they had to inject food down its like. Why don't you just hole, put it out of its misery at that existing. point? Oh. I, I yep. think it was well, just like a, a weird okay. curiosity at that point. But yeah, yeah it was, it was like crazy. a scientific thing. It's like, oh yeah. my god, he's running okay. around. So he like he, he would still live, and you they would just like put water and food down his neck pipe, just drip it in there with with like a dropper. But then yeah. eventually, like a, a corn kernel got stuck in there, and then he suffocated. Oh, that's the way to go. But they basically kept him as like a pet for. For, for well, a year. if it has no brain, can it even feel pain? Is that possible for um, it to have misery? Yes. If it has no when brain? It come, so yes. when it comes to chicken brains, a, a good chunk of the brain is in the brain stem going down the neck, so it had enough to kind of keep going. Huh. I wonder... Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Imagine surviving getting your head cut off and then choking on corn. <laughs> <laughs> I lived through that. I lived through losing my head and then this piece of corn... <laughs> Is the coup de gras? He didn't ask for that. He didn't choose that. Yet there he is. <laughs> there I go. Speaking of choking well, on corn, let's listen to this factor ad. Uh... Okay, y'all. So who's excited? To oh, talk it's about over. Never mind. Flint? Oh, that was okay. Yeah. I guess, oh, is it? Was I it? thought we were no, going to with that. that. Oh, okay. Listen, if you if you order from Factor, they'll just deliver your box to the ocean and leave it there. No. Yep. Gotta go diving. Oh, that was the up. Factor. He was looking there. for it. Yep. Ah. You're trying to find it. The food's and more great. time the playing games. Not so much. Okay, y'all, so who's excited to talk about... What was that sound effect? Did they do a sound effect for the transition? <laughs> was that his, like, mouth? Did he yeah, I think use so. mouth noises? I think so. Oh, okay, let's listen And more that. time okay. playing games. Okay, y'all. Yep. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a mouth noise. <laughs> it's a mouth noise. He's so excited. So who's Couldn't excited to talk sounds. about inflation? Huh? Ooh, wait, 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 don't, don't tell yes. me. Seriously, don't tell me, like, the whole thing is actually just going to be about inflation. Yeah. That's so boring. <laughs> That, who's excited to talk about inflation? Let's go to DeviantArt. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what the mug was so happy about. Oh, no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sonic isn't, isn't inflated. He's just pregnant with Shrek's baby. Oh. Wait, isn't inflation like the price of the the thing is the the the, the dollar or the 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 currency is getting weaker? That's why prices increase. Isn't that isn't that what inflation is? Or um, yeah, inflation yes, is basically is, yeah. when the power of the money decreases. There's more money in circulation, yeah. and so you need more to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, the, so, I, right. I think the, the, like the TLDR of it is that you have a nation with X number of dollars and Y amount of production, and so each dollar maps onto a certain amount of production. And when you print more money, now each dollar is worth less of the less of the total production. And if you take money out of circulation, then each dollar is worth more production. So you have like more purchasing power or less purchasing power with your money. Also, the cat the cat has full limbs. Good. It also just well, happens yeah. kind of has limbs at all. Yeah, but it doesn't have a mouth or a nose. And it must so, scream. You know, you take you take what you can get. Hmm. Oh, do you want arms and legs, oh, no, or do you want nose and mouth? He made a trade. Hmm. I mean, I 
I sure hope that like the video does mention just the digital games yeah. alone comprising a massive portion now, like particularly sizable compared to you know ten years ago, and obviously the point where, basically like non-existent. Well, there's you know, we depressingly there's don't even get big... the, the 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 you don't even get discs with a lot of physical purchases now. That's yeah, that's yeah we've, the point. and we've now you've got been... some games that actually don't even have a physical release. Like I think Alan Wake Two was digital only. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's true. I think I think Hellblade is uh dig the that's coming out in a few days, guys. If in case you didn't realize, uh, didn't that's realize that's it, no. digital only as well. Is so that... I think they're charging ten bucks less for that one. So that's is, <laughs> is that another <laughs> Epic release? Uh, Epic Epic Games releases have like no launch hype. Alan Wake it seems. was yeah, but but the but the point Hellblade being is that... Microsoft. Okay. Hellblade yeah. is, but Alan Wake Two yeah. is Epic. I'm sure they'll um, fire the devs in no time. Though, just think about the kind of profit margins that you're getting if you're selling a game digitally compared to manufacturing, no shipping, no packaging, distribution, middleman, no like you're not having to sell it through games, uh, GameStop or you know Walmart or any of these companies. Like all of that, that was a like cost factor that gets tethered into the amount of money that a game is going to make if you sell it physically versus also, digitally. Also, That's a huge factor is uh, on demand as well, because like before, they'd have to print like a hundred thousand copies, and may, not all of them might sell at, at first. Whereas digital, you get you make as much you sell money you as sell, they yeah. sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that already is like a huge. He's going to go over of some of these games elements he has that, that um I, I don't even know if you'll get all of them because the amount the of different I'm... ways that games have lost value and simultaneously like s creeped up in cost has been kind of insane and insidious yeah. well, and all of us I, uh... are perfectly poised to talk about it because we've been aware of it probably autistically more so than most average people have thanks to uh you well, know that's... hating it for thanks the past like, decade I, mean, I'm, uh, <laughs> I suppose curious <laughs> about is how much of the conversation is going to be about post-launch revenue models that now exist very prevalently across a variety of games whether that be just like you know like paying for dlc or battle passes microtransactions loot boxes how much mm. of that is going to be factored into the way that and then of course just fundamentally if people don't want to pay an amount of money for a game like that's that's it right like if, you know like you can't like if you tell somebody hey do you know about inflation and i said yeah i still don't want to pay 70 bucks for a video game like, there's not really an argument against that. If somebody doesn't yeah. want to pay that much, they don't want to pay that much, plain and simple. Like, mm -hmm. at some point, there, there's just, it doesn't matter the quality of the game, the price just gets too high. Like, like imagine yeah. a game that is $1,000, but it's actually worth $1,000, like it's just that good. You're still going to be like, yeah, but I don't want to spend $1,000 on it. Yeah, right. I'd rather pay, yeah. I'd rather pay for a whole bunch of $30, $40, $50 games that are worth it, mm -hmm. you know, it's... There, there's the the big the big things here are of course digital distribution should lower significantly the price of both physical distribution and packaging and all that sort of stuff, and also nowadays especially as compared to you know back then, the pool of people who are buying games is significantly larger. So it's not like you're physically having it; you're just selling to way more people now. Um, I I sure hope that the argument isn't just inflation occurred. But the games cost about He's the gonna same hit in you terms of a dollar amount. With gaming history, it's it's going to be our job ah, to see if there's any holes okay. in his story. Ooh, right. Remember, they did research for like a whole night, so that's true. They did. He looks like such a. It just feels weird that we're kind of old enough now to be like, I lived through these changes, boy. I know everything about <laughs> them. You used to have to attach a light bulb to the top of your Game Boy to see it in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like, uh, isn't Dead Space 3, like, an incredibly important game in this, the history of monetization Dead for our lives? Absolutely I guess. Wonderful. Oh, boy, it's was so it. interesting how important Dead Space 3 was, really. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't know the Dead Space 3 story. What's the deal? Oh, uh, basically, Dead Space 3 was, like, the first example of a major AAA video game, point of sale, 60 bucks, that had microtransactions in yeah, it to as be, a single-player game. To be specific, it's so almost interesting how it starts because it's exactly how you'd want to start it it's like hey you have to use scrap to construct different kinds of ammo and weapons in the game it's like it's like a baseline scrap you can collect and then it's like they oh changed you're yeah, a... they changed to like a universal ammo system yeah yeah and... oh fucking universal ammo um the so it's like oh you need some scrap to make your thing oh yeah you know you can collect it around the game you can work real hard to find it in secret places or i mean hey toss us a dollar and we'll give you like 10 scrap you're like what 
Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. That, that, and and that was yeah. that was directly integrated with the upgrade or like yes. um weapon building terminals. It wasn't just like this entirely separate menu where it's like a store page. It was just like it was, it was, it was um, part of the game in an unsettling way. Really yeah, that, it was, it was that, that was very much a case of a lot of companies starting to experiment with ways of essentially just making more money, right? Because the online passes, that was around that. Do you guys remember the online passes where, like, you had to yeah. buy the game new in order to get the online well, access? Um, like, with the, like, with well, the, Fringy, uh, you might want to tell everyone box. about what happened in 2013 and something that Microsoft still hasn't recovered from. Oh, yes, of course. The oh, yeah. Xbox One reveal event, which to this day, Microsoft oh, has not recovered their reputation oh. from that. That was 2013. Oh, that was, that was madness. So for yeah, everyone was who crazy. wasn't there, because we're talking like that, that was we're, 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 we're the old yeah. folks home we're sharing stories oh, all right <laughs> gather around old rags just killing stories again you see true oh what were we talking about 2013 <laughs> Did Fringy say a Simpsons joke? Oh, uh, so yeah, but, <laughs> X, Xbox One, right? Like, so man, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make sure that I get everything. So it costs more money than the PlayStation Four. It yeah. had to have the Connect. It had to be online, always online. Um, I Fringy, don't think what's it the even... Connect? Oh, oh man, oh yeah, Connect. That was a fun era as well. Um, you you never played Connectimals? Remember Milo? Uh, so, well, uh, oh that man, was... yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. So, that was the presentation where they said TV more than the word games. Too. Yes, yeah. because they yeah. were talking about yeah. how you could watch like mm -hmm. NFL on Xbox, which is what all the nerds who are watching these sorts of events want to hear about <laughs> is the NFL. Yep. Yeah, so Microsoft got it into their heads that after the Xbox 360, the next Xbox, the Xbox One, terrible fucking name. Expo. But it was yep. named that way because it needed to be like an all-in-one entertainment. It was your video yeah. games, it was your music, it was your TV, your sports. it was everything. Which is like, okay, like, go on, I, I guess. Yeah, I mean, to but be fair, the they kind of they, they kind of got themselves into a hole with 360, because 360 was already the panorama. That was the 360, 360 degrees, so they kind of, they shouldn't have gone 360, because how you follow that up? But anyway, go but, on. Uh, 720. So what Are you serious? Was... They, like they, they, there were no possibilities. Oh, they could have had a way the, better name Xbox than Xbox One. One. Well, yeah. well, and, uh, no, I mean, I, I think Xbox One was stupid, but I'm saying that they kind of screwed themselves a little bit. They kind of screwed themselves uh, a little bit by doing 360. Because... So many I thought, options. I though. thought they were going to do like Xbox Infinity because 720. Yeah, that'd be, two, that'd be better. You know, two full revolutions. That's kind of looks like an Infinity logo. Yeah, but sure. The, um, logo. Yeah. Symbol. But the the Xbox One was supposed to be your everything, your whole entertainment built into one. But the way that this manifested was like Nightmare Realm, because for starters, it was always online. It had to be online. It would not work without an internet connection. Yeah, which and it would check in young... on you. You had to check in every like day or two, uh, otherwise it'll lock you out of your library. So for some yeah. of y'all young whippersnappers listening to this now... Um, that might sound not as crazy and weird, but back in 2013, when your gaming world was like a PlayStation 3, a Nintendo Wii, an Xbox 360, and it was just this game that that, that played discs, the idea of a of a console, not a not like a computer, a PC, but a console that had to be not optional, mandatory, had to have a, a network connection in order to play games that required like daily checks in order to verify that you were allowed essentially to mm. play these games that was nuts at the time and it caused like i i think it was probably the it was probably the biggest controversy of the decade the xbox one launch oh was, definitely um, one of them well, but there's it, more it, it was, crazy, it was, it was yeah. a serious misunderstanding of like there was a lot of cave gamers still people who did not do online and were like a generation behind and were just like this is my mm -hmm. box for playing my video games which had been the case for many people for a very long time well, I think... yeah, that was just the state of gaming, was you had a box, you put a CD into the tray, you closed it, and yeah. you played the game, and that was that. And if you had an internet connection, which a lot of people had, but you know a lot of people didn't bother with that shit, then you could do extra stuff. You had little Xbox Live marketplaces, you had the Xbox Live itself, you could do internet stuff, but it wasn't necessary. Well, there's a lot of people just didn't want to interested. It's like, I don't want internet on my fucking console anyway. I'm fine. Yeah, I just want, to I just want a box yeah. that plays games. And, and then, of course, there's the fact that and... there was a lot of shit internet, too, back then. Uh, yeah. Mine included the, the, the was biggest... horrible back then. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and then mm -hmm. not to mention uh, military folks who yep. didn't have access to internet while they're on, you know, while they're out out of the country or whatever. Those they got completely screwed. Not to mention that they also this was the thing that that PlayStation actually quickly drew up an ad uh, to counter it. Uh, on top of the always online connection, you're basically going to claim a game once to your Xbox. That was something that they also well, reneged the, on. But yeah, that, that was going to be probably the best way to explain it would be um, that used games would not be a thing anymore. Uh, yeah, on the Xbox you One, sell it. you you didn't you basically you bought a license for a game, which on consoles again at the time that was unheard of. The idea that you wouldn't really be buying a disc so much as you would be buying permission to play a disc that you bought. You couldn't buy a game and then give it to your friend to play. That was mm -hmm. just not a thing. It, it couldn't be done anymore. You couldn't... Yeah. The, the whole used game market w for the Xbox was basically about to be destroyed. Um, yeah. And, which, and the GameStop you know, had made discussion, a... But, uh, but at the time, that was like a huge... That was... That's, a, that's unheard of. That was unbelievable at the time. You could argue that GameStop's entire business model was kind of predicated on that at one point. So they were kind of like, oh, uh, guys, <laughs> what's happening? Because they were, they were uh, reselling um, copies like by by the millions, essentially. I, I used that to was like their whole lot. business. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they they were like about to get a huge a huge hit to that, but also yeah, just the. I think they they were going to have some sort of game sharing thing, but it was going to be really backwards and weird. But yeah, the a certain subsect would not be able to play their games at all because they didn't have a constant internet connection. Plus the games were buy, buy once, play it, and you can't sell the disc. The disc is basically plastic at that point. You can't actually use it. Oh, but but that's not all. You see, all of that sounds fucking terrible and, and is shit that gets heads and pikes. But it was worse because one of the primary reasons why the Xbox One was going to be so expensive is because it had the Kinect as part of it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't an optional additional thing microsoft said and this was a lie just for clear this was oh yeah they said it was impossible to take the, apart from the console and it was a lie they just flipped the switch <laughs> microsoft said that the xbox one and the connect were designed to be together that they couldn't be apart that the one by the very nature of how it's designed was supposed to be with the connect and that it couldn't function without it and the connect was basically like a little eye tractor tracker motion sensor kind of thing and you could do some games or whatever stuff with it. It was a thing that people didn't want. People didn't want the Connect. The Connect didn't sell. Connect games didn't sell. But for whatever reason, uh, I forget who was in charge of Microsoft at the time. On Matrick. Yeah, that was it. Uh, he was really, really insistent uh, that the Connect be a part of the Xbox system. Uh, eventually, they just decided that oh actually no the, the xbox works just fine without the connect and they stopped bundling the connect with it the connect was totally optional and then of course like an old person being disconnected from life support um, <laughs> the connect just died yeah because people didn't want the connect people didn't fucking want that shit all right it was annoying and there was a wii Ain't it? people didn't want that. xbox to gamers didn't want the connect so the connect died in a crazy a lot of uh they had all this like crazy new ideas to do all these different shit and it's just like had you just announced a fucking console and a bunch of games you would have been fine we'd be fine right now and playstation you, did that. you and your <laughs> well, ego yeah well, 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 well also time... what to think about is that at the time playstation it took a little while for them to build up a library on the playstation 4 of uh of exclusive games so, like, there was an opportunity there for Microsoft to be like, hey, we have more games to show off, but, like, the message got set so terribly early on that, like, mm. we're not the gaming, you know, basically, like, PlayStation firmly established, we are the game, you know, company uh, with, with, with PlayStation. We want to make games, we want to sell you games, that's our only interest, that's the only point of the system, and that resonated with people. So even though Xbox, I remember E3, they were like, games, it's all about games here. Games, games, games. And they had plenty of games, but it's like, yeah, it's too late. Like, everybody's thinking about the Connect. Yep, and how all you tried to screw them over. It was the always <laughs> yeah. online. It Is was it, the Connect. It that was, was um, the, the Milo presentation, right? With the creepy little uh, kid. No, that was uh, that was like twenty. That was that was that, earlier. That was Xbox three hundred and sixty. Oh yeah, that was the that was for the original Connect for the three hundred and sixty. I think. About, yeah. um, you was, remember it was A three two thousand ten. That was the one that Microsoft spent pretty much exclusively on Connect. Yeah, because uh, I remember like being connected to game. Connect. Um, and I just remember it, like nobody liked it at all, and it was just an idea that disappeared. Uh, the creepy little child that, was, uh, that you Mullen speak to. One, right? 
yeah peter molyneux yeah, yeah it, that was it was actually i actually don't know a lot about that i researched quite a bit about that unfortunately all peter molyneux all night yeah at least 10 oh. minutes um i'm uh peter molyneux is actually like definitely to blame for that but also they got kind of screwed apparently they back when it was called project natal they were giving dev oh, kits God, and uh, that, not, yeah. not and uh yeah. uh not not to be confused with dev and in, in chat but like dev kits uh and mm. apparently they kept on lowering the specs on uh the connect until they released so basically what released was like a dumbed down worsened version of the original hardware for cost and price and whatever reasons so what they could do with the initial kit was not really what they could do with the final kit and so something like milo wasn't really possible anymore um, and you could even see that with like the live demos of like my favorite, my favorite connect video in the world. I'll have to find it sometime is this guy on stage saying like, Hey, you ever want to see what the bottom of your, your shoe looks like on your avatar? Well, bam, there it is. And then, and then his, it goes he, backwards. It's <laughs> his whole body like contorts. It's like some sort of like, <laughs> some sort of like dead space monster. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a really bad idea. It was, I remember it was, um, it was the thing that they said was like, oh, for too many people, the controller is a barrier to playing video games. It was all this weird shit because yeah. everybody wanted what Nintendo had with the Wii. Because uh, I remember the PlayStation had the PlayStation move, but they, they didn't tie up so much. Um, of their time and investment and their future of their brand and in, in that yeah it, it, it was definitely that. like microsoft dug too greedily and too deeply and i think so it's um it, it's kind of like a it's it's it it's, uh, it's a recurring story throughout the video game industry is that there seems to be that every time that a console manufacturer like one of those companies becomes dominant they make some big mistake mainly born out of some kind of arrogance that creates big problems for them. So, like, you know, in, in a sense, Nintendo kind of created PlayStation. Um, oh, yeah. And a, a PlayStation 2 was the best-selling console of all time, which led to the PlayStation 3 uh, that ended up, when it came out, costing too much money, not enough games. Xbox 360 was already out with its own problems, like Red Ring. I and believe Death. it was also a really oh, big bitch the... to develop for that thing, too. Yes, the, the cell processor was notoriously difficult to develop for. And really, all of that stemmed from where the top dog, which... They had reason to believe they'd sold five times as many, uh, you know, well, consoles as any of their nearest competitors. And not then, only did they sell so much, but they basically were, you want to play online games? You're buying an Xbox for Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. yeah, and by the way, um, they charged for it. it Xbox Live yeah. was a monthly subscription back then, but, and the PlayStation equivalent was free, but Xbox Live was just better. It was better. Like, uh, PlayStation 3 didn't even have cross-game chat. Oh, I you remember that. You couldn't chat with people. Yeah, but it's because yeah. of the memory. The PlayStation 3 just didn't have the memory necessary to do that sort of thing. In Xbox Live, it just had a better infrastructure behind the online services. So, but the yeah, thing is, you'd is have that all parties of that, on it. Thinking, I guess what's interesting is that I think that the cycle continued with Xbox 360 into Xbox One, but they didn't really have that much cause to be arrogant. By the end of that generation, PlayStation 3 had overtaken the sales of... Uh, of the xbox xbox was super successful in america but playstation was more successful worldwide so like they came into the xbox one arrogant when they hadn't dominated like playstation did with the ps2 or like nintendo had done basically for the prior decade before the playstation came out and now they're still recovering from it like xbox still has a reputation problem that stems essentially from that um xbox one reveal event they've really yeah. not recovered yeah, the 360 well, had a really good start. It had like Mass Effect, um, uh, Gears of War, like very early Bioshock on. They, that, and all sorts Bioshock, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and even up uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, they had that, I think, in 2005, well, 2006. The 360 had a great but library of all sorts did. of yeah, great it, games. Uh, starting out, they had a fantastic library, but toward the end, they I don't think there was even like an exclusive release in 2013, if I, if I recall correctly. Not, not a big one, I at think least. Gears but, of War judgment. but like, ah, it was like one of the worst Gears of Wars. But we play as but Bade, the right? PS or something like that. Yeah. yeah, but like PS3 launched The Last of Us in 2013. Like they had some great like exclusives at the time, you know, great mm -hmm. exclusives toward, toward the end of their own run. Uh, so they, well, God God of War 3. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think yeah. you're right about I think yeah. you're right about these cycles, Fringy, because also at the same time, you know, in between um at some I think it was was it the middle of the PlayStation 3's life when there was the big data leak and Sony had to like publicly yeah. apologize. It's like I'm sorry, like we we fucked up and then like they kind of humbled themselves for a bit and then they were an okay company and then like by the end of the PS4 era they had returned to their shitty ways. Yeah, I think yeah. PlayStation <laughs> starting to get to the end of that cycle now as well that they've yeah. gotten a bit like to the place of yeah, we can spend like 300 million dollars on a single player game with no 
you know, like, and then release that and, and, and then we'll be good, right? And it's like, oh, shit, you might not be so good, actually. Like, that mm -hmm. you might be getting a bit oh. complacent with this model. I, I think what pissed everyone off the most about all of this is there was some game journalist who asked someone at Microsoft, well, what what does the person who doesn't have an internet connection do? And the guy said, play a 360. Play yeah, a 360. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The thing is, is that, that you've got to make you you. Uh, mm. it in oh the corporate God. space. because and That was Don Matrick. And he, he, yeah, yeah. he, we, have, he a, we have a platform. It. We have a platform for people who don't want to use the online connection. It's called Xbox 360. That's what yeah. Yeah. They, were, phones? they were thinking <laughs> yeah. that they would essentially be like, yeah, if you don't have internet, then we're going to continue to sell Xbox 360s to people who didn't have an internet connection it could not be like, over it's just like so no, instead man, of there's moving Wii's, the there's PlayStation's forward, like well yeah, yeah it's like yeah. instead of moving the the console generation of you know his company forward it was like we're well some of you are going to be on the xbox one and some of As you are just going to be buying out, 360s though, this was the early version of don't you do you not have phones this <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, it was yeah. taken the exact same way on the internet yeah mm -hmm. it's it could not be of, yeah capitulate I, I remember... essentially except the landscape that we're presenting to you don't don't push back against it at all and yeah um, it cannot be overstated I, 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 I how know. bad uh don metric ruined the reputation of xbox oh, yeah. another it's... one of his choice quotes was if you're backwards compatible you're really backwards like he was just like digging the grave of that company so much yeah he quit, and i think he left well, like a year after that, that, that's kind of crazy because they ended up doing that xbox one um backwards compatibility program that was actually it was really great that's great yeah, 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 that, yeah. That, yeah. you can play, you can play morrowind yeah yeah you can play morrowind in 4k now it's awesome like they, they have better backwards it's compatibility than sony does mm -hmm. yeah it, it is, is it, it's probably like one of the biggest gaming um like controversies like um fumbles of probably the entire history of I think gaming. that it definitely eclipses because everybody told you know Ridge Racer like E3 <laughs> 599 US dollars everybody talks about that but really yeah. the X like PlayStation recovered and it didn't even take it took them like four or five years and they were already starting to like get close to eclipsing Xbox 360 meanwhile Xbox One, for them. they went back on everything. Everything they went back mm -hmm. on. Use games, we, we can't take yeah. those away. It's too integral a part of an industry. And when yeah, we have our, we our big competitor that. who's, you know, openly, brazenly telling everyone, oh, yeah, use games are totally fine, just like normal. You can just give it to them. Boom, it's going to be great. Like, well, now we have to have used games or else oh. we'll get slaughtered. We, we got to get rid of the Kinect, so the Kinect went away. Yep. Uh, the always online thing, that went away. Everything that they tried to do, they walked back on and it, it and and they've been crippled ever since it's been 11 yeah. years and i don't think they've ever been able to make up so, from that huge loss of momentum that they had with the xbox 360 so so the, the thing is i've kind of been watching all of the very i'm sure we all have but i've been watching all of the um the conferences that come out you know like nintendo directs and the inside xboxes and whatever right nice. since since that moment pretty much every single uh, you know xbox online stream where they show off the next upcoming games there's no bullshit in them it's just like okay here's the trailers here's the games here, they're coming out and there's, there's there's none of that bullshit it's been like that for years mm -hmm. microsoft's and, yeah. a weird company when it comes to like video games they're a they're an odd duck with the naming well, conventions with uh, that, um Hellblade well, well yeah but out I, like four days and there's no marketing for it whatsoever it yeah, was marketing funny. for it like seven years ago yeah. when it was first announced, and then I haven't heard well, anything from out, it since. It's coming yeah, out yeah. You know, next week, and I feel like there's no marketing, no buzz for it whatsoever. And it's like, Microsoft, you don't have anything else like coming out for months. I was, What's going on? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, I was not even aware that it's going to be out in just a week. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, they, right. they, 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 a week, yeah. they had but, to be reminded I, I to market I mean, it, though. and they just... They made a tweet and that was it. <laughs> they made a tweet. <laughs> no, like legitimately, this was after the Tango GameWorks thing. Someone was like, "Hey, they added Microsoft. Hey, you should probably market Hellblade." And so they like just tweeted a picture of it. Yeah, that was the, it's that's coming. the marketing so far. Got a bit of graphics now. Yeah. The tweets are so, expensive though. I, I guess yeah. what I mean, it, it it seems like Microsoft on on some level has learned their lesson because whenever they do they do a stream or a conference, it's like no bullshit, you know, no sports, none of this nonsense. Just here's a bunch of games. They'll come out, enjoy them every single time. It's like, okay, well, you've learned your lesson. And the the uh, the, the backwards compatibility on the on the Series X is really good. I, like, I actually bought well, one because I have a bunch game of Game Pass is amazing. Yeah, Game Pass is great too. Yeah, but I mean, I I bought a Series X solely because I have a shit ton of old Xbox and Xbox 360 games, and I mean, my 360 is not going to last forever, right? So I bought this thing, and they're all backwards compatible. It's like, oh, I can just play all my old stuff. 
on yeah. this on this console. That's great. Yeah, you know, the, it's actually a pretty a pretty good device they they built was... here and like a good ecosystem and like no one cares about Xbox anymore. There was a like, weird, all, uh, all the all the all the brand loyalty games. Gone. You gotta have fucking well, it's because Halo's been driven into the fucking dirt, so you can't have oh, Halo sure, yeah, anymore. Yeah. And that shit used to be like a titan in video games. Yep. Not to and mention, then, there's really today, no reason to have an Xbox. Just most of the games just go right to PC as well. If you yeah, if you well, d- yeah, if but, you want the like the the simplicity and convenience, I guess, of a console, you can. But apart from that, it's like there's no reason to have it. Yeah, that, that is why, why I bought it. Right, Sony stuff. What are you about so, to say, Mola? Um, I, the, I've got a. We had a hiccup at oh, one point sorry. for backwards compatibility. The I think they were trying to get rid of it overall, but like uh, the value of it is fucking insane. Because even the PS5, right? Because uh, it was in the PS3, the initial versions came out with backwards compatibility for PS2, but then yep. the later versions yes. stopped yes. it. And, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Man, well, like, so many people deep, were like, that... "No, what the fuck have you done?" And then uh, I remember PS4 being a really awkward era for. Backwards compatibility, but PS5, like every PS4 game is uh, passable on it. It's just like, just if you can maintain it, good God, it feels like such yeah. a good buy if you can use but, all your yeah, old games. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. Exactly what I, that's exactly what I did, though, right? Because I have this giant collection of, it's got to be like 300 games at this point, of old Xbox and 360 games um, for, for both the original Xbox and for 360. And almost all of them work on my Series X. And it's like, well, I can just have yeah. this now in my living room instead of, and, and, and it all works. Like I didn't buy it for new games. I bought it for that purpose to be like an old gaming machine. And it works really well in that, in that slot. Yeah. It's actually it kind of crazy been... that of, out of all of the different uh, console devs, the Xbox actually can play four different generations of games, which is yeah. crazy considering that there was, yeah, the PS3 was the last one. The first version of the PS3 could play PS1 and PS2. And then the second version, which looked exactly the same, they took away the PS2 emulation board or whatever it was. That's actually part of the reason why it was so expensive because they had to add a extra hardware to play PS2 games. Mm. Um, and then when they did the PS3 Slim, they took away all backwards compatibility. So actually, yeah. I bought the second version, which could still play PS1 games, weirdly enough, but not PS2 games. But yeah, it's really a kind of a lost art. And I know it's difficult, especially when they went with a whole new architecture with the cell architecture, which is completely different. But it's such a lost art too. And even, even uh, Nintendo has kind of lost that too because... They on the Wii and the Wii U, which was ba- backwards compatible with the Wii. There was a time where you could actually play Wii, you know, Wii U, and GameCube games on the same console, and you had almost all the good games in on the the virtual console online. And then they shut and all that then shit. They, then they they shut think, it all down. I, yeah. okay, I think Nintendo is more defensible because the platforms are like different formats pretty frequently. You know, how is the N64 to the GameCube, right? That's not going to be backwards yeah. compatible. Unless, I guess, you well, added also, an extra cartridge reader on it, and then, like, the Switch can't read discs. You also feel so like so Nintendo yeah. just has better consistent favor with the audiences than the other companies. Which it, feels... it shouldn't even surprise anybody. They consistently release great games. Meanwhile, yeah. Sony and Xbox just fundamentally are less reliable when it comes to the quality well, of the uh, games and the I, experience. I will say make. that the Nintendo has like a sort of shield, though. Like when they release physical DLC, nobody gives a shit, even though like they release. Oh, yeah. Nintendo like, the, gets yeah. Well, that's what I'm kind of saying. Yeah. Though. The reason why they get away with it a little bit more, I think, is because they have just so much better favor. People are like, yeah, but then Nintendo, yeah. they make games I love. It's like it's yeah, it's surprising games. how far yeah, that can go. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I think it's, uh, it's it's kind of highlighted here, right? You're pointing out all of these things that Microsoft has done over the last decade, which is true. I remember there have been times when PlayStation have gone up on stage to talk about television and film adaptations of their projects. Meanwhile, Microsoft will never do that at any of these gaming events anymore. Um, there's a whole, and of course, backwards compatibility, and yet a lot of this just hasn't like earned them what they were probably hoping for, which is that it would earn them favor again. And I imagine part of it is just tethered to that, like people don't have a strong association with Xbox and like a set of games that you can only play on Xbox that are really exciting and interesting to people. That's yeah, the kind they of need thing a better need to game them. list. They need better IPs and franchises. Well, that... they need to. They need I don't to think let that people the... know about what they have to offer, you know, and like more coherently because they definitely have games that you know. PlayStation, in a certain sense, you could say that there's a level of um homogeneity to the types of games that they tend to release that are like their big heavy hitters, right? They tend to be third person single player action adventure games, have heavily cinematic. Meanwhile, like Xbox doesn't have that level of you know, there's like racing games, third-person shooters, first-person shooters, strategy games. That said, there's more variety, but like people aren't really aware of it. 
Yeah, the uh, the kind of leaders of the Xbox thing were like, you know, you had Fable, you had Gears of War, you had uh, Halo, obviously, you had even even uh, Mass Effect was an exclusive at, at one point. Like those are all gone. They're all like left or become multi-plat or just the, the they've taken the IP and extracted it from the original devs in, in terms of, you know, Bungie and, and uh, Gears of War even. So it's like you don't really have those. But like, oh, I got to get the next Gears game. Oh, I got to get get the next Halo game. It's not really the case anymore. Microsoft needs to get their shit together mm -hmm. when it comes with like development studios and making good games. They need to figure out what they're going to be doing over there because the reason they could do all this stuff is because Microsoft is way bigger than Sony and is not even close. Um, well, they, Microsoft they just... is like an insanely big company, so they can float this shit and they can make mistakes and they could do weird stuff and they can have mixed signals and they can just get away with it because Microsoft as a company is just is so much bigger than Microsoft, you know, the the, the games division of it. Is, Whereas, so yeah, well, the, the, the gaming department of Microsoft is a sliver like of yeah, what tiny. they offer. I mean, they they govern Windows. I mean, that's fucking huge. Yeah, but Nintendo mm. can't fuck around. Sony can't fuck around because their gaming elements are huge as a portion of what that company exists as. Yeah, so, several years ago, uh, Sony shut has, down. Sorry, man. I was saying Microsoft just has this 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 big like forgiveness barrier that they're working within. And I think that that might be kind of crippling them in a sense that they live in this padded world where if, if things don't go well financially is like well that's just such a tiny point of a tiny segment of the entire corporation that you know it doesn't seem nearly as bad yeah um, i mean the, a great example of that was microsoft buys freaking Act, uh, activision blizzard for like what 70 i think it was 69 billion at the end literally and 69 billion the fucking mean <laughs> meme number. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty after funny they bought zenimax too <laughs> yeah they bought zenimax and freaking activision blizzard one of the biggest of uh publisher combos in in the world and then sony's like uh we got you we're gonna buy bungie <laughs> yeah. it's like like for like a couple billion i think but i mean yeah and and you're right like sony sony used to be huge sony used to be have everything sony used to have like computer parts they used to have uh you know a bunch of audio stuff tvs they used to be all over the place um and then i think about 10 years ago they consolidated down to like a couple different industries and gaming was a big part of it because that was one of the few profitable areas they had so yeah sony's really reliant on making games work now Actually, and with, uh, with Microsoft's yeah. big acquisition, I never got the sense that it was ever about like giving good games to people. It was it was about them being the top dog. Uh, it's big dick energy, you know? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, there's only so many times you can buy a studio and then tank it and close it before eventually something has to give, you know? And Microsoft yeah, probably hit that point. You can't be soon. EA forever. People are getting a little sick of it. <laughs> people yeah. know mm -hmm. oh man okay did you guys see that one article that came out maybe a couple of days ago maybe a week ago where they had they had just closed the studio that did hi-fi rush and then microsoft yeah somehow, microsoft, it works. Yeah, yeah microsoft was like we need more like mid-sized kind of indie-ish games rather than relying on these big studios and it's like well what the fuck are you doing then like it's, right. it seems like they're big enough that they don't they don't even know what, what they're doing well, you, you just so big the that they, be like, uh, not like that, like it's someone else. That was a, um, <laughs> that strikes me as a particularly big blunder because it feels like that studio closure has dealt a lot more negative PR to them than like keeping it would be expected. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I think it's, um, and just it's having just, an underselling I, game, <laughs> it's way it been better. So. Than just... I, think so. like, I, think, um, I think that it had like a disproportionate effect of like making everybody go, huh. Kind of looking at Microsoft, like, hmm, you know, why would I buy an Xbox? Xbox? Well, what, and then, hmm, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and I think it's because Hi Fi Rush that. was just a, a, a well beloved game. Like, people, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a new game, it was Xbox exclusive, and people actually liked it. And they're like, yeah, how about we just destroy the studio? Yeah. It's like, oh. And important part of the story is that there was some speculation that the game had done poorly due to Game Pass, and they had come out and said, no, 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 by all our metrics, Hi Fi Rush did well. Yeah, they so, defended it. Like, so you can succeed and still be shut down? Huh, okay. Hmm, that's yeah, yeah. how it was. Good with, to know. Um, they actually, there's actually a clip of them asking Kingrider, one right? of the Microsoft executives if if Tango Gameworks could do well and buy your own account, have a successful game, and you still close them, what does that mean for the rest of the companies under the Microsoft umbrella? There's like a really good clip of that. Yeah, there's a cooling well, effect I, there. Yeah, she was if like, oh, I don't customer, know. If I'm looking to buy a game box to play games... 
I don't, it, it fills me with a lot of hesitation when I look at like a general ecosystem for um, a game box. And it's really, you know, it, it's really kind of shaky and weird and they're firing companies and they don't have any like flagship franchises. It makes me very hesitant to get on board, so to speak. And, and I think that you shouldn't underestimate that kind of attitude that it just, it just kind of puts people off from getting into the ecosystem if you're sending these signals. I don't yeah. want to hear that you're firing development teams. I want to. I want to hear that if it to make it you know appealing to me as a potential consumer that you're buying a lot of studios, that they're making a lot of games, that you have all sorts of stuff coming out, that you have all of these you know all of these developers who are working for you making stuff for you. That I know when I buy that box, it's going to have all sorts of games for many many years, and I'm not going to regret it. They're also yeah. uh, they just announced that Call of Duty is going to be Game Pass first day. Um, yeah, day that's yeah. the thing though. I think Activision Blizzard acquisition is probably going to change a lot about how like now that they've got that you know Call of Duty, that's probably going to be a big focus for them now. You know, but, what, what but chance does Halo that... stand right with Call of Duty? Like as a as the new thing yeah. that they can pitch is like this is why you need Game Pass is Call of Duty. We'll Everything say, will be deferred to, you know, Call of Duty. Call of Duty's, like, naming but, convention, I think, is past parody now, too. Like, when of the <laughs> reboot series of Black oh, Ops yeah, or Non-Warfare, whatever. Call of Duty, Black Ops, um, like, Cold War, you know? It's, like, oh, wow, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just like, I can't actually tell the difference between a real name and a, a made-up name. Modern Warfare 3, not to be confused <laughs> with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Uh, well, if this goes yeah. even deeper than the games themselves, it's like, what... What are the names of the Xboxes that are that exist? If I want to buy an Xbox, well, it's. Uh, I think what, the what thing is that? Was, Series X and Series X. Series S and X, X, and there's X different and variants of each. And the the Xbox naming convention has been a fucking train wreck since yep. the 360. I mean, it's like Xbox 360. It's like it's a box, but it's, it's a so circle kind annoying. of okay. And then you had Xbox <laughs> One. And people use Xbox One to refer to the original Xbox yeah, that yeah. came out before the yeah. Xbox 60, so it's just confusing. And then you have the Xbox Series, like what does Series even mean? Like it's one console with one other variant that doesn't have the disc tray in it, so why are you calling it a Series? I don't understand. And then the leaks came out for like the new one that they're making, and it's a fucking cylinder. It's like, pick a shape, guys. <laughs> like, come on. What are you doing? Like, I don't know. It just turns out the incrementing number tends to work out pretty well. Yeah, play yeah, well, uh, one, two, yeah. three, four, five. Yeah, that's it. Numbers are a well. top tier choice, but man, there are so many words in the English language that would be perfect to make an iconic console. Why I'm... did you do what you did, <laughs> you fools? <laughs> I made, uh, I made the joke a few years so... ago. I made the joke a few years ago that they need to release the Xbox Series Enhanced X. The Xbox Sex. <laughs> oh, nice. Very nice. good. Yeah. You know, GameCube. Look, what a if, fucking if, iconic uh, name for a, for yeah, a console. GameCube right was now. great. Yeah. <laughs> it it yeah, looked so cool. Game. It looked like a fucking GameCube. And, and, the and it Game had a little Boy. handle on the back that no one ever and, used. By the way, <laughs> talk about the lost art of uh, video, like, video game console introductory screens. Oh, oh God, the yeah. One, the GOAT. Oh, the, the, now, the GameCube logo is one of the most brilliant designs I've ever seen. It, it is something. brilliant. It is. It's excellent. It's so there are good. There of it now, too, and it's just that good. That's right. It's it's amazing. I love it, and it GameCube feels like that's great. kind of a lost start as well. We, we're starting to get much more boring. Because remember the original Xbox, like, introductory screen? That was kind of cool. You know, it was like in that lab. You, you know what I'm cool talking about, game right? Box. Does, yeah. Yeah. Does anyone remember? Yeah. This is some super deep lore. I don't even know if people in chat will know. Maybe one person. But there was a reviewer back when YouTube started. I can't remember if he was, he was like he was the angry reviewer. Some bullshit. Like one of those variations. He was reviewing the GameCube. And uh, I can't remember if it went like that viral. But he had a clip where he was like, The game disc is so stupid in GameCube. Looks like chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> like he was really, <laughs> he was really mad. Yeah, at they it. Had those, yeah, that's right. They had those little discs. Yeah, the ones. yeah. Oh fuck, it was so funny. Yeah. It's actually sad because the GameCube was one of the least successful consoles for Nintendo, and and the reason was actually because of the disc and the the fact that all the big games were coming out with full uh, DVD um, hard drive space or discs space and you couldn't do multi memory i believe you cards. couldn't do um you could do memory cards in gamecube but um compared to the ps2 them. uh but compared yeah, to the ps2 the you couldn't 
Yeah, PS2 had bigger discs, therefore bigger games. And so it's yeah. hard to port things to the GameCube. Well, Even though Ed, GameCube was more powerful than the PS2 so hardware-wise, it was You could play DVDs on it, too. Like, I mean, yeah, that, that was yeah, a huge that was yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Big deal. I, I know that they basically did the small disc thing for piracy reasons, basically, because the, uh, the small discs hold, like, 1.5 gigs. DVD holds 4.7. They're like, listen, mm -hmm. small discs that are blank are very rare, so no one will pirate it. Yeah, and Nintendo's been really Nintendo's been really anal about that. They even did on the Wii, they did it so that the disc plays backwards, just so they had they'd make it more difficult to pirate. I'm like, come on, guys. Mm. <laughs> so like <laughs> and so every single console would have um, I think the Xbox 360 was gonna do HD DVD, which that obviously didn't work out. But I think one yeah. of the big things about the PS3 was that it could play Blu-rays. I bought a PS3 to replace my two uh also as a to double as a Blu-ray player. That was a great deal. Yeah. So we didn't have a Blu-ray mm -hmm. player at the time, so that's why I got it. Well, I remember yeah, the yeah. PlayStation 3 was like a really good deal for a Blu-ray player back in the day. Like Blu-ray oh, yeah. players were really expensive for the PlayStation 3. <laughs> they found like, right, like yeah, thousand dollars, weren't they? It was yeah, ridiculous. Was like ridiculous. PlayStation yeah. 3 was genuinely comparatively yeah. cheaper to get as like a Blu-ray player. People, right, in comparison to Blu-ray players alone, it was a bargain to get a system mm -hmm. that would play those and games as well. Yeah. He called it the Nintendo shit cube, and he, the reviewer, was, <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was called the pissed off video gamer. That was his. <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, my god. god. <laughs> this sounds familiar now. Holy That's shit! That's pretty funny. Oh, oh. Is that really Can we watch that? It's ten minutes. His review. <laughs> sure, do it. We have, Maybe we after we get Cheryl. through this, we, we gotta finish dinner first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so should we get back to extra chromosomes yeah, here? Maybe, yeah, we have yes. yeah, this minute we've only we've barely <laughs> gotten a minute into maybe, maybe that's maybe inflation. Uh, well, it's on worth court. worth saying that We're everything we've talked time. about is just the tip of the iceberg of how the industry has gradually over time desperately tried to make gaming arguably like make our dollar Worst. worth less, uh, so to speak. For, for what, like, mm -hmm. less bang for your buck in so many different ways. Some subtle, some overt that got them in all kinds of trouble. Some stuff got they got away with it because, um, microtransactions would be a huge one. And I assume he's going to bring it up. And we'll probably talk more about it then. But you know, a little history yeah. lesson for all you whippersnappers out there from all us old people talking the about youngins. how things used to be. Uh, and uh, here, if you want like a more direct comparison, so I'm doing the Suicide Squad thing right now for a video and. Like, there, man, some of the skins in that game are just fucking stupid. Like, $10? Like, what the fuck? You, you can go back to, like, I think it's Arkham City, and you get, like, a skin pack of, like, 10 skins for, what, two bucks? Mm. Mm -hmm. like, just just the slow creeping of how much all this shit costs. But yeah, it shouldn't it's, even be in the game, if, if, yeah. like, at all. I remember with map packs, it would be like, back in the day when they started up, you'd be like, oh my god, five maps for X price, and then four, and then three, and then the price goes up, and you're like, hmm. Oh, maybe it's a really good yeah. map. <laughs> like, hopefully it's a <laughs> map they spent loads of time on. That's probably it. And uh, the, the peer pressure where you couldn't play with your friends anymore unless you bought those map packs, they really got you there. Oh, for sure. don't right. even make me fucking start. Yeah, everyone's got to have yeah, a copy I of think, it. Yeah. I, th I don't know how often they do that anymore because I think a lot of companies were realizing, like, oh, shit, like, we're, we're just, like, we're move. splitting our player base. We're splitting the groups of people who can play yeah. with each other. And yeah, people they are focus... just going to play the vanilla maps is all they're going to do. And they won't be able to play with all the people who buy the DLC stuff. Or we have to make the DLC really good, like Battlefield 1, for instance, which had fucking banger DLCs with excellent maps. So I think uh, Free yeah. has a PTSD story to do with um, map pack splitting. Like I'm one of those always, standard I'm stories. Ready to hear Fringy's PTSD. <laughs> I'll remind him once he's uh, returned from the ether because I, yeah. I, I, I I remember him. He's told it a few times because it's like it gave him serious trauma. I think it was like playing with friends, and then everyone was. It was like a vote for a map, and he was like, "Don't vote for that one. I don't have it." And then everyone was like, "No." <laughs> oh my god, that sucks. Fringy, you back? Um, Yes. Are you telling the story of that time when I was in Modern Warfare 2? When I was I... going to say, you tell it better because it happened to you. <laughs> so, you, you guys remember, Modern Warfare 2 had some map packs. I played a lot of Modern Warfare 2, but I didn't get the map packs. And I remember I was in this lobby, and this was back when you would actually meet randoms, like, in video games online and play with them for a bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like the in good days. Other humans out in the wild. Mm. And you would actually want to do that rather than instantly muting. Because you don't want to talk to anybody, but um, it was well back in the day. Up. It was cooler and more novel to be like, oh, there's like random people that I'm playing games with that I've never met before. Yeah, you know? and we have a shared interest I, uh, somewhat. We we grouped up and we're having a lot of fun. We played a few games, and then uh, it popped up from the map pack, 
and there was also the option, and I was like, wait, 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 I don't have the map, I don't have the map, guys, like, I can't, I can't play this one, can we, can we skip this one? Um, and this was all falling on deaf ears as the countdown continued and nobody was vetoing the map. Uh, and then it, it booted up the game and I got kicked out automatically by the game because I didn't have the maps. And I, uh, I was really sad about that. And I was like, ah, oh, damn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was having fun. And now I'm left out. Terrible. I don't want to play yeah. with you anymore. Who's ready for the I voice? <laughs> RP. It was, it was just, yeah. I, I, I really wanted to play. I, I really, I really wanted to <laughs> keep playing, and, but I couldn't. But everybody wanted to play the new maps. Of course they did. Yeah. Nobody was going to veto it. Everybody wants to play the new maps. That's it goes. Uh, I guess we should probably play us play at some point. Yeah, let's, let's have an argument other than inflation. I like the idea. If he was here, he'd be like, "You don't even know what my arguments are." We're like, "Shut the fuck up." We were talking about Xbox. Oh, we're okay. Talking about stuff. <laughs> okay, y'all. So who's excited to talk about inflation? Huh? Me. Wait, wait, wait! Don't go! Don't go! Because I promise you, here and now, two things. One. That breaking down inflation is very important to understanding our perception of What's the cost of What's to break down? I don't know. Inflation happened. Your purchasing power Line has decreased up. to a dollar. Like, I feel like yes, people are more aware than ever of inflation as well, because it comes up all the time in movie nowadays. discussions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, just especially yeah. nowadays. It feels like for the last few years, inflation's been a particularly relevant topic for a mm -hmm. lot of people. But there's nothing to break down. Yes, $60 in 1995 is, is worth more than $60 in 2024. Yes. Obviously. Yeah, you don't have to be interested in like, politics to know what inflation is. There's so. nothing to break down. I think that's what I, annoying me. The idea that there's anything to break down. It's so straightforward. Well, what annoys me is I hate this fucking disclaimer of, oh, we're going to talk about something boring. No, I want to hear the boring thing. Yeah. Like, it's, just it's, fucking talk about it unironically. It's, it, 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 it should be, like, integral to the video. Why would I have clicked it? It's, it's like, oh, I, I want to hear about how games are cheaper, not about, about how me. the dollar has changed value. Like, what? I mean, to be honest, I'd rather <laughs> learn about the life of this act, this blob that I guess is the inflation. <laughs> is blob. that the slime monster from the coffee cup? He, it's grown. Is he, does he like want more money? Is that like what happens that whenever the government, you know, wants to print more money, he's like, no, 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 no. They squeeze him and all the dollars come out. <laughs> Inside the yeah, United States Capitol matter. building, there's a creature in the basement <laughs> that controls inflation. <laughs> more money. Yeah. It's so time for a squeeze. Childs have to sacrifice orphans to it to keep the value of money stable. <laughs> oh my God, Rags! Rags, you figured it out. That's what they I were did. trying to get to on on January sixth. They're they're, right. they're secretly <laughs> going down and trying to kill the inflation <laughs> monster. monster. We're always down. He's there. got a little like he's got a little TV so, to see updates, and he's just sweating. Look at them getting closer and closer. He's like, they're not going to find me, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I I think you know the fact I that. Move. I think the fact that he's including this disclaimer kind of indicates that this is probably going to be his real only argument. Well, I sure hope it is. Like, we don't have time for this. He's got nine that. minutes. I know. Oh, we got I all know. day. Don't worry, Theo. Um, but <laughs> for us, I am waiting for at the end the therefore. I'm waiting for like yes, what the, the, the games class, yeah. are oh, yeah. than they've ever been. Dot dot dot. So shut the therefore. fuck up about how they're expensive. Something like well, that. Yeah, yeah. Asterisk it. That's that should cost more money. Mm -hmm. Important to understanding our perception of the cost of games, and two, that we're gonna have some fun images of your favorite video game characters walking you all through it. Wait, what, fuck what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. Dude. <laughs> I don't that even is know who brutal. The first character look, is. Look, at, look at Slippy there. Look at him. Who's, wait, who's what have you done to Slippy? Tiny Tina. Like he's a fucking child. Who's From Borderlands. Can Slippy Tiny have Tina. arms, goddammit. I don't know who that so, person is. Yeah. Can we be honest? This rendition of Sonic sucks compared to mine. Wait, how come Tiny Tina has an arm? Has most of an arm. Do we have like that's a sleeve? Yeah, it's Tiny Tina. Like, you want to have a discussion arm. whether or not oh, Sonic's nice. arms are blue or tan? How about none? I'm really enjoying the look on Slippy's face right there. He looks <laughs> He's trapped in the video. Here. Here. Slippy saw the Get me the fuck system. out of here. <laughs> Am I a boy or a girl? He's using me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the exact moment he what? found out that he was going to be in an extra credits video. <laughs> okay. All right. You know how we do. Thanks for believing in us. Aww. Okay. If you I think of the like, uh, mass market. 
home video games it, starting am i in supposed to be encouraged by the fact that you're going to reference so fucking sonic the hedgehog i don't fucking know dude <laughs> yeah that whenever i hear sonic the hedgehog well, i mean I just, what? Inflation. how what just how was condescending it because he's movie? yeah he yeah, was just so, kind of sitting. It's like I know, I know you, you smooth brains don't want to listen to something like inflation. So I'm going to distract you with these silly characters. Well, yeah, those two points. They were <laughs> strictly over compensation. One, please don't be bored. Two, I'm going to jangle some keys. Like I will. They'll shine. You're going to be like, ooh, look at that. You'll love the sound. It'll be great. God, so, embarrassing. Yay. This is like this is an, in part an animation channel. So I would, at the very least, expect the minimum of you drawing things for your yeah. video. And not just talking to me, right? So it's like it's not a point. It's it's the minimum of what you should do for this. Beginning of mass market home video games starting in say 1982 when the Atari 2600 came out. Well, a dollar back then was worth a lot more than a dollar Holy today. Shit. Holy shit! Oh, it's no, all right. Okay. Wow. We just oh, is. Oh, my God. We just we died. Who knows where you go? Big dollar. Is there any proof of this? That's kind of crazy. Well, he did Inflation research for a whole night. Dollar doesn't look any bigger. Well, he he dug deep into yeah. the government files. He went to Atlantis. Proof of inflation. He no totally didn't use. There was no other proof of it. <laughs> he totally didn't use inflationcalculator.com. What? No, he researched all night. Dab you. He looked at specific he prices all night. You saw he's, the he's, he saw the steamy cup he was holding by the wrong. <laughs> that turned into the slime monster that eats dollars. <laughs> yeah, he was in the sky castle. Remember? <laughs> this, we're making a video game by accident at this point. <laughs> Specifically, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it was worth oh wow twenty five. Yeah, there you go. Impressive. That's research. Sent more. So when game cartridges first came out at around twenty. Oh, dude, I love snacks. I want to learn more about. Do yeah, that. I want to learn more about him and his going on adventures. Look at him. Yeah. Snack. What was the um? What was the collectathon game we played as a snake? I remember having fun uh, on it. I can't oh, remember. that was Snake. You collect a thon the little <laughs> things and it makes. Well, you there's numbers. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it on NES? No, like uh, it was it was on PC. I think it was. It came out like I want to say like eight years ago, something like that. Chat, help Snake me out. Pass. Snake, Snake Pass. Snake Pass. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's kind of cool. It was a really mm. unique way of traveling around because you're a snack and you have to like curl your way up uh, obstacles and stuff. Um, I remember it being fun. 25 to 30 dollars they were actually selling for what would roughly be around 90 dollars today well look at that okay Rain okay prices. okay 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 you know it hasn't gone up 325 percent my fucking wage yeah sorry seal, <laughs> <laughs> it no it's it really is a thing like wages no, yeah. have not gone up significantly yeah. since 1982 so this right. argument really doesn't hold this argument doesn't hold for a fucking plethora of reasons, but obviously this <laughs> won't be the only thing he says. Really yeah, it'll be fine. He's, He's just, gonna say all kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, he'll have his reasons later. He's jumped to look at Sonic. Look, you like Sonic? Why does he have arms now? He has arms now. Why does he have arms now? Why does he? Why are you changing? <laughs> why are his legs? Why are his legs? <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to have blue lines. legs. He yeah, have they legs. fucked this up huge. Oh, you, the intern drew this one. Wow. I was under the impression <laughs> someone, that the uh, someone better get fired for this blunder. Like demonstratives? Why is Sonic here? Is he just here? <laughs> he's, just, he's, 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 he's the one. Like, he's delivering the information to you. Disclaimer. He's like, hey Look, there. It's like, in the NE, it's like the NES. It's like no, this is classic Sonic. Like 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 paperclip. Like, yeah, and then it's like progressing in the timeline. I learned paperclip Sonic. Is that more or less annoying? <laughs> oh, oh, that's the reason. I don't know. Why. Yeah, I can't okay, answer. Okay. <laughs> no, classic Sonic, and we all like classic. Do we? Do, I like classic Sonic, oh, and dude. that's great. Uh, it's like, it's my man. fucking favorite, dude. Yeah, Sonic Three and Knuckles, baby. Because of a machine gun. Yeah. Hey, you know, like new it. Sonic like, is part like of some stuff that's not cringe. Sometimes. I mean, I suppose, but I don't know. Classic Sonic. I prefer the design. I like that he doesn't talk. Uh, I, I like, like that he James shut the fuck like up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, have you played Sonic 1 lately? It didn't age well. Oof. No, I don't think Sonic 1 has aged that well personally, but Sonic 3 and Knuckles is still one of my favorites ever. Yeah. It's not as Sonic good as um, Sonic 06, answer. though. Yeah. That's where they really found their stride, you know? That's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. What was the really like really found their footing? Gun. Gun. Silver the Hedgehog, man. What a, what a great character. Silver. He was. Oh. So cool, cooler than so cool than Shadow. He, Shadow so tries so too hard. This. It's, this no will use, end it's no you. It. It's no you. It's no you. It's no you. Classic gaming.
to $50 in oh, yeah. the 90s with the advent of the Genesis and Super Nintendo? Well, those were actually probably the priciest games we've ever got. Whoa. In today's dollars, they'd cost you wow. well over 100 bucks. I like how, both uh, so of course, already instantly, that is the maximum amount that you would be spending on these games. The maximum amount you could spend on Call of Duty. God damn. Yeah. It's no like, ceiling. Really, there is no ceiling for no. a lot of games. It's literally yeah, you like, just keep buying and buying and buying. Oh, I, thought, I thought someone else would have something to say, but all right, I can hit play. Oh, well, I, I, was, I was in the midst of sneezing right there, so I couldn't contribute. <laughs> it yeah. just got oddly quiet, and I want to make sure. It did. It, I, I, of the I heard the tumbleweed. Terrifying. I think we yeah. all sneezed. Oh, tumbleweed. So, inflation, bad. Yes. Inflation, yeah. good. Yeah. To be completely fair, we've just established inflation exists. Exists. <laughs> yep. Right. yep. As far okay. as we've gone. Yeah. But hey, look, I'm Knuckles and, so and In long. regard to this image, chaos emeralds are not a currency. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rupees they are. This doesn't oh, work. Like, I, I, I reject like this. I don't, know, also, I don't know what it is. Now I'm just imagining like Link coming home from work at the lumber, like at the lumber mill, you know. Wanting to... <laughs> so how, how many rupees is that little pile? That's not right even there many. Money. The, no way well, that's what a chaos the, emerald save is. Save the worth. kingdom, but I got to do a little, you know, side gig to. You know, I don't know. I'm just imagining him like, living in, in like Hyrule and actually struggling, you know. And he goes, he goes to like the supermarket. He's like, Jesus, three dollars? Fuck it all. Yeah, and Knuckles should be outraged. Oh, yeah, yeah Knuckles should be outraged for... to sell a Chaos Emerald for 36 fucking rupees. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Link to the past and Sonic and Knuckles were totally worth that price. Do not at me. Then the great. No one oh, wants to talk god. to you, man. Thank you for your <laughs> thank thank you for your brave takes. I'm, I'm, sure, me about how, I'm how sure we'll be real excited about your opinion on like Ocarina of Time oh. being uh. good. Like or God. Super Metroid. <laughs> do not at me. <laughs> I was waiting for, was waiting for Dev to say, do not at me. Good uh, for me. Well, okay, okay, hold on. I forgot him. I care about him. <laughs> Could him go. Tubular so Radical. That, I wonder, M Muller, what's your favorite Zelda? Maybe I can also stub my toe on this one. Hmm. Why do you want to just, like, walk into these landmines? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, it's like, so like, you know what, like, please me. give me rakes to step I, on. My, it's like pulling a band-aid off. You get, it all, you get it all over with it once, you I'll know? I'll counter curveball you. My favorite Zelda is Phantom Hourglass. Oh, oh really? I love Phantom Hourglass. I think people will find that an interesting choice. It probably is. Really it probably, really to be fair, about it. it probably is linked to the past, future. but I really liked Phantom Hourglass. That link to the past is my yeah, favorite. But I really like Phantom Hourglass, yeah. My absolute Minus favorite is Majora's really Mask. Good. I am a yeah, Majora's Mask guy. Mine is Majora's Mask think... as well. It's that's cool. Yeah, Dev, you're okay. You'll be fine on this one. Yeah, I just want to make everybody angry. In fact, a lot of people will probably say that that's a pretty cool choice. Yeah, the take, yeah, the, okay. the typical hey. Ocarina of Time like is bad. That's the take that gets you killed on the internet. Because mm. uh, remember, Ego Raptor made his video on it. Anyone see that? Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that one. I yeah, did, that yes. was yeah. How that was actually one of the did? first like. It kind of predated the really long, um, long video breakdowns. I mean, I don't think that one is that long. It might be being like an hour or so, maybe, maybe a little longer. It was, I think it was less than that. It but... was interesting Who watching the discourse for that one. That long? Uh, I know, right? Yeah. Crazy. But um, his Mega Man one I mean, was real good. Mega Man X, I think it was, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. He had a, a short lived series. What was it called? It was, um, it had some sort of catchy name, but I'm clearly not catchy enough. Uh, oh, boy. I forget it already. Sequelitis? Yes, Sequelitis. That's that's oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, yeah. I mean, no, Discord. I don't think that Ocarina of Time is bad. It's it's, it's a good game. I just I prefer other games to it. Honestly, what, game. Wait, what were you expecting Solid, to be yeah. your controversial uh, Zelda opinion? Um, I don't know. Because the, the other ones <laughs> also came out of left field for me, so I was just... I could have been, it could have been anything, from my point of view. It came know. out of left field that people would be shocked that you thought that Super Metroid wasn't that great. <laughs> I thought you... Um, like, yeah. I thought you that is a very that shocking that opinion. Yeah, that's... <laughs> is it really? that's yeah, yeah dude, of course it is. Super it's Metroid is like one of the most game beloved game games of all time. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I, mean, I like Metroidvanias be. a lot. I just like a lot of other ones. Yeah, and what, what Metroidvanias are as a genre in large part is owed to uh, Super Metroid. Yeah, and, no, I and, understand, yeah. And I will be one of the first to say, like, I didn't play it, obviously, for a long time. I went back to it. I think it was, I want to say, like, 10 years ago I first played it now. But um, I remember even then being like, eh, a bit old. And then I played it for, like, half an hour, and I was like, this is fucking amazing.
Like I don't even care anymore. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't even I, think I, even if things are aged, there's still value in seeing how they did it first, right? Even if like future sure. games made it better. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I think, I think that's that's probably why, even though I know it's it's probably the wrong opinion, I prefer Shenmue over Yakuza because it, it did it first, right? And I have like a nostalgia factor there. But right. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. I think. I think I that's love Shenmue, Super... man. That's a great. Oh game. Yeah. yeah, it's a great game. I think uh, Super Metroid might have the best atmosphere of pretty much any game. It just has it really nails what it goes for. And it's kind of like at the peak of that that era of graphics and stuff. So I always think I always kind of prefer like peak 2D over early kind of crude 3D personally, just because you can do so much more with it. You're not kind of struggling with the new the new uh, technology. Uh, no, no, but... I feel like um, I feel like yeah, I feel like Gwimbley, right? Like that's kind <laughs> of uh, sort of illustrating that it's becoming a style in and of itself. Uh, low poly. You know, it's like the um, the st I've seen it on Twitter, like the Bloodborne demake or whatever yeah. it is, where it's like yeah, 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 yeah. one graphics, like that's starting to become a thing now. Like Pixelot has already yeah. very much become a thing. Yeah, but actually, like you take a Fringy, you take think, a game like she... sorry, uh, again. yeah, just just real quick, Fringy. I think she's actually making Bloodborne for the PS One yeah. specifically. You can, you can run on PS One, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that, but that's that's cool. But like you can you can take the the kind of aesthetic and do it so much better now though. Like back then you were struggling on early hardware. You could barely barely churn out like fifteen I frames per second. To, things like that. I want to stand a little bit more for PlayStation One and uh, Nintendo sixty four. Like Crash Bandicoot still looks great. I, like it, it it has a great look uh, as it is originally on PlayStation. Yeah. I think it's very dependent on the specific games in question, as always, yeah. though, as well, because a lot of the mm -hmm. time with games from earlier generations, you find that they were very good at, like, leveraging the limitations of their visual capabilities in the art style in a way that, like, really enhances the whole thing. Really yeah. The room together. And, so, and certain games did better than others. Like, I think Crash Bandicoot was pretty solid, pretty stable. Um Anybody who's played like four player deathmatch on GoldenEye or Perfect Dart remembers the uh, the single digit frame rates that the game would kind of slow down to. <laughs> times. Yep. Yeah. So Everyone's using rock launchers, launchers and it just freezes. Yeah. Well, your uh, your frame rate would drop considerably if you were playing split screen Left 4 Dead on the Xbox 360. Oh so gosh, it, it, true. It continued to be a thing into the future. I still can't get it. It was so fun playing split screen up to like four people on one of those like tiny ass TVs in my childhood. <laughs> Just, yeah, man. Especially, I don't know if any of you would have it like uh, the TV, not necessarily um, the typical place in like a living room would be that it's in the middle of the room at the back of a wall or something like that. But sometimes you have a TV up at the top corner. Anyone What's ever have anyone? that? Like, yeah. Yep. So playing yeah. four player split screen on one of those TVs when brutal. you're sitting on the fucking sofa, <laughs> you're literally like, I can't see anything, but I'm yeah. having fun. I don't, like... I don't know. Just to get used to it because I, I I definitely played like four player split screen on on like the small, you know, like the small CRT TVs yeah. that you would get. Ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, they're all small. They had like the built in oh, V's water, you know, slide underneath oh. the screen. Yeah, yeah. I I distinctly remember playing yep. uh, Donkey Kong 64, and one thing that they did with that game, is, and I, I'll ne you'll never live it down if you ever experienced it, is that it would randomly give you, I think, the, the first player a bigger screen if you did three player, instead of making you equal screens. Right. Like the first player would get like a, a the whole top half. Yeah, if someone would get half the screen. Then, yeah, yeah. Get the and people would never let you live it down. They're like, you got so much more space. Peasants. The peasants. Yeah, well, it's funny if you were doing like a. <laughs> You know, like one v one on a particular map and stuff, and then it's like, are you are you screen watching? It's like, are you camping? It was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> screen watching was, uh, it was it was terrible because you wanted to you know wait around a corner and you wanted to set a trap or something. You just yeah. couldn't do it because you're they were looking at your screen. That was just the thing. It There's is actually I'll, a really clever a indie game. Hard not to when your screen is right next to the is like literally yeah, underneath. It's like it's right there. Yeah. There's it's actually a clever indie game. Yeah. There's a clever indie game about 10 years ago that I played at, at PAX um, called Screen Sheet, where the gimmick was it's a basically like GoldenEye, but your yeah. characters are invisible. So you had, to, you had to use Screen Sheet as a mechanic. You actually had to look at their screen and figure out where they are to shoot them. It was actually pretty, a <laughs> pretty funny idea. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. Have you guys noticed this is like a fucking we've done everything we can to avoid listening to this video? <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I was and we know what's coming. It's all like, oh, inflation. <laughs> Got it. I know what it is. Thanks. Well, we should you know? be watching now. <laughs> all right. All right. So there's, there's, there's knuckles and knuckles and, and long. Link. 
There's knuckles and long. long. Yeah. Hold on. We have to settle something first before we have to actually pay attention. Okay. Going back to the CRT era. How many of you guys sat on the couch, and how many of you guys were floor sitters? It depends where I we would work. do both. Um, yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. Um, depends on the house. The couch wasn't close enough. We were floor sitters. Yeah, same here. Hundred percent. Used to be you know, uh, used to... four friends sitting, sit, sitting around, sitting like on the floor in front of the TV. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to be a beanbag master race, but now I think beanbags are <laughs> gonna kill me. Yeah. <laughs> the spine killer. <laughs> do not at me. Then the great disc revolution happened. Instead of having to buy pricey cartridges containing expensive hardware, instead of having to ship bulky boxes with a fat hunk of plastic in them, now games could fit in a jewel case. And also waterlogged. Ooh. With CD. This lowered production costs by a lot. And as the console wars heated up. Look, it's Mario. Wait, oh, man, yeah. he, he, he doesn't. Why, why does why? one have arms and one doesn't? Yeah, the, on the it's left, it's in their style, on the right, it's not. Why are they doing this? <laughs> Just to show the difference mm. between. Why, why did they change his leg know? color again? He's yeah. got blue legs now. <laughs> He's so right. inconsistent. Yeah, this is so blue weird. Legs. Are we to like believe this is a different Sonic every time? Or is, it, or is the implication here, yeah, Mario versus Sonic on, like, the Dreamcast when it was very much over at that point? Also, be look, crash, right. crash I know they gotta make a lot of these images and everything, but that that's a shitty Mario. Isn't that, like, base requirement? <laughs> that's a shitty Mario. I think Mario's Mario. stunt double. <laughs> he looks like he's got a mullet or something. His hair looks le <laughs> le legally oh, yeah, distinct Mario. <laughs> Legally He's Philippe. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They do got to be careful with it lately. With, with I am not Enzo. Nintendo's striking down shit now. Oh, also, I yeah, Mario doesn't have a neck, but Sonic's head is attached to his body as well. Oh, and Mario has yeah, no legs. Like Sonic does. Here. If only I had a neck to yeah, enjoy like, my why, past. Why, uh, why is Mario's legs drawn like little sticks? But I, this is all very confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sonic has yeah. limbs and Mario doesn't. It's so Dude, This was supposed to be the fucking selling point. Why is the art so bad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you, they're the ones who drew attention to I it. Was so promised, I was promised. I was promised art of characters I recognize in exchange for a boring talk on how inflation made games expensive. Exactly. Yeah, I don't recognize Now we're getting knockoff versions. What is this? Ridiculousness. Terrible. Up and Sony and Microsoft duped it out for who would have the dominant home console. Something why why where's why not Nintendo? What the what's where's Nintendo? Well Nintendo where's didn't have game anything game? out at this point, I don't Nintendo, think. Nintendo, yeah, Nothing. they were no, yeah, Nintendo they were didn't have a platform that sold comparably no. to the Xbox and both of which sold uh, why is it a PlayStation One and an original Xbox? You probably didn't know this, Fringy, but all yeah. they had was trading oh. cards at this point. Poke, poke, Look at that. Pokemon cards. It's a PlayStation yeah. One and an yeah. original Xbox. That's Wait, did ridiculous. You not have, did you not have people. a Nintendo hoop and stick? <laughs> it was, it was like this. Ball in a cup. What do I choose it, between? Do I choose between yeah, the PlayStation One the graphic, or the the realistic, Xbox One? It has motion controls. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, Crazy. yeah, you're right. The PS2, the PS2 was the first console to come out of that generation. They came out before the Xbox Why, and the yeah, GameCube. Well, yeah, it was PS2 and then, GameCube, and then GameCube and then Xbox. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> matching it up with PS1 here makes no fucking I, sense. Yeah, it should be the PlayStation One versus the Nintendo 64. Yeah, and the Sega Saturn, I guess, if you want to look, or if you want to, yeah. That well, I mean, if you if you really well, want to go there, <laughs> see, you guys are making you guys are nitpicking when they've got the character looking confused because he's like, wait, this isn't right. <laughs> this isn't what yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the also, reason that things aren't quite accurate is because they used up all of their research funding on all of the research to tell us what inflation is mm. they they couldn't spend uh, he, he one minute out of their ten minutes of research time to actually look up oh, the dates of no, these releases. No, no. I kind of want to think about what's going on with the shapes of the middle character's hair, but I also kind of don't. Like, what are they... What are <laughs> it's the unfortunate. It's unique. This is just an abstract form of what you would know as Picasso hair. Yeah. 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 Picasso's great. We love Picasso. Also, also, just another thing to point out as well. Why doesn't it say Sony and Microsoft? Or alternatively, why isn't Sony's the PlayStation Symbols, yeah. logo? Yeah, right, one's yeah. a logo, why one's is, why is, why is, yeah. Yeah, They keep fucking Sony with us. And PlayStation is the brand. Xbox do you, oh, do you is think? Brand and Microsoft is company. Even though it'd be weird yeah. if they wrote Sony and then they went to write Microsoft, they're like, "This is too long. Fuck." <laughs> we can't just it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. it on his head. Yeah, we'll still do M. Yeah, well, yeah but M I've already M. written and colored in Sony. Yeah, it's too late to to get rid of Sony. So. All amazing work. Look, I oh, even did the Sony so font that it's definitely in. Yeah. <laughs> Heard of happened. Get this. 
those savings actually got Okay, not to nitpick further, but... <laughs> I <laughs> heard it have armholes. <laughs> Did you notice how they drew the two execs the same way exactly, and then he was like, I should probably color them different. I'll change the tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's green well, it, for Xbox. No, I know, but... like you, the, just a normal it, fill, too, that you could change that. You could have like done all kinds seconds. of things, they were like, oh, I'll just make it, yeah, there you go, nailed it. Yeah. I just like the idea both, of that. They're both white, but the guy in the middle is white. That's weird. They represent demon people. The companies, the uh, faceless corporations, true. yeah. Get this. Those savings actually got passed to animals. us, the consumers. Instead they, of yeah, raising yeah, prices yeah, with yeah. inflation, the standard game price remained the same. The industry then started to get wary of the idea of charging more. They thought Purpose. the consumers. The industry? Might... No, 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 no. It wasn't no, the industry. I... It was consumers that got wary. Yeah, like, like, this is what you're. This is what. Like... He just you fucked that up. Yeah, like regular people were like, oh, I don't know if I want to spend all of this money on a video game. That's why what it, happened. Why is the idea that people are upset about the price of the things they like going up being portrayed as they're getting their pitchforks and torches out as this innocent <laughs> fellow just like upping yeah. the price on his <laughs> look, look at precious little game yeah. man. He's just look, a game. Look yeah. at him. Yeah, these are <laughs> consumer advocates here at Extra Credits. I don't get it. <laughs> this is really weird. It's almost like, yeah, like why is it being presented in this way? Beast? A little bit, like, oh, the they passed the savings on. I, I do like that, yes. They passed the savings on to you. It's like, wow, wow. how benevolent of them when they were trying so to cool. make money. <laughs> like, I, welcome I, to I the wish... history of consumers being assholes. <laughs> like, well, wait, what? It, it definitely <laughs> wasn't that there was increased competition because of all of these new companies that were entering the market as well. No, no. No, yeah, that can't be it. No, no. There's also a lot of yeah. nuance too, because you know, the reason why uh, Nintendo 64 games were so expensive is because uh, PlayStation jumped a disc, and yeah. uh, you know the cartridges were just way more expensive to produce than than a disc. So that's why a lot of N64 games were 60 bucks versus like the 40 or 50 you'd find on PlayStation. Well, he mentioned that he, he had a whole, yeah he had like a little thing about uh, the yeah. switch over from cartridge to disc. Yeah. Okay, I miss I must miss that between everything else more they thought the consumers might revolt actually there were all sorts of think pieces back then about how charging 60 dollars for a game would destroy the industry so for Post years one. other way what show me one yeah. Yeah. You, you can just put the headline in the i mean we're all youtubers right we've all done this before put a headline in a video and be yeah. like here's what's going on look at the article he said there were all maybe, kinds maybe link it in the, in the description literally every kind of article you can imagine exists for this you can tell me that something exists and like, yeah, sure, well, there's loads of this sort of thing. Just show me one. one well, and the other thing is, really why is it that you in 2024 can figure out to look at old like pamphlets of game prices, but people in like 2000s couldn't figure out to do that? A scissors is fucked up. I just think yeah. that he, <laughs> they want to keep the style where they'd rather use like manipulative cartoons rather than actually show sources. Which is kind of sad, really. <laughs> also, the game dev gave a cruel haircut to the poor game. Should we yeah, include sources? Game, no, in just draw a manipulative cartoon. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> trust us. We you said... know how late I was up. <laughs> we we <laughs> said six <laughs> times in the <laughs> intro how true this is. The fuck is wrong with her hair? <laughs> I don't... Oh, it's like dark blue. It's like two layers. Yeah. Okay, I think I've. It's like I think I figured out part of what they're doing. They, they kind leave of. a little thing yeah. to like imply the presence of an ear that doesn't exist down at the bottom oh. left. I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. that, that yeah, is yeah. one low ear. I, was saying, uh, like, I don't have to worry about it. Why is the, the cutoff part on the far side? Is like it, it should be dev? closer. Is is that what it means, developer? Yes. D well, it doesn't make sense is. because right. most developers aren't publishers. So what? Yeah. Rex, you're right about that. The the game's face. Like it looks like when he. Oh, I guess we'll, get, we'll just get to it in a minute. Yeah. It looks like when he cut that corner off, that was like an essential part of his brain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was <laughs> <essential>. <laughs> <laughs> you need drool coming out. He was in the middle of speaking, and it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> he, he <laughs> I will there say. There's an important man. lobe in, in that, that corner. If this is yeah, symbolic of... Like Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, it, well, if this is symbolic of cutting pieces out and selling them back to us, like, yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, that's mm, pretty on point. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But the timeline's all fucked up. Mm. They only have nine minutes, damn it. Charging $60 yeah. for a game would destroy the industry. So for years, other ways to Yeah, again, to it would be corners. nice if there was, like, a source for that. Oh well, mm -hmm. we're found. That is a thing he just said. 
Manufacturing prices decreased. Boxes became packed with less and less goodies. Manuals were shrunk from 50 page tomes to five page leaflets. Maps. Yo, some of you, do you guys remember the, um, oh, what was it? The Halo 1 and Halo 2 books, like booklets that came with the games? Those mm. things were, those things were like fucking grimoires of lore and cool, just cool shit. That's one of the things. Sorts of stuff. Yeah, like. Um, that go a bit further stuff. back with a lot of video games. A lot of people would claim like the extensive guides. Video games game. were impossible like... to beat because of how crazy they were made and stuff. It was like they often did come with manuals that, that no one has anymore, or yeah, at least it's like, hard to find. The, yeah, that's a big factor. All the weapons and all the enemies that you'll fight and yeah. stuff like that. I was like, oh, this is really cool. This like just reading this kind of gets you hyped. Uh, about the game because you'd open it up and it's like oh the jackals and grunts and elites and hunters and oh shit, the yeah. flamethrower is in here and we have the shotgun and it tells you about all the, the guns uh, and what they do like the map for the world map for you know like grand theft auto yeah um, yeah you know, Zelda had a map cool. yeah Just waiting for the game Zelda had a map I remember, yeah. I remember the, the last big box uh, PC game I bought actually wasn't that long ago it was Witcher 2 which I guess it's been about 10 13 years or whatever but the big the box for that it wasn't even a full size box. It came oh, with it. so much stuff. It came with uh, a, like a full size manual, a full size game guide, um, soundtrack, uh, Cinemax DVD, a map, uh, a letter with a actual metal coin in it, plus a bunch of uh, paper dolls you could fold together to make little kind of like uh, goober little uh, paper doll versions of uh, you know Geralt and I think. Uh, uh, Tris and a couple other characters and like it had so much stuff and it was 40 bucks and it was like such a great deal man i've got yeah, the man. i've got the booklet for halo combat evolved i've got a pc copy and an xbox copy and then the xbox box uh, do you uh, even just a, uh, it, Sorry, go it ahead. has this guide it's like 30 pages long it has a table of contents at the beginning it gives you like a primer on the story so far uh, the main screen, loading, saving, the Pillar of Autumn and its crew. So it's got like a little bio on Captain Keys, the Marines, Cortana. It has the Covenant here and it shows you all the different types and it tells you what they do. It's got all the vehicles, all of the human weapons, all the Covenant weapons, your, your Mjolnir armor. And plus, it's all color. Full wow. color did they, front uh, to back. Did they take all that from the TV show? I, I know all They that must stuff. have. Yeah. Wow, it looks so cool. Even the plasma grenade, it's like, because this is written as if it's being given to, uh, like, a soldier. You know, here's, a, here's your manual for combat soldier. Because it says here, plasma grenade. This weapon is similar to our own hand grenade in that it is thrown. It is a thrown anti-infantry and anti-vehicle weapon. It has some kind of internal mechanism that allows it to distinguish between targets and background. For example, it will stick to a soldier or vehicle, but not a tree or wall. It has a three-second fuse that is activated after it sticks to a target or otherwise comes to a rest. And it's got all this stuff for all the vehicles and weapons and everything. Well, and I'm like, fuck oh, that. Great. That's old. We don't need that no more. Yeah, what if we paid $20 for white? Yeah. Wait, I have... I'm confused with this it... argument. Is he leading down the path of since we cut out the cost? It Doesn't that mean the game should be less expensive? Not oh, no, he's right. saying that it, it they're making up for inflation by making the process yeah, cheaper by not including mm. all this extra stuff. Instead of going, but, games went from 50 to 60, they went, games are 50, but you don't get your big pamphlet anymore. You don't get your big mm. big things anymore. You see, you know, it, would be, it would be greatly helped by just having a little thing that says what year this timeline is supposed to be in, because this could be, yeah. you know, yeah, 2000, so this could be 2010, like... This, yeah, all these changes went back and forth period. and all over the place. It, the, the the fucking timeline here is complicated, like in real life, I mean. Let alone and you can also uh, like basically rendition. subtract like five to ten years if you're go following uh, Nintendo's timeline because Nintendo was always like five years behind everybody else. Like they actually all, were on record saying that they'd never ever do DLC and that was obviously a while ago. Mm. But yeah, <laughs> so very different. It's no longer came as special inserts and the price held. Then digital started to take off. And okay, okay, though... okay, okay, okay. We've skipped an important part of the story, which is the rise of uh, expansion packs and downloadable. Well, I mean, he's talking about downloadable content, but like starting to get into like horse armor and stuff. Like, yeah, and they were horse expansions... armor was the thing before Steam and before selling games digitally. Mm -hmm. 
making games was becoming more and more expensive, prices just barely crept up to that $60 mark. Because despite the platform fees, being able to sell digitally was faster, cheaper, and eliminated a lot of the risk of ending up with too large or too small of a print run. But budgets for a true AAA game began to balloon for reasons we- Whose fault is that? <laughs> <laughs> We'll get into in a future video. Oh, that'll be a fun no, classic. Oh, come okay. on. Okay. That seems like a pretty important part of the puzzle to know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's essential, Man. I would say. I just, I just like the idea that it's like, we had Mario's to spend $10 anyway. billion dollars on the next Tetris game. You're like, okay. Oh, yeah. So. The Whoever posted the Witcher 2 thing. Yeah. I've got the, uh, I've got a, I don't think it's, I don't think it's this version. It might be. But I've this, got was the, like a, this was the PC like, version was a bit more stuff than the the console one, but yeah. Okay, because my console one was like the because I've got like the uh, like the collector's version, and it's kind of it's fairly it's, it's got some stuff in there. That was a cool game. Yeah, it was a fun Witcher game. Witcher Two was yeah, the Witcher Two was great. I like big yeah. You can boxes. you can yeah you can see that like it had several different discs. Some of those were like the soundtrack. I believe one of them had cinematics. They had like a full size map. They also had like a letter. I don't know if you can tell there's like a letter with like a, a sort of fake wax seal. And also you can see over the bottom right, there's like a little paper doll thing where you make these little um paper doll like three d paper doll versions of Geralt. You can actually open up his mouth. you saw like as a kind of grotesque mouth with like tongue and everything in there. It's very weird, very Polish, but it was a lot but of fun. how does but how do how how is the industry not bleeding money? including all of these cool things for us gamers there, it this surely this is completely unsustainable yeah i mean nobody even talks about cdp project red anymore they're, they're complete failures so you know <laughs> Dude, i i remember even just appreciating like a simple instruction manual mm -hmm. like uh, in the 90s my parents would take me out shopping and like if i was lucky enough to get a game then it, it's like i we we probably won't get home for a while but I yeah. had the game there and I could open it up and I could pull the manual out and I would read that back to front like and yep. like many times over um, and be like, OK, yeah. I am prepped for this game once I get home because I fucking yeah. know everything. I know all the enemy types. I know what I'm doing. I know the story. And, you know, it's full color. It was like verbose, like it, had, it was like, you know, there's a lot in there and it was it well, felt like an event, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you're like stuck with your parents at Bed Bath and Beyond for like four hours, which is an eternity yeah. as a kid, and it's like, well, I can read this instruction booklet. Exactly. Well, it really dawned on me when I got like a Call of Duty game and it had a, a pamphlet that didn't even have a staple in it. It was just like, you know, I think it was just like ep epilepsy warnings and stuff. I'm like, this is the legal minimum that they can do <laughs> while shipping the game. And I was about to have an epilepsy that could fit at that point. Yeah. Well, how yeah. long before they just have a little fucking slip of paper that says enjoy in Comic Sans on it? <laughs> <laughs> that actually happened to me I, uh, a while ago, actually, when um, when I just got um, Battlefield, the EA, the first EA Battlefield, uh, 2014, 2013, something like that. I bought it uh, at Best Buy just because I would not go to Best Buy other if I hadn't had a, a gift card. I went to the front desk. And I already read that it was just it was just a code, right? But I went to the front desk and they're like, "Hey, uh, do you want disc protection on that?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, for my for my cardboard, sure, why not?" <laughs> yeah, I remember because uh, I was super into Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, and Return of the King. So when Third Age was coming out, on the way back, it came with like a huge trading card set, and it had all the information of every enemy you're going to fight the whole game. It's such a great little imagination booster for how you're going to encounter them, what it's going to mean. And it's just like a huge flavoring for the whole experience, but it's so dead as a, as a yeah. as a thing as an element. Well, mm. how much of that was also just the transition to digital, making it you know kind of unnecessary to make up these documents if half of, half or more of your player base is just buying it on Steam, anyways. That's the thing. It feels like uh, th there's plenty of aspects that are involved as to why it happened. It just feels like an experience that a lot of people are going to miss out on now, like. Um, it was really cool. It was a really cool element, really fun. And um, I think it's nice, too, to have a physical element of the uh, experience that, you know, I'm not saying that every single game changes you or anything, but any game that you adore, having, like, a physical thing that relates to it in any way, shape, or form is oftentimes going to be quite satisfying versus... Uh... Yeah, I remember growing up, I had the GTA San Andreas map on, the, on my wall as a poster. It came with the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of Mahler, cool Mahler. things like that. Mother, you're completely wrong. It's all just capitalism. 
That's the problem. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, I don't even know kinda... if that's the angle. It's that creature, that big yellow creature that eats the dollars. He's capitalism, isn't he? I knew it. They trapped capitalism. him at the bottom of the White House. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if, if they'll go that explicit. Like, I don't know how, you know, very left-leaning these guys are. They seem to be somewhat left-leaning from what I've seen. But I don't know if they're going to go, like, full-on, we got we to gotta revolt, guys. They they're more about, like, they're more about, like about. they try to explain um, games industry stuff, like, from the perspective of low-ranking developers more so than, like, trying to take a hardline political stance. And so I think that's what, like, he, oh, the gamers, they just don't get it because they didn't, they don't work in the industry. You know, yeah. I, I would buy that yeah. if they didn't make the video about black people being orcs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, yeah, and also there, there, it's a, despite, um, I, I know that they've actually done, like, IRL talks and stuff. They, they, they claim to know a lot about the industry, extra credits. There's a, a huge disconnect here because developers almost never get to choose the price of their games. The publisher does. And it's the publishers that generally all kind of, whether officially or unofficially, kind of get together and kind of set the standard, whether through competition or generally through the generation. Like, usually these big price jumps happen in a generation. So, like, we're now kind of used to paying $70 on a lot of these games now that are coming out for the next generation, even though they're functionally the same as last generation. Same thing happened with, uh, the, I think, the Xbox 360 PS3 era kind of set $60 as a standard. Oh, so man. there was never really a fifty-five dollar generation. Really, you, you it seem to sixty critical of their approach, but they had a guy do research all night. I don't know what you mean. Like, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, he had. Yeah, don't see all the them. papers he had. That was a lot of papers. He did have a lot of papers. Yeah, he's got some ideas. But he lost some, and he did they lose. Seem to be yeah. the important ones because <laughs> the only ones that matter. Yeah, he, he, he decided to not include <laughs> the fact that games are getting more expensive in his "Why Are Games Getting More Expensive" video. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they'll also, talk about they're, it in the future. Eighty dollars here now, Jesus! Mm -hmm. Eighty bucks for some of this shit, Mark, plus yeah, all because... the Canadian taxes. It's ridiculous. Well, and then plus yeah. all the, the other elements, is... right? All the additional shit, all the it... future shit, all the premium, deluxe, bonus, additional yeah. DLC, microtransactions. Yeah. Ugh, I think that's higher. Premium... The most premium edition of the next Assassin's Creed is going to be like 130 Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to yeah. say that, yeah. Oh my. Actually, okay, did you see that advertisement where they advertised... They need the... to save the franchise. They advertised the best version of the game as being seventeen ninety nine a month. Yeah, that's yeah. for my Ubisoft subscription service, right. which, by the yeah. way, that's... that is pretty brazen to think that anybody would want to pay $18 a month for Ubisoft games, like, service. I don't want to pay for that... Ubisoft games... In general, in general, like, oh, yeah, I'm not paying eighteen month. bucks a yeah, month. For listen, Ubisoft until service. they put out, until they put out Beyond Good and Evil Two, they are a dead company to me. You want them to do that? I don't even know. That's I mean, it'll probably be shit. Yeah, it'll probably be shit. Never mind. <laughs> it, it's sinister the way they present it too, right? Because it's like the price goes up and up. The versions are more and more like packed with stuff, and then at the very end, it's like, oh, seventeen ninety nine. That's quite right. a drop from a hundred and thirty dollars. Maybe it's I'll just do a month that, is right? pretty, is like really tiny, like a month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In fairness, it's Assassin's Creed. You're gonna play it for less than a month and then never play it again, <laughs> <laughs> and you won't remember. And it won't stick with you exactly. Dude, the amount you, the amount you hear that well these too. days of people playing games that they one week later are like, I don't remember what I did in that thing. I think I ran <laughs> around. What was the story I think about? I have to... I have to focus really hard when I think about like playing Skyrim, you know, a game like that. It's like I know I played that game a lot, and I have to really focus and squint and think way back very carefully to dredge up actual memories of playing that game and what it was like, because it's just gone straight through the brain sieve, just gone. Mm. And some games are like that. But how could you not remember the uh, quadruple A game, uh, Skull and Bones? Oh, pirate game where you can't swim? <laughs> <laughs> or hey, a lot of pirates yeah, didn't know how to swim. swim. Yeah. I remember, like I've I've played like Sea of Thieves for like a hundred hours probably, and it's like I have I have a lot of memories of Sea of Thieves. Like a lot of that stuff is stuck with me because it's fun memes. But yeah, <laughs> like, fun. I don't remember. I'm not gonna remember anything about a game like Skull and Bones. The thing I remember, I remember being about bored Skull of it and Bones. It, this Skull and Bones had this like. uh 
player conduct thing where you can't board people and unless they consent to being oh boarded God. or some shit. Was so <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck you know, does that it, even work? No yeah, piracy. Game. In a fucking pirate, pirate game. Pirate game. Yeah, it's so yeah. stupid. Yeah. You almost want to like have a in based sea of thieves. If you have an LGBTQ pride flag, it means you are going to be attacked by everyone that you see. It's the, it's it is the PVP flag of that game. It's the, you know that it reminds um, me of this flag. one cartoon character that uh, I posted in chat. It's this it's this uh, cartoon I saw it years ago, but it was like a good pirate never takes another person's property. True. <laughs> well, that's, that's, the world we're... that's true. <laughs> I was just thinking about, um, I'm assuming several of you have seen the, the clip that went relatively viral recently of a, of a gaming interaction that was truly tragic on, um, I think it was Valorant or something like that. But I was just thinking, yep. like, take that clip, right? But, like, you could edit it so that it's like a game where you're supposed to take each other's ships. You, you, you board their ship, and then you're like, we've got you now, fuckers. And then that girl is like, Alt F4s, just like, I can't believe the abuse we take. This is insane. Yeah. They called, <laughs> we me, they called me a fucker. Our consent. The, um, Pirates got on our ship. That clip they was. I think it was actually the first episode we had with uh, with John here, but we discussed the sort of culture of gaming excessively because it was kind of a. At this point, it's fucking heaven to think about those times, like <laughs> to, to remember how it used yeah. to be, and uh, just every once in a while you get a viral clip of someone being like, "Can you believe the abuse I take?" And it's just some guy being like, "I'm gonna fuck you up. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna kill your whole family." It's or so I'm gonna... mild. And you're just like, uh huh. Yeah. It's almost, dude. It's it's so mild. The back then, if they, the, the some of these people in these clips, if they had tried it, you'd be like, "Is that all you got, really?" Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Just I'm silently waiting for the rest of the insult. Because yeah. Yeah. Like, it's your turn. Finished, Go ahead. More was <laughs> like, you're supposed to be roasting <laughs> right? me, but this is it. Well, because back back then, everybody understood that this was all bullshit and not meant to be taken seriously. So yeah. that we're all online, we're all fucking around, like whatever. We're just like, it's just a game to see who can say the most horrendous shit. And, speaking uh, of well, because speaking yeah. of bullshit that shouldn't be taken seriously, um, this video. <laughs> How dare you try and get us back to the video? <laughs> well, the... Stop trying to keep us on topic. <laughs> Fine, we'll go back. <laughs> Despite the platform fees, being able to sell digitally was faster, cheaper, and eliminated a lot of the risk of ending up with too large or too small of a print run. But budgets for a true AAA game began to balloon for reasons we will get into in a future video. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you you should have that in this video. That should yeah, be the... in this video. No, why make it too long? Right? That's we really have room important. For inflation. That'd be too long. This needs to be this nine. This is a nine-minute video. Less bullshit pictures and more information, maybe, because that shouldn't be in another video. It's very important to this one. Why is the I lowercase when the rest of the letters are uppercase? Hmm. Wait, what? He's right, you know. What is? That's an uppercase I. That's, That's a, yeah, what a dot above it, though. Maybe it's like an accent. Maybe it's like an accent, like it's profits or something. Profits. I was looking at a different one. I'm still on the work in progress. Oh, and the one. real one. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Profits. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Oh, profits! <laughs> These guys don't know that inflation exists. They won't know what. They, they won't, what is be this? Profit? They'll be confused oh, they have, by a line. They have the vest as well with the <laughs> the hole, but not the hole. For the oh, that's game. been that's been in a yeah. couple of the drawings, yeah. For reasons we will get into in a future video, and the real return on that sixty dollars price point was shrinking every year as wages. Well, hey, hold whose on. fault is that? Oh, how did you oh, wait, how did you find oh, this out? How did how did he discover that the profits were shrinking? What about the profit margins for FIFA Ultimate Team of like a billion dollars a quarter? Oh, oh but that? see, that was from DLC, yeah. and we haven't we haven't brought up like DLC it. yet. So well, the amount, the sheer amount of data yeah. behind each of these little points would be their own videos easily. But he's just yeah, like yeah. Exactly. he's yeah. He's just saying that profits were getting smaller every year. What did you use to find that out? What's your source? How much? By how? How much less was it? That here. Hello. Discord? The, the, was that robot in front of you? Hello. Yeah, that's yeah, everyone was, yeah, everyone was yeah, yeah, That's why I rejoined. It was, yeah, it was flimpy. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I was just saying. Flimpy. But he so boldly says that the profits are getting smaller and smaller every year, and I'm thinking, well. Show us the audience of this video. The information did, listen, that you did, found. He did research all night. 
It would just be funny if he also threw it as a data point, like, games were also getting shittier. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) It would actually be... Oh no, go ahead, one. Go ahead. This would absolutely be a much more interesting video if he just showed us the figures that he found and like, yeah, here's the earnings yeah. report call where they yeah, year over year analyzed the profit margins of a game from 2007 versus a game from 2009. Like if he has data, that would be interesting to see, but he doesn't. So this is just a bullshit cartoon where we have to trust him at his word. He's relying on an intuitive argument, which is the games cost the same, but the profit, the the budget's gone up. It's like okay, but that that doesn't even make any sense, even if you put to one side all of the additional revenue, because like okay, let's assume that it costs more money to make the game. How many copies are they selling, regardless of what the profit margin is? Because like you know, a profit margin on an individual game sold for like a two hundred million dollar game. Well, yeah, of course, it's sixty bucks versus two hundred million dollars. Well, but how and, many copies of that game are they selling? Well, yeah, well, my sixty dollars isn't going to be enough to have that game turn a profit. You're selling to way more people, and with digital distribution, you can just generate an infinite amount of copies to exactly. all of those new people for the same Not price. To mention DLC, battle pass, microtransactions, loot boxes that well, obviously have to become part of the equation. Hopefully, he'll mm-hmm. bring up DLC in the next. I'm six sure minutes. he will. Because if I just in the next video, well, there's also there's the something else here video. that's also going on though in the next video. Something else going on here is I know that we're getting through this a little bit slowly, but like 20 seconds ago we had the well, I mean, it's been like an hour for us, but 20 seconds ago, ago in yeah. the in the video there was um there was the picture of you know the the righteously irate gamers who had you know like the, the, the pitchforks and the and then the torches and they were screaming, "Don't raise the price of our games!" Right, and the, the, we they have we haven't seen. You know the uh, the evil capitalist sitting on a big no. pile of money yet. You know, like rubbing his rubbing his hands. So, if you were just watching this video all the way through, at this point in the video, it, it seems like, a like fluff piece for corporations. It, yeah, mm-hmm. it seems like he's they're blaming gamers for being too greedy. Yes, well, that is well, the well, impression you get. That up that, they yeah. fucked up that part. Weird. Remember, it's because right. he said he said industry, but he showed the gamers. So yeah. the yeah. script, the script, and oh. the illustrator don't agree on what the issue is. Yeah, this assumes that the relationship is directly between the developers and and the players, which isn't true. There's the there's a whole other aspect. There's the vendors, you know, either the physical ones like GameSpot, uh, GameStop, giving you this up. Do you think? And you know, even even Steam takes a thirty thirty uh, percent cut. Most platforms take a thirty percent cut. I think Epic takes slightly less or more or less. I don't know, but like there's a, there's layers to this, and and they all have agreements and. Everybody gets paid based on agreements. Like d- devs get told how much they're getting paid to make a game. Like this isn't this isn't all just magically less or more depending on how many games are bought yeah. or, or sold. Do you think? Because so. I think he will bring up DLCs and expansions any second now. But um, on microtransactions. But do you think he's going to get a, a broken games, patched games like day one to allow you to fucking access the menus or like you know the kinds no, of shit we've been through? Well, too many corporations. Games that I, honestly, require a subscription am... to play. Yeah. This really does seem to be like it's skewed to be like oddly anti consumer because he's not being complete with information. He's not well, showing us the data that he used to reach the conclusions that apparently well, I he mean, has. I I sure hope that it gets mentioned the kind of profits that EA Activision, these companies have been making over these last few years. Well, yeah. Because like the, the idea of like oh, bigger, man, bigger, these, bigger these struggling publishers. Like, I mean, the the video game industry is raking in billions and billions of dollars of revenue like the video game industry is worth more than the film industry in terms of the oh, amount of money yeah. it makes well here let me so tell you the idea that like uh, electronic let's... arts gross profit from the 12 months ending in december 31st 2023 was 5.86 billion oh shit that was oh. a 4.31 percent increase year over year and the game industry is annual... literally larger than the movie and the, the music industry combined I mean, well, it's yeah just it's an enormous amount of money now yeah, it's insanely yeah. big. Are those, is that actual like, numbers, Rex? It's at least, it's actually, it's yeah, at least $100 billion. Rex, put those numbers yeah, away. Like, not only that, but the year before that, their profits uh, went up uh, 9.78%. So, Yeah, but he oh. did research. Oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> I did, did research. All day! Randomly. I just did a random Google search because I was curious to see Rex, how much you researching all night? last year. I, I have. That's why I'm so tired right now. And I'm just like, oh, I need to get my. I need to get me a happy cup of coffee. With a little boy, creature climbing out of it. I'm, yeah. I'm pooped. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, uh, uh, currently valued at 217 billion um, a couple years ago, and expected to grow to 
583 billion dollars in total value by 2030 like it's 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 massive it's, mm -hmm. it's like there's yeah. so much money going around and it, what's also kind of cool is that there's just there's a lot of different people kind of breaking out from the mold too like you get people who are just like hey i made this game buy it for five bucks if you want to there's even some people who are give, offering games you know pay what you want but then there's the that isn't the bulk of it though are like the really really big money makers like Fortnite and ea and a lot of sports games actually sports games make up uh possibly the majority of the money made up Let's like every see. fifa game is insanely successful so it's... in 2020 according to statista in 2022 the revenue from the worldwide gaming market was estimated at almost 347 billion us dollars Fucking with the and this is the black pill part with the mobile gaming market generating yeah. an estimated 248 billion us dollars of that total Wow, dude! Yeah. All the tactics we've been over of how everything like mobile when the, when Dead Space did what it did, mobile games were like, whoa! <laughs> Look, <laughs> yeah. All these, all the, the the scourge of video games. It, it isn't, it, it's not woke writing and sweet baby ink and all that bullshit. No, it's just, no, it's fucking mobile games. Mobile games are the scourge are of the industry, and they have been the peak of predatory fucking consumerist like like disgusting stuff. Hey, You've got new buddies, guy. Dude, Dude when, um, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, well, it's they, they've got easy access to the normie market because everybody's hey, got a Fred, fucking phone. On, yeah. it's, it's so fucking <laughs> fucked up because they'll use like all that. It, it'll just be like, because uh, this is a story I've told before. I think it was my first and last fucking experience with this. It's like, it's a cool little Simpsons game. It was called like Tap It Up or some bullshit. And it's just like, this is just this is an official Simpsons game for your mobile. You can play it while you're waiting in whatever place or doing whatever. It's like, build your own little town. It's like, oh, that's fun. I can put all of the iconic Simpsons things in different places. It's like, yeah, move the Simpsons house. Is this, there's this. It's like, do you want, you know, the elementary school or, or uh, Mr. Burns' mansion? It's like, yeah. It's like, yeah, just toss in a dollar. It was like, <laughs> oh, okay, I guess. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool, I guess. I'll do that. And then it's like, oh, you wanted, like, you know, Smithers and Mr. Burns for the mansion? Yeah, just one dollar extra on top. That's fine. You're like, hmm. See, what you need <laughs> like, is you need... Yeah. It's like with Stan, you need the devil to come and explain to you dopamine and you yeah. know, serotonin and how all of that works. And it does the thing, you pay, and then it's like animations and audio sound, and then like references to the show, they say a line from the show, and you're like, oh, this, I'm, I'm having yeah, fun. Good job, buddy. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, <laughs> and then you have people who fucking know, destroy their lives with these games without even realizing it. Do, do you guys see the clip on, I can't remember what, which talk, late night talk show it was, but Jack Black explained that his kid was playing some mobile game and he eventually racked up five thousand dollars worth of purchases oh, yeah. on it Jesus. And, and jack was like how yeah, the yeah. fuck did you even do that like what what, what is this yeah it's yeah. the yeah, business model it. now there's actually uh back when sterling used to make videos that were worth anything he mm -hmm. actually covered this there was a Long gdc talks ago. like 10 years ago called like how to make whales sing or whatever basically they've been pushing this angle where mobile games expect about 90 literally 98 percent of the player base to be just complete freeloaders not not really pay much of anything they they completely base their entire business model off of whales which is about one to two percent of the player base yeah. who make up 70 yeah. percent of their revenue so yeah. like they get a couple people out of every hundred who just pay hundreds of dollars into these stupid games it's yeah, really right. sad like, that yeah that like, joke game catch. diablo immortal that that made oh, money I mean, well, and, the same and, amount of money, uh, yeah, the, because uh, people get addicted yeah. to it, because people are... Well, the, here's the uncomfortable truth about, like, the gaming market and this the gaming industry as a whole. And it's not something that a lot of people want to talk about. It's not something a lot of gamers want to hear, is that a huge part of the problem is that it's a bottom-up issue. It's that they only sell things that people buy. If people didn't buy $20 yeah, skins, true. if people didn't buy the season passes and the Skinnerbach loot this, that, and the other thing, if people didn't buy that shit, they would not sell it. So mm -hmm. every time you see someone in a game who's running around with their fancy skin that they paid 20 15 whatever dollars for, and then it's like, oh, yeah, that guy, it, that guy is the problem. If people didn't do what that guy did, they wouldn't do it. You know what I'm um, that. Yeah. It, it, a, a, a way to sort of see all of this would be that if zero is like we're all happy with how things are going and a hundred is like the worst thing ever it, it, you're all the frogs in the big pot and then the 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 people at the heads of all of this making these decisions slowly turn up the temperature and it, this goes back so many fucking years like i said we've known about this for so long but people point at them going look he's raising the temperature and everyone looks over and then he stops and he moves it back a little bit he's like what 
Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of what we saw with uh, if it was like um, Battlefront Two, right? That was a case of whoa, 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 whoa. it's like oh shit, and then the wa- the the water's bubbling, and the, yeah, it's like what? Huh? What? Yeah, yeah. And, oh, he, and, he, and he turns it back, and he's like, "Wow, what a crazy <laughs> thing that that happened there! Wow, yeah, that's, that's so crazy. whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, that <laughs> that's, that's nuts!" Yeah. And then you know, yeah. five years yeah. later, they've inched back up to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, the, the, I'd say um, all the I Battlefront Two Battle fiasco was don't the... make it change the game. Don't don't have it affect gameplay. As yeah, long yeah, as you don't do the, that, then you can the do whatever line. you want. There used to be a time when skins were just part of the game, where you, you just, just unlocked unlock them. It, they were meritorious you rewards. Yeah. And yeah. now at this point, we've more or less essentially accepted that cosmetics can be sold and can be sold like massively. Across the board, well, where like it would actually be unreasonable for you to start up a game and then play it for free and expect to even unlock many things when back, you know, even like Modern Warfare 2, you could yeah. unlock like 50 different camos for your gun. There's a whole reason that mm-hmm. Epic has a storefront now, it's because of Fortnite selling skins. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And, well, yeah. also, I think that that's why I think one of the many reasons Stellar Blade was just a breath of fresh air because you can just play the game and unlock a new outfit. It's like, oh, I have it. Good God, that's so play. sad, isn't yeah, it? I earned this. Yeah. Isn't, isn't yeah. it sad though that we're yeah. like, oh, that's Through great. Yeah. Feeling yeah. right. Used to be <laughs> fucking normal. God damn it. There used to be places yeah. in games that you'd have to do some wacky shit to get to that maybe even involves a cheat code, and you'd find an NPC that's like, how did you get up here? You'd be like, oh, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah. I love this. And now, now it's like, no, you can pay for the DLC to do that if you want. <laughs> like, okay. One of the, right. one of the most uh, interesting things I, I uh, the only times I actually went um, achievement hunting, I think it was. Uh, Jeez, Soul Calibur five, four or five, one of those. They actually would unlock new outfits by the number of achievements you got. So if you got like 10 achievements, they'd, they'd unlock one batch of outfits. 20 achievements, you'd unlock more outfits. And you could use those to customize your characters and stuff like that. So it was actually pretty cool. It reward you for unlocking whatever. And because the achievements were a list of about 50 or so achievements, you could actually just do different tasks. It was like completing quests to get more, more cosmetics. It's actually, actually a lot of fun. I, I like that aspect of it. Yeah, I like tying it to um, an amount of achievements rather than specific achievements. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm not good at that. Like, but I'm good at this thing, so I can get that achievement and then get enough to get the costume. I think another thing, and this kind of sucks, but it's just true. Like, because I've seen some people in chat mentioning it. Like, um, what doesn't help is new popular creators who maybe, maybe half of it is they're not aware of all of this, but half of it is just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm getting involved. Do you remember the um? the T. Martin syndicate <laughs> thing that happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. that was no, so long. That was so long after everything had been known. They basically, like, they hyper-monetized the whole skin gambling thing for CSGO stuff. To the point, by the way, that had they done what they did, maybe today, maybe years later from now, they would have gone, they would have served a lot of jail time, more than likely. They, um, mm. the way they would wait, work... Watch the story? So the way it would work is you'd, they would sell this site. I forget what the site was called. Someone in chat will know. CSGO was, Lotto. CSGO yeah, you, Lotto. You just go in, you start betting on skins and doing all this kind of stuff. It's all gambling, but like they owned the site. They had the back end and they would make shit tons of money from it. And it was obviously, the house always wins with gambling. Everyone knows that. But like, uh, course, yeah. Once it was all exposed, they got a shit ton of... It, it, it spawned one of the most famous apology videos from T. Martin ever, where it starts with him and his dog, and he's like, oh, so sorry about all this, guys. I guess I made a mistake. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. Hey, Fido, how are you going to take it's, this? It's, yeah. it's some of the mo- and that's the thing. It takes people to just be like, I don't give a fuck. I'll make my bag. And it's like, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. You just fucking damaged everything so significantly. All the work that gets done, because, I mean, I'll, I'll say his name, we haven't said it this whole time, but Toll Biscuit made so much fucking effort to to building blocks oh, yeah. his way to making a difference for all of this. And can you imagine how fucking furious he'd be if he was still here? Like, yeah. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. he was talking about a lot of this stuff right when it began, and things have gotten a lot worse now uh, than even back then. It was very much the beginning of the era of experimenting with figuring out what the model looks like. And it feels like at this point, they've essentially figured out the way to do it. It's like, okay, so map packs, don't do those anymore. Make sure that all of the gameplay content gets released for free. Yeah, don't but split the in exchange base. for that, make, monetize the shit out of cosmetics. Make it, make, and, and, and make people fear of missing out. Like FOMO as something that's baked into the system as well. 
Um, who cares about the art direction of the game? Like, nobody, art direction, what's that, you know? At this point, like, back when Call of Duty actually had it to where you were playing as soldiers, now it's like, oh, you can play as Homelander. Oh, ain't that cool? But, like, that's how you make money, is sell the craziest, wackiest, most insane, look at me, look at me, look at yeah. how amazing I yeah. look, look at my great skin, pay attention to me, I'm important, I matter in this ecosystem that I'm a part of, and I don't want to be left behind, and all of this, like, psychology is baked into it, and it's making so much money. And yeah, just yeah, for reference man. for anybody who doesn't know, the way that would work is they would bet on the site themselves and have huge payouts and wins and be like, oh my god, this site's amazing, and they owned it. He was also pretending he didn't own the site while marketing it. It's, that's what he, it's yeah. that's yeah. what he actually Absolutely. got in trouble for. Oh, that's yeah, it's unfucking believable And the amount of crimes they've committed, like, like through... The thing of the problem is, is all this was too new and on platforms that the law hadn't caught up with properly yet. Yeah, he refused it up happen. until people found they, up until people found his name on like business opening documents and things like that. Like they actually had to prove it before he finally gave up the you know gave up the the charade. Basically, that was well, eight it was, years it was, ago. It was the way so. that it was being said, right? Like I found this new website, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I think he, the same way I find my kitchen every morning. Yeah. I, I, I think he um, he missed a couple letters. He founded this new website. Hey, uh, there, yeah. Wait, wait, I mean, man. is that dollars? Two, the numbers. Oh, the the fucking the, the the overall economy that was happening oh, to CS:GO man, skins that, was that insane. That cat video, man, dude. That oh, my cat geez. video on it, where it's just like. It, oh telling God. the story of Narcissus, you know, Narcissus sits by the, is he's so enamored with himself, the reflection of himself, that he shrivels up and dies, and then hard cuts all of these guys screaming, peeking their microphone, because they got a knife <laughs> skin in, in CSGO. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and how much more me? Oh, like for that... me, it's purely meta, you know? For me, it's like, oh, if I got a CSGO skin that's $2,000, like, I'd be screaming because I was like, oh, shit, I just got $2,000. Well, I, I, uh, I don't give a I shit about the, the, the knife. Uh, I the video was cut, something, because <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was like a GDC, like some sort of developer talk where Steam was saying, you valued it as being rare because you were told it was rare. Like, the aesthetic is not important. And then it cuts to a guy saying, I don't care what it looks like, that's a knife. Like, it's it's, yeah. it's so fascinating that, like, nobody even cares about the cosmetic. The only thing that's relevant about the cosmetic is how rare it is, as ordained by the ecosystem that's controlled by the studio. Yeah, You know, like, it's rare because you said it was rare. rare. Yeah. It's not like that's... in the real world where if something is, like, in short supply, then yes, it is rare, as opposed yeah. to a digital... Endless, like, Artificial scarcity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's exactly. a reason why, if I want to pick up a... A holographic Charizard. It's three hundred fifty bucks, and they, that shit's rare. You know, it's it's old. It's sought after. It, it's valuable. It, they don't make that shit anymore. It's part of an iconic franchise. It's tied to you know nerd culture. There, there's all these reasons for stuff. And with knives and with um, you know, with skins and games, it literally it's just code. They decide if it's rare or not. They decide arbitrarily if it if this know, is I a just, rare one or if this is I a just... common one. It, it, that's it. It doesn't actually have any value other than they just said it's rare and made it rare it's, for no reason. It's only valuable that. in terms of yeah. how it relates to the ecosystem that's under their control. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm still like fascinated by the idea of I don't care what it looks like. It's a knife. Like that's fascinating. Yeah. I don't even care about what the cosmetic looks like. Like, what does it do? How much damage does it deal? How like what's the interval between nothing substantive? Like damage dealing based on how many mouse clicks? Like that's all people care. Some people care about, but some people are so obsessed and with so, the, um, I guess the vanity the, uh... aspect of it. You can understand that when coming into a like, oh, you know, games are cheaper than they've ever been. It's like, yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, they're cheaper than they've ever been, huh? As long as we don't yeah. think about all of this, which is the new. cancer. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the, you know, I guess what you would call the console and PC gaming space to distinguish yeah. it from mobile games. Not to mention well, the uh, cultural bit. damage, because like a lot of these people that are playing CS:GO and doing this this stuff that's like low key gambling were kids they're on they're they're underage well, a lot of them were so it's like that the amount oh, yeah. of damage that has when you create that sort of gambling addiction mentality early on man how many people oh hey end look up, i mean those loot boxes yeah, you know yeah. like you uh, you get the loot box and then it shakes and it explodes with all of these colors and like trumpets and face drop and stuff wow good yeah, job. That's one of the biggest oh, killers you know, of like all of preventing this from happening is just the notion of hey, it's been like that for ages 
And then there was a COD Pretty game much. where they actually allowed the box to like open up in front of everyone. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That was like Call of Duty World War Two, where you could yeah. pull in like the requisitions, and then they would explode in front of people so that they yeah. could see all the cool stuff that you got. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, you reminded me of the fucking end of Suicide Squad Killer Justice League. It's like, you know, rest in peace, forever <laughs> oh, respected, Kevin oh, Conroy. Oh, and then, oh, pew, 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 oh, you've unlocked God, a gun. Yeah. It's like, ugh. Oh, that's so, <laughs> that's so gross. stupid. Yeah, so yeah. So, so Mahler, Mahler, a few a few minutes back, you mentioned that a, a part of this is people saying "fuck you," I got mine, right? And oh, people, yeah. I mean, I, I posted a probably the most egregious example in the in the group chat here, but there's now this this industry is pro is popping up among streamers, where basically they go viral for getting a really good pull from a loot box. And so now they're incentivized to, because now once they go viral, they get more clicks, they get more money. And now everyone's yeah. thinking like, oh, I could be that guy too. So like, it, yeah. it seems like all the incentives are pointing in one direction and it's a bad direction. Oh yeah. Well, the, the incentive is loud, loud. Uh, look at me, look at me and look at all of this awesome stuff that I got. Look at these awesome things mm -hmm. I got. And you, don't you wish you were me with this cool skin uh, yeah. for this game? Like, man, does also, that make this... me special? Also, this video is hilarious because yeah. the guy destroys his TV accidentally because he's so excited. Yeah. Uh, now I'm just um, thinking about fuck it, I'll just buy a new one. Every okay. time I'm just thinking about Wiggs throwing his controller. Did I crack that? <laughs> Classic. Yeah, the... This guy's like playing, he's playing a soccer game or something and he freaks out. He's like, oh my god, and he throws his chair and it like destroys his TV and he's like, oh. We can Oops. pop that in the uh, in the watch together <laughs> after this video, and then before uh, the shit cube review. But I was just gonna say the um, <laughs> what what uh, Indigo was talking about. Like a uh, it's a it's a fucking iconic line for a reason, right? But a sucker is born every minute. Not so much uh, commenting on any particular intelligence, but just what you're used to, the culture around you, what is normal. And when you come into gaming yeah. and all of this is normal, then they can do so much worse once enough time has passed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, post, I posted an curiosity. article from uh, Forbes, um, and it says why it's scary when 0.15% of mobile gamers bring in 50% of the revenue. Mm. The scariest thing about that, that was posted 10 years ago. So you can only imagine how bad <laughs> oh, it's gotten Christ. since then. It's so it's like much worse are, now. <laughs> it's just, they're obviously trying to get people addicted to it. They're yeah. trying to catch those few people in the vast net that they cast. That, like, oh, this we found someone who's so mentally... Like needy Efficient. for this, who is so yeah. I don't know, they, they just don't have anything else in their lives, or their just mind is just addicted to this kind of thing that we can just just fleece them for all they're worth. Yeah. I mean the the silver lining, and it's a very tiny silver lining, but the silver lining is that you still need to make a good game for any of this predatory stuff to work. Because you know, Generally... Suicide Squad it, yeah, mm. Suicide, Suicide think... Squad is an example of this, right? Because they definitely expected whales to prop that game up, and no one's and propping it up. Well, but yeah, I, he's, well, he's, he's like yeah. I think or... generally is Ray I, I Shadow Legends right a good generally. game. Yeah, like I don't know about that necessarily. I have yeah, a I feeling Raid's like, probably well, better than than Suicide Squad. It will. So I think that generally <laughs> Dev is correct. There does need to be the better of a core system that you get the person to return to to make it worth spending money on, the better the game is, the more they that people will probably or, feel likely. Because uh, look at disagree. Diablo uh, Immortal. There's, there's, a, think, there's a classic trick. You can make a game really appealing at the start and then add in all the shit after like a year or so. Once you've rubbed them in. There's yeah. that, but there's also, I feel like the game games are no different than movies and TV right now. Where There's a... There's a there's two results that can get you, or right, two strategies that can get you the result of what a great thing that was. And it's being good, but then also kind of just coming across as though you are good. Like the Fallout show, by vast majority of accounts, is a fantastic show. It's not. How did they do that? It's like, well, they did a bunch of cheap tricks. And like games are no different. You have all kinds of strategies. But one of them I would call brute forcing. Like I haven't seen a Raid Shadow Legends uh, ad recently. But man, the, like even if they stopped today, they were going for what, like fucking five years or something, and that just yeah, felt so like to this I, point everybody knows what they are, you know. Everybody yeah, even though it's famously a RPGs. <laughs> famously a game that you shouldn't play because it's shit. But everybody and 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 people would say like the best ads for those would be like, oh, we all know this is shit, but anyway, you should play it. It's like it works. Like, it, it got them fucking it customers. Uh, do you think that they paid for the ads? <laughs> the game makes money. <laughs> 
So like, and again, yeah, it was it, like uh, the Canadian Devil said: you you know, you only need a small percentage of uh of people who spend a lot of money to prop up the entire game. Yeah, wait, my devil. I was about to say, did I hear no, that right? No, no. The, the Canadian the devil, the Canadian devil from Canadian South devil Park. Was, yeah, right. Yeah, he was, right. Oh, okay. Uh, he, yeah. he flies around stabbing <laughs> people with his pitchfork. I, yeah. I stab <laughs> you. I stab you. No, no, no. Nate from Fallout Four is not in here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, the the I've always felt that the industry is trying to find any and all strategies to get their game to a position where it's sold really well, but with the minimum effort in terms of substantive like mechanics or meaning from the game at all in any way. Even in the sense of graphics, favorite, like they will it. skip as much as they can. Because you know, what the fuck would be so, the point of making an actual good game? <laughs> Just out of curiosity, if any Zoomer, you know, like, like a twenty-year-old or something, you know, went back and played DLC Quest today, would they get the joke? <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of funny, right? Parodies of the like industry they... as it's gone on will become less and less parody, more and more just like confusing. Like why? What's yeah. the joke here? Like we, <laughs> this is like, like underplayed. That was, yeah, that, that was 2011, and it was a funny game in 2011. But I wonder if you go back now, it's just like, oh, this is depressing. Yeah, I was gonna make a reference to uh, uh, Judy Calls, which was the parody oh, game Judy that Calls. was yeah. made. Yeah, Master Sergeant <laughs> Shooter Person. <laughs> so real. That was funny. Yeah. So real. Didn't that begin with War Never Changes, or does it? I guess it does. Like that's the intro. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what was that from? I don't remember that. Duty calls came with a. It was like the demo Bullet Storm for a fake devs. game you could play before Bullet Storm. Yeah, yeah, Bullet Storm. It was like it was an ad for oh. Bullet Storm, but you got to play this really crappy Call of Duty game. Yeah, it just made oh, fun man, of Call of Duty's Bullet tropes. Bullet Bullet it was really Bullet funny. Was such a cool game. That's a, yeah. that's a shame that it, it didn't do so well. That yeah. game was fun. A game it was did fun. I wish more uh, shooters did, which was have like some sort of point scoring system integrated into the uh, skill into kills. the uh, gameplay. Yeah, pretty much encourage people to 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 mess around with the mechanics and try different ways of uh, getting through it. Yeah. Right. Anyway, back to the video. Wait, we're anyway, shrinking yeah. every year as wages right, grew yeah, with inflation video. and as that right. number. Wait. <laughs> now. What? Now. Wait a minute, sir. <laughs> Why'd you say that? I don't think I heard him right. <laughs> began to balloon for reasons we will get into in a future video. And the real return on that $60 price point was shrinking every year as wages grew with inflation and as that number didn't change. Mm, what? <laughs> as wages grew with inflation. Wages grew with inflation. Okay. That didn't happen. Maybe he should, wait, maybe wait. He should specify if he's He's talking about game dev wages or yeah. the general wages. I feel like game dev it wages. Sounds like he's have... talking about game dev wages. No, no way it's one to one with this inflation. Time period, though. Game devs were paid more. Wait, so if he's pro game dev wages, then this is a pro game dev. This is a pro industry video, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's the least surprising thing. I said earlier yeah. that, that, that <laughs> yeah. this guy is like, he's trying to communicate from a game developer's perspective to game consumers. He's Ooh. fucking it up, but well, I mean, that is the general. But you've got like... to talk about publishers. You got to talk about the publishers and the and their approach and like how much money the publishers making, how much are the guys at the top, the execs making, you know, with uh, all of the uh, the growing revenue of the gaming industry. I mean, last year, a couple of years have been infamous for uh, dev, you know, or publishers coming. I mean, out look at how many developers had... have just been laid off. You know, meanwhile, well, like the, the last record few years profits, has been infamous for yeah publishers coming out and saying we've made record profits this year and then they'll let hundreds and hundreds and, and fired hundreds everyone of people go the hundreds of and they'll fire go, all yeah. of these people Gave and it was like wait, like a trillion what? dollars like bobby uh, bobby kotick drove you know activision you know, or blizzard like into the ground and destroyed their reputation and he got an insane amount of money with all the scandals that came out and with all the financial issues all the firings, all of the the, uh, the decisions, and he got an insane amount of money. For oh, all of are, that you, shit. are you uh, talking about Bobby Kotick? Yeah, that was that's presumably because he just had so many shares they had to buy from him. It's not like they gave him that as a reward. He got for bonuses doing a all good job. the time. You, well, yeah, he got bonuses throughout, but they had to buy out his shares. And uh, depending on where you're on the organization, you get a certain amount um, of sort of bonus essentially when you get acquired that happens and 
when when you go public or when you get acquired. I, I suppose the, the point this was that was making that. is that um yeah oh, okay. I, definitely definitely getting like big bonuses you know just like routinely throughout the years. I, I guess it's just it's it's a weird way to present of like budgets are getting higher and you know the the devs are being paid appropriately. Um, and it's like well. <laughs> Like a lot has already been made of like the nature of how um a lot of uh like crunch and the amount of people who are being completely burnt out of the industry like entirely because of being overworked. Obviously, the mm -hmm. amount of layoffs that have been happening lately. Meanwhile, companies are talking about record profits. I I am not sure like what the what the goal is here in terms of an observation it, about the well, health the of the problem, gaming industry. But the problem is that yeah. games are too cheap. We should we should be spending more. Mm. That's the it's, ge it's generalizing yeah. too much, and since we have no no time uh, frame to work from, we just don't know what the state of the industry actually was for what he's supposedly describing. Like, obviously, this isn't modern, but this could be anywhere from like 2008 to 2015. That's too wide a window of time. So, what did the industry do next then? Well, it uh... began to bat around the four most dreaded words in gaming. New ways to monetize. Why is he so, the so, happy uh, uh, that, 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 That's really cringe. Um, First off, cringe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whether the prices cringe. were going to be going up for games anyway, these new ways to monetize were inevitable because of the upside. Like it's it's um. I remember something that fascinated me was that the amount of money that EA had made. I can't remember which year it was. But it was like, like 2021 or 2022. The amount of money that EA made from FIFA Ultimate Team alone was greater than the amount of money they had made of, like, you know, at point of sale, uh, selling games to people, right? Like, the retail copy of the game plus digital. That was, it. like, the idea that... I, I, I hope it's not presenting, like, this false dichotomy that it was either you should have accepted paying $70, 80 dollars uh, or microtransactions, because that was never going to be the case. All of these ways of monetizing it, they love it. Like, consistent, reliable, perpetual revenue coming in constantly instead of just, you release a game, make a lot of money hopefully at launch, and then hopefully you still get, like, generally good sales going. Nah, there, there was always going to be a mass appeal to, holy shit, imagine if we could be, like, routinely making, you know, $300, $400 million a year, like, consistently think... per quarter. Yeah, through the, live service, through battle passes, through microtransactions. The big question to reveal all of this mm -hmm. bullshit being like, the way that they presented this narrative is so ho horseshit, but if, let's say, as opposed to all the little things he'd mentioned, all the things that we've talked about, they simply hiked the price. They actually jumped to $100. They were like, just instant uh, 50 to 100 As if that would mean, if all customers said, yes, we're going to continue to buy it, that's all fine. As if that means they wouldn't have still done DLCs, it's expansions, not, microtransactions. They no to do that. Yeah, they, they, of course, they bring it in anyway. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop, no. They're like, oh, they, they, they're, they they're want to make as much money as possible. And that's always the nature of it, is like, it's meant to be a push and pull, where hopefully players, consumers are advocating for their best interests, and then the companies are going for their best interests. <laughs> And yes. that the push and pull will lead us to like will, a middle ground where everybody is generally okay with the way that things are working. It's, the, it's certainly not okay because the company will never be doing it from the perspective of like, well, how can we make this a better deal for those guys? It's exactly. always going to be like, well, how do we make it? Yeah, it's always the cookie jars, the boiling the frog. They're always yeah. just trying to reach for the maximum that they can. And as which soon is, as you catch I mean, them, and job. all that's, the outrage that's happens. Essentially their job. Which is why the, the, the you know, we right. put in effort as well as for animals. other people have. It's like you want to encourage people to voice their perspective some of that. And, and it's only through very small events through history that sometimes it's good enough. It kind of reminds me of the React streamer shit. It's only when this particular thing happens that everyone bands together and says no, and that they, they just, they you know, they go to the little cave, they're like, it's fine, it's fine. no, we won't be there. And then enough days pass and they crawl back out, and it's like, yeah, there they are again. Fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm, I'm all gonna... of these... Huh? Sorry, I was just gonna. I was gonna say, uh, I'm gonna stand in for uh, Fringy and do a Simpsons reference now. And uh, I, I always re get reminded of um, an early Simpsons thing where Millhouse is in an arcade. He puts in like 20 quarters into the arcade, and he's like, "Oh, 20 quarters, this better be good." And he immediately gets a game yeah. over screen. He's like, "What a rip!" And then he like stops for a second and puts more quarters. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mind if I jump in here a little bit? No, no, because I have. I have another dev gets lynched opinion. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> okay. We can hit play. Let's do it. 
Is okay, that, so, is it um, like re- directly is related it? to this that we're on right now? Like this like specific Cortana thing that we're talking have about? Toes. It, it, it's it's related to, to the to the previous <laughs> to the previous point, but also one that's related to this point. I've I got two I got two dev gets lynched. Oh good. Okay. Did you have All explained right. them in the Well Do it, go, go for it. So, so, yeah, yeah. So, oh, so the first to. first one. I do, I do, I guess I do. Okay. Um basically a friend of mine had the opportunity to talk to somebody who works or worked at um at Activision Blizzard. And this guy was like, actually, you know what? Bobby Kotick actually isn't the problem at the company. There's actually other people there. He's just the fall guy. So, but the conversation didn't go anywhere beyond that because someone interrupted. So, like, you couldn't get any details. But I wonder how much of how, I wonder how much of his reputation is unearned. I, I'm um, just thinking about it now. You know, I, I, I'm working on a World of Warcraft video right now, and I can say that that is partly true. But Bobby Kotick isn't fully well, blameless wait. either. He's not a pro- you, professional. You can't be blameless if you'll pay a lot of to be the full guy. I guess yeah, fair enough. If if I if, like, so, I'm, I'm like I didn't do the thing, but I got paid to take the blame for it. It's like, well, you benefited then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you kind of let the problem very, keep happening. Also, the, if he's the buck a, if he's has a to stop guy, somewhere. He's a very rich You're in full charge. Guy, a very very run, wealthy full guy. You run the corporation, basically. You're a yeah, yeah, fair enough, everything. Fair the, everything is your fault. Basically, like he, he said, like everyone online thinks he's like this purely evil dude. He's actually like a really nice guy, though. It's like, oh, okay. I know. Uh, right, whatever. Yeah, it's I mean, worth nothing to me. He's keeping this like, problem <laughs> humming along. Fuck him. Well, yeah, it gets complicated because you could be a really nice person, but if your entire goal is to increase money, and regardless of the quality or the experience or how much people are actually getting out of your product, well, so that's not, that's not going to be a very, water, you know, Activision, like, well, and look at that. tell that to the fucking look thousands of people done. every year yeah. who lost their jobs because of yeah. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, that might even be like, he might be a good executive because he did that. He might be cutting the fat quote unquote, even though it's losing all these people's jobs might be overall good for the company. So he's probably, a good asset for that company. I'm not, I don't like that guy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing for him, but I'm saying that in the, in the eyes of the investors, he probably did a good thing. So he's probably li- he was mm-hmm. probably liked by the people who own stock. And yeah, it's probably beneficial for him strings. to be a nice man to all the people that he interacts with. Yeah. It's a lot of motivation there to make sure, sure. he's nice to them all. <laughs> I can, I can yeah, completely well, buy also, this the, a story that was told, though. Yeah, there's also the balancing of like, you know, everyone talks about layoffs, etc. And Fair enough. There's definitely some people who probably should be fired. You know, like not everyone is just a victim of of a big corporation. Sometimes it's like, no, you actually sucked at your job, and it's probably good that you're gone. So, yeah, no, I, well, I, I get the I point. It all really like, depends, you know. Mo- yeah. With most of these huge industry problems, getting rid of any one person's probably not going to do much at all to save us, like from the horrors. It's mm-hmm. like it's going to be a big system of people. Like when people talk about like how do we save Disney, it's like it ain't going to be firing one person. That's, that's not going to be it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the second point is more involved, though. Um, I had the opportunity maybe a month ago to question um, John Radoff about some stuff. You guys don't know who he is? No. No. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you his Wikipedia page. I'll is it Radoff when you, here. like, compare rats? Yeah, they do in a <laughs> so he, um, he's the CEO and co-founder of Beamable, a live service platform, a live game service oh, platform. Woo-hoo. So he makes, he makes a bunch of the tools that companies will then like rent out to make a live service game. So he's that guy. And I was like, okay. So I was like, listen, you have to understand that gamers fucking hate live service games right now. So like, like if, if, any, if anyone knew who you were, you'd be like public enemy number one. So like, what is, what is your pitch for the pro games as a service position? And he basically said, um, like, I'm going to paraphrase here, but he basically told me, that um the era of a single guy making a game in his basement and like just going away for five years and then dropping a hit that's basically over now because now you have game developers okay. <laughs> who are who are releasing game who are making games in the public space so they're showing a new screenshot like every month on their own twitter and also that games now have their own okay, communities built up around them well sure they choose to do it but there's an advantage to it right so and the advantage is such that now you can't really just be quiet and then drop a hit game Why? out of nowhere with with no publicity Why? because yeah. other, because there will be other games that have, let's say, um, built a community up on their Twitter account for like two or three years, being like, here's here's update on the game, guys. Here's another update. Here's another update. And then they basically, so now that game development is um, is more public, there's a lot more scrutiny on it. 
And so developers kind of get hammered a lot more for that because if someone comes out and it's like, look at my first look at my new game and it's shit, but they're like, listen, I'm, I've started working on this one month ago. It'll be done in like two years. It'll be great then. But there's there's like no grace period on social media because social media is a fucking hellhole. Um, so basically there's developers are kind of feeling a squeeze right now because they have to be more public early in the development process than they might be than, than they might want to. But that's the only way they can compete. And then he, he also laid out that um, because they can't just go quiet and then release a game and have it be a hit anymore, there has to be like a more steady revenue in between releases to keep the company afloat. This is all this normal is, this rhetoric. Is, this is now what they're trying. Yeah, like, sure, no. sure. I mean, it's, I'm presenting you his his opinion. I, by the way, I don't believe this stuff. Okay, I'm presenting to you an opinion from a guy who works in this. Well, I just wanted to, say, to see to point what one, you guys think of it. There's a difference between uh, them not being known and them not existing. I guarantee you, especially with the autism that relates to game devs. There's plenty of them out there right now in their basements working for years on end without talking to people with, with their like masterpiece that will likely, in who knows how long time, you'll see a clip on Twitter of some new game that's got a unique mechanic you've never seen before. And it's like, this was made by Billy Bob Brumbo in his, in his basement over 10 years. And you'd be like, oh, cool. And it's like, one guy made this? Like, that comes up all the time, I think. And um, that's not including yeah, all the ones that player. tried and failed. The idea that public marketing has gotten to such a degree that people don't do it anymore. It's like, there's, there was always crazy levels of marketing. And I think there was more transparency with development earlier than there is now. It reminds me of the way that you do behind the scenes shit for like um, any Star Wars movie. It's all fake. It depends on what we're talking about. If you're talking about like major studios, you're not getting anything like the Halo 2 behind the scenes yeah. where they basically just openly admit that they screwed up like midway through development and had to rework a lot of stuff and that they cut stuff and that they're willing to say that. A lot of behind the scenes yeah, they might now be... is essentially it might be a bigger you know, market share in terms of core ads, but I feel like the transparency is at an all-time low for us to understand what the fuck is even going on. Because games come out not working thanks to convincing us through marketing that's fake in terms of like, oh, this is totally the game. It's working great. Enjoy. And then yeah, it's like, oh, lol, exactly. we'll patch Aliens, it. Don't you worry. Colonial Marines. Yeah, yeah, even and, like um, real yeah. demos or beta tests that used to be yeah. way more prevalent of like an actual beta test of it's not done yet. You know, this is like, we're working on it, and the changes that you suggest may radically change what we're doing, rather than, yeah, it's a beta, and the game's out in, like, a week. You know? <laughs> like, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah and, um, I th I, I'd say that yeah, the, transparency, sense, yeah. the transparency has gotten a lot worse um, for big companies, but a lot better for, like, indie devs. Because, like, for example, yeah. start a lot of people in the chat said Stardew Valley. That's a great example. But he did yeah, announce the game three years before it came out and he did do like youtube videos about the music and the gameplay as it developed and he did kind of do the basement thing for a couple of years and then just you know cranked it out while doing the game pretty much solo for another three years before it, he it actually released it and that became a huge success but that's like one in a thousand ten thousand maybe like that was an incredible success for that kind of project most games especially if they do not do a lot of pre release sort of like getting steam wish list is like your number one priority as an indie dev getting like 10,000 uh plus steam wish lists is like a mandatory thing before you even think about releasing nowadays yeah i was well, i was going to say from the indie perspective they talk a lot about how um hard it is to actually get exposure on their games even though they're out there you know telling everybody hey here's my mixed i mean here's my indie game uh, they, yeah. they're not they're not really they're not really getting that traction even though yes they are technically talking about it yeah so the they are sets. effectively still just a guy in their basement yeah as with any technology i mean youtube's a great example with any technology as it's easy the bench the uh kind of like the the bar gets lower to be able to enter you don't have to have like a tv broadcasting company or a contract with mgm or whatever to be able to be seen by millions of people all of a sudden the competition will in drastically increase with like unity engine and unreal engine 5 and all these other, other tool sets game maker etc it's easier than ever to build your own game and get it released on a platform that anybody in the world can buy from but that means you're going to get 10x 100x the competition and so discoverability becomes an issue yeah and yeah. i think the guy's just lying because this this <laughs> round of guy yeah because like the like an example that came out recently that just that's not just just shows the guy is incorrect is Balacro. I haven't oh, known about yeah. that game, but my but my friends are playing it on their Steam Deck. So it's like, I what is this? Balacro it spread like thing? wildfire that game. It was crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one dev. 
Yeah, and I don't know anything about it until my friend showed me like they played a hundred hours of it. That's crazy. And oh it, yeah, it's it, super it addictive. Pop off on Steam. Yeah. So well, that's the thing. It was funny because I played it for a decent amount of time, and the I think the Discord were like, "Oh God, he's into like a gotcha crazy like gambling game, which is a poker <laughs> game." But it's like, no, there's no there's no microtransaction. It's just it's a roguelike. Yeah, it's just a roguelike <laughs> game. No, but what from what I understand, what it does is it takes poker hands and it adds all these sort of multipliers and bonuses yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, based I've got on those hands many hours in it john uh, it's it's a oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's a um, it's a wonderful fucking game in terms of if if you like that sort of thing you get like uh you you play poker hands with a deck that you can manipulate to have you know more of any particular suit or rank and then you can uh by jokers jokers are like the modifiers for the whole game so it could be if you have a flush you get 10 extra chips if you get you know, two of a kind, but then you can get the really rare jokers that change everything, legendary jokers and stuff. And the more you play, the more you unlock, and the different difficulties there are. It's such a good god, it's such a game. And it, there's no bullshit, and it's just fun. It's just a fun fucking game that requires a bit of skill, a bit of luck, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, easy recommendation, because it's, uh, I'm not actually sure what the price is, but I know it's going to be cheap as fuck compared to Suicide 15. Squad, kill the Justice League, where you'll be tormented <laughs> for like, X amount of time. What? Oh my god. The the excellent game that lost two hundred million dollars for Warner <laughs> Brothers. Mm -hmm. No way. Actually, my my girlfriend's currently playing it right now to get some footage for me for the upcoming video, and she's just like, wow. I fucking hate that's this. Pretty cool. abuse, dude. And, and she, that's she probably... is the best. Oh my that's god. Keep her, okay. The that's best possible the... girlfriend. And that's probably the biggest uh, argument against this whole argument that games need to be more expensive is that indie devs have cut the huge amount of bloat that's in big game development now and make really good looking really attractive really addictive and simple plain games that don't need 500 dlcs uh and they still make money if they charge like 15 bucks like bellatro you know that might have been a yeah a very low budget well, game but it looks it looks really nice it plays really well it's got overwhelmingly overwhelmingly positive over thirty two thousand reviews that's a great example of hey i have a great idea i'm gonna build it and i can charge 15 bucks and make a profit like extra the, credits yes. could have brought that up if he decided to include the part about why <laughs> game budgets were getting bigger but well, he's decided he, that needs to be a separate video, video. So. Uh, ironically yeah. he's making dlcs yeah. for his video <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, okay, so I, I just want to point it out for for the nine of you here and also everyone in the chat who wants me dead i am not <laughs> I'm, like i'm not presenting john radoff's arguments as if i believe them okay i'm 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 giving them to you i'm giving i'm telling you I what he told me like a second hot take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you well, promised I, I, I predicted us that we were allowed to hate I you. I predicted so. I was going to get lynched again. But no, no, no I, here's the thing. Like, it was a very nice conversation. He's a nice guy, but I, I don't agree with anything he says. Um, but it was good Fair to enough. at least hear from him because he does work in the industry. So that was, that um, was nice. How many people yeah. worked on... But, uh, I, don't, I don't understand. What, what he said didn't make sense because he pitched both of those ideas as reasons why games as a service are necessary. I didn't... Well, I, I think the second one was, I think the second was probably the more important one. The second one was basically that... In a, in a traditional release model, you know, you you get a bunch of you get a bunch of funding, you put your game out, you get some profit, and then hopefully that profit is enough to tide you over for the creation so, of the like, next game. And he basically said, "Listen, there needs to be some sort of stopgap measure in between releases, and you know, the various live service elements can provide that extra revenue so that you're not constantly laying people off." That was his argument. But like, well, isn't that just an budgeting. inflated budget fuck up? Yeah, it would be like if I was saying, "Oh, I made my half a billion dollar movie." And we're going to need to put in some ads in the middle of the movie, as well as uh, DLC options for the movie, because I can't, aff I can't, like, you know, keep paying people and make the next yeah, half like, a billion dollar movie. It's like maybe you shouldn't be making half a billion dollar fucking movies. Yeah. How, how, like that's <laughs> an that explanation just doesn't even make sense. Game, that's how games used to work. Games would they'd sell a game, and then that would give them enough money to develop the next game, and then when they release that, that would give them enough money to develop the next game. Like it's that's how it's that's how it used to work. Nope. Yep. You just make one game and it goes saying, on for upwards of 13 years now, and you just monetize it. So I remember uh, saying that exact same thing to him, Fringy, because because okay. I hold your position, and he All basically right. said that um, he he blamed primarily graphics. It costs more to make to make a game still look good because because graphics are now are now like uh, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Exponentially. Basically, graf graphics look better than they used to 
So it costs more to make those graphics. That means more time, more people you have to pay more people. And so we need more money to make the same, to make like a good game. And so you need to have something that adds a bit of revenue in between releases. Even so that you're not just statement, constantly starving. There's issues even with that statement though. Like uh, the graphics look better and therefore cost more. And that's just the truth of time moving forward when, especially there are games now. Bellatra is actually a great example. The graphics in that are not exactly fucking complicated, but the animations are satisfying and the style is satisfying. There's all, you know, like there's so many games that are desperate to, let's just say, emulate real life to a T to the point where they're spending all the money on that. And then it's like, what about the mechanics, man? And then they just fucking tank. They're like, how did this happen? <laughs> like, I thought people, <laughs> I remember being in the fucking theater and they, uh, they had an ad for 8K Minecraft. And I was like, 8K? What the fuck? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> like photorealistic yeah. fidelity, I, if anything, like harms your game's lifespan a lot of the time. You look back at games like that a lot of the time, particularly I'm thinking Quantic Dream games. You look back at Heavy Rain today, that game looks like shit now. That game has aged. Meanwhile, like Wind Waker no. still looks great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say Wind Waker. Yeah. yeah. Point to any yeah. Of, like, oh, Team Fortress 2, right? It's like that well. style is yeah. so Team iconic. Two, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, there are a lot and, of these uh, styles that stand the test of time. Meanwhile, and the chief you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and achieving, sorry, I didn't cut you off there. Uh, achieving no, no. Uh, near gra near photorealistic graphics isn't that hard to do anymore just because of the amount of resources you have. Like, good example, Manor Lords. Although there more than one person works on the game, it's basically one guy named Greg. Uh, he's the only person who has, like, the master code and everything like that, but he uses he's hired a few contractors to help him. But uh, that game looks just as good as pretty much any other game off the shelf. It, it looks like a AAA game. And it's pretty much a solo solo game dev project, and that probably has to do a lot with just the availability of engines and the availability of stock assets and stuff like that. But if you look at Manor Lords today, it looks it looks like a million bucks. It looks like a, a, a AAA game. So um, the availability of options for that are are a lot better than they used to be, at least. The Lords yeah, of the Fallen yeah. remake looked glorious, but like the game wasn't finished. It just wasn't. And it's yeah. like nobody cares about it already. It's gone. So, there you go. I recall, yeah, um, I, I recall game, playing, no. I, I recall playing a Kena Bridge of Spirits because that was a very good looking game, but I think it was an indie team that did that. It's like, wow, this looks like a, a triple A game from a few years ago, but now it's an indie team doing this. So I, I do agree with you guys that general, I don't think the graphics argument is a convincing one, but that is the argument he gave me when I was interviewing him. So mm. yeah, no, I, I know I'm I... not convinced. I'm not convinced by it either because like, I, cause I think the software used to create this these graphics is also increasing in sophistication because you have all these algorithms being introduced that sort of make things easier for them. Like, I don't think it's necessarily a harder job just because the, the graphics look better. Now you've got these tools, like, you know, like you, you, you've got algorithms for generating, like populating trees, like across terrain, for instance, or, you know, upping polygon count or whatever. Like, is it really that much harder just because it looks so much prettier nowadays i mean maybe this the software is to such a sophistication that you know it is well, an easier the... job for them but they're saying like oh oh my god it's so hard you guys like well pretty it's... games and even say beautiful games are they're a dime a dozen let's just it's just normal to have a game release and have it look good there's tons of games that look good and it's just not something mm -hmm. that i really care about um i want a game that look when i when i think about oh what are the games that you've been playing recently and i'm like well i'm Stardew Valley, Deep Rock Galactic, Rim World, and it's like the, none of these games are like these these breathtakingly beautiful games. And it's not that I don't want them; I like it. You know, when I when I played, you know, the Dead Space remake or the Resident Evil Four remake recently, and I was like, wow, both of these games are gorgeous, and it definitely adds to the experience to have them be that way. I realized, oh, these are the minority of games that I play and invest a lot of time into. I need a game that has a nice style and a good gameplay loop and doesn't make yeah. me feel like I need to spend extra money to enjoy it because I could, there are plenty of games that are worthy of my money and there's plenty of games that are not. And mm -hmm. I'll more than happy, I'm more than happy to buy a deep rock galactic little $7 DLC thing for some, you know, little skins and stuff because that game's full of content and I love it. And it's got a great, you know, sort of great gameplay about it or something along those lines. And I'll be like, you know what? I'll put, I'll put 2,800 hours into Apex Legends. I can't remember the last time I spent a buck. So thanks for the free game. But 
I just don't <laughs> want to give you money. So there you go. I, I don't want to yeah. sound too much like I'm writing off Fidelity entirely because Fidelity can and absolutely is relevant, as you yeah. said. But games don't even have to be they don't even have to be high fidelity to be like visually stunning. An example that comes to my mind is uh, Rain World. Rain World is yeah. a video game yeah. that like runs on peanuts. And it is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. It has some incredible visual design in its backgrounds, and it's all yeah, basically it's about just having an aesthetic color. and style over just bit realism. Because realism often doesn't age necessarily well, mm -hmm. um, because our mm -hmm. our frame of reference for what looks good in terms of realism is going to be constantly shifting and changing as technology changes and our expectations adjust over time. But some games will always look good. Um, yeah, and, and um, I think that's really the important thing to that's the important thing to aim for. Some yeah, the... uh, Fringy, Fringy mentioned uh, Wind Waker earlier, and that sort of has an art style that just does not age. It just looks good for whatever era. And then I was watching a friend recently pay, play like Octopath Traveler. Yeah, I, I think it was one. the second one. Yeah, and it's just gorgeous. like you know, it's it's this mixture of two D and three D. Obviously, it's pixel art, but. The lighting is beautiful. The way it's all executed, it just looks great. I remember when um, Terraria yeah. came out, which I'm pretty sure was made by like a team of three, and uh, it costs like as much as when it's on sale, like a dollar. It's an enormous game, and I love the uh, the style of graphics in that. And then you have um, was it two twenty twenty two I think uh, Vampire Survivors came out, which uh, yeah. I think that was made by one guy with some contractors. And no one's going to be fucking writing home about the graphics in that game. But again, wildfire, it's spread. Because, like, people love the fucking challenge and the engagement with the game and the different ways that you could achieve victory. I think uh, the time before Last Metal came over, we were both playing Vampire Survivors because it was just fun. Like, and it's, it's so funny how much that uh, is, like, the ultimate key, probably, to any particularly successful game is to make it at the core, very, very fun, but they find all the different, to bring it back to the video, they try and find every single fucking way to not do that and to do everything else. And it creates, yeah, uh, it does yeah, create these sure. um, sort of vampiric money sink, you know, games, but it also creates complete and utter huge failures. Yeah. Well, I, I guess to finish yeah. this off then real quick, like the last thing that I said to him is that he, I basically said, you know, every time someone puts out a games as a service kind of thing with, you know, it's, you know, it's always online, there's an in-game shop and like people just don't like it. And you have so many examples of these games crashing and burning. No one's playing them, you know. Overwatch 2. Yep. Co companies are like going bankrupt. <laughs> They're laying people off. And his response was basically, that's, that's always the way things have been in the industry. It's just now it's more noticeable. And I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. But that was his view of it anyway. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, so yeah, I've actually been. Uh, yeah, I don't want to keep holding people up. I just uh, uh, comment on that one point real quickly. There's been a lot of problems that have been happening recently, like acquiring, acquiring, acquiring. Oops, we acquired too much. Got to got to close all these studios down. That has been happening for decades. I'm actually in, uh, investigating Interplay actually, and a lot of the same stuff that these studios like EA got famous for, especially Embracer Studios, bought all these companies and, and didn't develop anything, then closed them all down. That kind of thing happened back in the day too. Like uh, at interplay it, people don't really talk about them anymore but they actually produced they published blizzard's first couple of games they published treyarch's first couple of games mm -hmm. and they published uh, bioware's first couple of games too like they're like they kind of help these really big heavy hitters out out from being like, obscure small teams into big big things but then they started acquiring stuff they got acquired and then they just like, completely collapsed and fell apart so it has been a problem with the industry uh in the triple a gaming industry for a while i agree I just want everyone to know as well, we are three hours and 50 minutes into the stream, and we are three minutes and near 50 seconds into the video. Games are a big <laughs> fucking point of discussion, man. It's, yeah. it's tough yeah. to stay on track. New ways to a few, monetize. A few people in chat asked, the person that I talked to was named uh, John Radoff, if you want to look him up and see what he does. Hey, was boy. this like a published interview or just a private uh, yes. conversation? Yep. That was, okay. it was a public thing, yeah. They were slinging pre-orders. They were slinging collector's editions. They go. were slinging DLC, microtransactions. The list went on and on and on. So for years when? more, we didn't cross that feared $70 plateau. Meaning that by... He portrays these okay. things as they're, Finally. as they're like heroic. Like they're, <laughs> they're holding back that evil $70 price tag. We should be grateful. It's so, it's so odd and stupid. Like, because... 
the, the other the other prism we got to bring in, and there's there's more even on top of that is how complete the games were, how long the games were, how much like worthwhile they fucking were. All of this shit was changing too. I, I wanted to give my controversial take that I've actually talked about on stream before that I'm fine with seventy dollars. <clears throat> I'm fine with seventy dollar video games as long as they don't have any kind of microtransactions in them. I think that's something like, people I'm could get behind. With... I am fine with a more expensive video game if it has no like live service components or anything like that. Do you have a hour requirement, for, like how long it should take to beat the game? At that point? No, because some of my favorite games are not particularly like huge, lengthy. I get things. you, but obviously, I'd be I'd be a bit miffed if I paid a hundred dollars for a game that was like four hours long. Yeah, right? like four hours, but... but it was excellent. But you'd still be like, oh, it's still four hours though. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I. I... And they've yeah. already approved that $70 won't solve the problem. Uh, how yeah. many games launched at $70 and they had a premium version, they had a DLC, they had a, you know, season pass, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. like well, all these games, Diablo 4, um, Le Latest Legend of Zelda, um, the, the Final is, Fantasy VII Remake, Dead Island 2, Jedi Survivor, all these games launched at 70 but they still have all these premium editions. In 2020, Sorry. games were almost half of the price they were in the 90s in income-adjusted dollars. The and weirdly, I ca I made the same amount of money. It's, he's not accounting for that at all. I can't believe that oh, there's such a huge say, gap in the video. He said income adjusted dollars. Right. Is he actually saying that income well, so, adjusted, like taking into account the median like wage increase over the last thirty years? That there are, that's some complicated math for us to just much. take on faith. It is. It is. But there's, it there's two is. two it's primary video options effect. this video is taking. Because one would be that he's not including the fact that uh, overall like pay and income and stuff weren't uh, scaling with the overall uh, inflation. Or he's saying it absolutely did, that we were all paid more for our average jobs in line with inflation. Like that was just that was just happening Which as well. obviously, you know, like, all right, if you well, this, say so, pal. That's what I mean. It's like, who's going to believe this? It's like, <laughs> like you, I mean, I mean no. It's something that uh, I know it's kind of interesting to bring up, but I mean, it's something to throw into the mix. If you want to play online games on PlayStation or Xbox consoles or yep, Nintendo, you got to pay for that too. And that didn't exist in the 90s. The percentage so, of a paycheck that it took to just, buy... Oh, here. Just, just real quick. I uh, spent all night finding this information, okay? Wow. Yeah. Okay. If you don't mind, pull, don't pull pass that along graph to up. me. <laughs> here we go. So... This is tracking employee wages with net productivity from, from 1948 till 2018. And so I think basically what's happening here is the green line is what wages were at some fixed point. The blue line is how productive a worker is. And then the, uh, the red line is adjusted for inflation. And you can see like around 1999, there's like a slow but steady desync for the, from the three lines. And I think mm -hmm. this is what people are talking about when they're saying like, hey, you know, I haven't gotten a raise in 10 years or whatever it is, Yeah. but I'm, I am, you know, I'm doing more at work, but I'm not getting, I'm getting paid the same amount. And so with inflation, I'm actually getting paid less. It's that sort of thing. Right. And I think this is what people are talking about. Well, um, unless people are being offered full time and there's companies that are using things like, um, uh, having you work only 32 or 29 hours a week. So they don't have to give you health insurance or Microsoft does a thing called 18 and six where you will be contracted with them for 18 months, but then you have to not work for six months so that you're not, it's for like some tax things so that you're not really, oh, really sketchy of like a full time employee, but like, right. that's where yeah, you're talking about that... like underemployment as a match, yes. as, as opposed to simply unemployment. There's also underemployment. That's yes. a factor. Yeah. There's like a whole bunch of different variables that kind of push and pull on both sides of this equation, right? Because... And of course, how much of people's paycheck is going to their housing now relative to, you know, 20, 30 exactly. years ago, 40 oh, years ago? The variables there are, are so insane. There are so many factors like... that aren't being counted yeah. at all. Like, yeah, yes, that's... maybe maybe you could make the argument of like, well, you know, relatively the cost of buying a game is the same, except now you're paying 40% of your income every week to your mortgage or your rent, you know? It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inflation does not work uh, in perfect synchronization. Like, um, there are certain things that have gotten substantially more expensive since like the 60s exactly. and 70s, for example. Exactly. Like, housing, college have been like 10x, whereas yeah, other things maybe like... energy bill looking like, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's there's so many variables that that go into this, right? Because the the other argument on the other side of the equation is that the things that we buy are also better quality than the things that they were 50 years ago, 
for example. So like if you buy, if you bought, you know, a 30 inch TV in 1990, it would cost you $10,000. If you buy a 60 inch TV today, it's like $500 and it's a, it's a superior product in every, in every single, in every single metric. Right. So the things that we're buying are also different and often better than the things that we bought in the past. So it's not like a one-to-one -one comparison. Um, I know when it comes to houses, like I, I saw, I can't find it now, but I saw a graph where it's like comparing the size and quality of a house that was built in 1950 versus a house, a house built in 2024. And then mapping that difference onto the price of the house adjusted for inflation. And when you, when you, once you start like balancing all these variables, it, the, the cost, believe it or not, is actually a lot closer than people think it is because now you have, because houses are generally bigger, they have better insulation, they have more amenities in them. You have like smart houses and that costs money, whether, so whether you like it or not. Well, yeah. okay. So, wait, so, Cause like, like, there's a lot of different variables kind of all confounding in here. It's not, a, it's not an easy conversation to have. The thing about the, what, some of the things you just said, like even with the respect to TVs, it's like, yes, the technology by any technological metric when directly compared, ignoring the years would be worse, but like they are compared to the era of release, right? What tech is available and what you can do with it. Like that's gotta be the way the value is determined. Cause otherwise it would just be almost a pointless comparison. Cause I was going to say with houses, um, you will find that uh, safety regulations have made it so that like houses typically will have materials in them that are much safer or that they'll have ways of building them that are more efficient and everything. But I, I, I certainly found when I was uh, searching around that like you, newer builds are just weaker houses. Like they don't last as long. They're not mm -hmm. built with as solid material. Like you'll find, oh yeah, that house, that's one of the older builds. So you might be worried about asbestos in certain places, but you'll know the fucking wall could take a sledgehammer and it'll probably be okay. Meanwhile, your new house, don't lean on the walls too hard. You know, that sort of stuff can happen. <laughs> so yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It can, actually happens yeah. with certain older uh, woods that actually out over like 50, 100 years, they actually turned into almost like, they almost petrify into like a concrete. And so older houses in some cases are actually sought after because they're so goddamn sturdy because the wood has had time to harden. It's weird. Somebody was telling me about that. And I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. I mean, obviously there's keeping up with today's, uh, you know, code and everything like that. Old, some older houses aren't as good for like fire and things like that. But there are certain things that newer houses will just do the absolute bare minimum to, in order to, to meet the code. And, and you, you're not really going to have the longevity of some older houses. Yeah, that, that's all true too. With this mm -hmm. video is, um, it, how is this video going to like? If we assume that everything that he was saying is true, which <laughs> if if we, if we assume that everything he was saying is true, I wonder how he's going to address like, yeah, but how how can people feel like these things are the case? Why does it feel like games shouldn't be any more expensive because that would be ridiculous? You know, why does it why does it feel like it's difficult to spend money on video games now? I, I like, I'm curious how he's going to address that. Um. I, I, think know, he I feel like the explanation is pretty straightforward, right? It's like, well, when you think about all of the business models and everything, as well as just all of the other factors that may well be contributing to it in the broader economy, like, yeah, I, I wonder why people feel like games shouldn't be more expensive than yeah, they already all I, are. All I can sort of think of is if, if companies are making way more money than they used to, and they have all of these different methods of monetizing, then fuck, I should be paying less for the game up front. Fuck this paying more. Yes. Well, the, the, digital like thing, paying less. the digital thing instantly should like put an end to this conversation. Yeah. The amount of money that gets saved from digital sales compared to the kind of sales that like all of the middleman and, and manufacturing distribution and all of those costs overhead, like all of that just disappears when you're talking about or, or either disappears or is greatly reduced when talking about digital uh game sales. And that's not even talking about microtransactions. A lot cheaper to market stuff too now because you can just put up a cu couple of videos and use social media and yeah it takes a little bit of money to put together a trailer but you don't have to pay for you know super bowl ads or you know uh, tv uh, well, spots the thing or is, whatever is that like they, that they still do yeah uh, big but, companies still know, do i but, think the marketing yeah. budgets are still pretty high for these games you'll find like for call of duty um, yeah but you don't need yeah i mean it, it, that's why that's why double a you know so-called double a games are doing so well is because they're able to deliver a really good game without all the bloat like you can still deliver a really solid game that feels like a big triple a game but you don't have all that extra corporate marketing bloat that the other games do not as much yeah it looks pretty good it's got a you know they it forces them to sort of focus on having a good you know gameplay loop or a set of uh, set of mechanics 
that keep me coming back to play it. And yeah, I play those games way more than AAA games, but way more mm-hmm. time into games that are like indie or double A that have a more interesting foundation that everything is built around than this these these monstrosities that try to do 78 different things and have these sprawling massive things that I'm just like, ah, oh, just too much and it's all just watered down and weird and it's 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 too scatterbrained. Uh, this picture was uh, from James Mole, by the way. I was just like, this kind of shit does actually get me close to the, um, you know, the part in Team America where he's vomiting in the in the alley. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> get, get out of the street, you fucking bum! <laughs> get him up my street, you. He gave it I love that so much. <laughs> I, I like oh, the visuals nauseating. of the guys. The guys check going to pay for the game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh right. Well, I, 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 the point thing. that I was getting at is that it's it, this is this ha- this is a problem with like a thousand variables, and it's not just as simple as this guy's describing it in this video. Fuck no, yeah! It would be nice <laughs> to see his math. No, that's <laughs> how, that's, how for, yeah, that's for a future out. video. A game when you was think that he'd and tell us. Do so I have to pay for it? it? Do I have to Ooh, like yeah, go to his maybe. Patreon? Oh to, uh... God! Are you well? Do you have oh, yeah. the uh, do you have the silver, the gold, or the platinum mem- uh, season pass for extra credits? Mm. <laughs> yeah, and I, I wonder what that's what's for you. That's for your benefit. Maybe, it, maybe it's on his Nebula. Ugh. Yeah, I do wonder with the <laughs> subscription package whether it's really month to month or they're expecting you to pay for a full year in advance. And they're just saying uh, this is what it's going to cost you per month. Well, it's cheap if you right. subscribe for the whole year. It's like why? It's this. It's just a subscription. What? What do you mean? Why would it be yeah. cheap? Mm-hmm. The percentage of a paycheck that it took to buy a game was at an all-time low. Now we don't have great data for the last couple of years, but even though it looks like, oh, d- Wait, what? well, d- we, I don't have any data, bro. What? I thought you researched <laughs> it all night. Yeah. All night, he couldn't come up with any data for the past few years, or at least not sufficient. Ugh. I hate to say it, but can we go back like 30 seconds? We can do that, but no. you get the blame from, from anyone in chat who's mad. <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. I was like an hour ago. Ace to monetize! Oh god, we were <laughs> They were yeah. slinging pre-orders, they were slinging collector's editions, they were slinging Man, DLC... This, this, they were slinging pre-orders, they, they were so slinging excited. collector's oh, editions! So Why, oh, yeah, he sounds so excited and jovial <laughs> and about yeah. them finding he might as well be to selling it. God damn! He's, okay, and I'm so like, like, oh, he's trying I to just say hate it, like, you. He's trying to say it like it's on, like, the publishers are excited to monetize the stuff this way but yeah this is like the most excited he's been this entire video <laughs> so it's weird that like he wasn't even this excited when he was talking about how they were going to draw like sonic the hedgehog <laughs> it's just weird i, need, I want sonic yeah, back it's like we have i have an obligation to draw video game shit whatever let's talk about corporate monetization Ooh. Ooh, gamers should be paying more really on and on and on so for years more we didn't cross that feared 70 dollars plateau Meaning that by 2020, games were almost half of the price they were in the 90s. Oh, thank you, incoming... corporations. Thank you. Thank also, you so I mean, much. so gracious. I know this so is... gracious. Thank you so much. I know this is part of his point, but like, we did cross it, really. Because like, all of those things making games incomplete, meaning that you had to pay more to have it be complete. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a, we're, we're, yeah. we're kind of semantics are weighing around here. Because he sees it as like a, a plus, like a thank goodness we didn't cross it. It's like, but we did. That's kind of the point of all that. Like, yeah, when, when there's some the controversies the uh, for games where it was like, oh, the game came out, and then it's like, wait, uh, people have hacked into the code and they can they can see blocked off content. It's like, yeah, you can't oh, have yeah, that um, until later. Mass Effect 3's the Javik mm-hmm, DLC. Yes. I remember uh, well, there was a Capcom fighting game where they found out that like six to eight different characters were on the disc, but were blocked off for uh, purchasable well, DLC. Like, yeah, it was it's really bad when they're like, game crazy. is complete. We're going to make some more stuff for you to buy later. And it's like, it's already there. What do you mean? Why are you doing this? Yeah, like it, at least if you did stuff add after the fact, but we know it for a fact a lot of this stuff is already there. They just chop it off and sell it later. Mm. God, I remember when like those controversies were first happening. And at this point, that's yeah. just like nobody cares because it's gotten so much worse adjusted dollars the percentage of a paycheck that it took to buy a game was at an all-time low now we don't have great but was was like in the 90s or was like today are you saying in 2020 that it was at an all-time low and then on this one it's like well now we don't know you know for the last couple of years it's harder to get information 
I don't because, know how you relevant. say that broadly. I, like, I want to see the data now for sure. Like, how did you? I mean, I feel that? like it's got to be relevant, right? Yeah. Surely, like the, the last few years have potentially entailed massive changes in terms of this conversation about like how much it's worth relative to people's paychecks and inflation and all of these things. The last few years yeah, feel particularly he, relevant. He used the words "income adjusted," so I assume that he's factoring in changes to people's paychecks I, and... he has to right surely he would have that... to have data great data well, for the last couple of years but even though it looks like prices have begun to creep up a bit and even with 70 dollars finally being the i'm sorry i was just amused by begun to creep up a bit <laughs> just, a bit. Yeah. just a bit just jumped up ten dollars yeah standard price point for a triple-a game in 2024 again with inflation what, what is that character who is he he is the inflation <laughs> man against the inflation <laughs> arrow. Oh, that's john capitalism yeah, it's going up <laughs> Ooh, yeah. oh he's stroking it too he's stroking it yep. oh, and <laughs> a good grip double there. handing that arrow like it's a dick it's so weird. <laughs> oh yeah well you know sometimes they're big you know long enough to wear yeah you know. he's just, look at that expression <laughs> he's just so happy Making it rain. oh the coins oh, are yeah, all I over love, him i yeah. love me a good two-hand so happy. So happy so literal money shot he is inflation <laughs> man and with inflation, we're still willing to bet we're paying the least we ever have, or just very, very close. I mean, at oh, most, the oh, $70 okay. price point. So in all of that research, you don't actually know now whether or not we're paying, like, today. <laughs> well, I was going to say, whether we're actually paying whatever conclusion he, didn't, he can reach, oh, he doesn't yeah. have data for the last oh, few years. Oh, no, I think I think the asterisk is they're probably cheaper, but we don't know right now because we didn't do the but research. But he said, the like, six fucking times in the intro that he knew. Oh, yeah, because yeah. the plan oh, is at this is, point, like, this don't make the fucking video, because you don't know. I figured, that, I figured the asterisk was going to be, yeah, but when you factor in microtransactions and DLC and all that, then that makes it more complicated. No, but I'm wondering if it actually is. It's cheaper asterisk, because I don't know for the last few years. Like, I don't it, know what the data is for the last few years. Man, what, what a gap in your fucking game. point to be like, <laughs> I'm sure it's cheaper than it's ever been. Can't be too sure, because I have no data for the past few years. <laughs> like, the, wait, asterisk, the asterisk is just I that he's retarded. I just, yeah. The asterisk what... is, I don't know why we made this video. I just have to wonder what he thinks this is worth, when you just, like, burst into the room, assert a bunch of things to be the case, and then be like, right, I've proved it, yes, there we have it. <laughs> My job the is done. Yeah. They've never yeah. been. Next time I, I burst into the room, stuff. I might have some relevant information. You like, can this hope. Is like, Maybe. This is like a Thor Stress Me Bro video, right? <laughs> yeah. Point is basically an adjustment back to 20 teens levels, but I digress, because no matter what, it still doesn't feel that way, right? All right, explain it's it to us, right. buddy. Why does it not yeah. feel that yeah. way? Why does it feel that way? It right, feels like yeah. games are so expensive now. Why is that? Look, the why? truth is, it's I such don't a have mystery. an empirical answer. The, uh, the truth is, I don't have an empirical have an answer. <laughs> are you retarded? Are you blind? Oh God, could there be this any is your possible reasons you guys could... Hmm. Hmm. Well, dude, look Maybe at this. Look at the way this is portrayed. Time. It's like the scientists, like, why do you feel this way, gamer? What is wrong with you? If only gamers <laughs> would tell us how they feel on the internet. If only I they would. Figure it out. I, I have no idea why. No amount. Like no amount of nightly research could reveal the answer to this question. It's just impossible. Well, your feelings are wrong. How I don't like them. them. Because there's You're, just you, not a lot of great data out there on feelings, but I do. The, the price of games. That's, it's, that's the not the data you'd be oh, collecting. Wait, there's tons up. of data on feelings. That's what fucking most there's of tons psychology of data is. Data why people feel things. <laughs> I assume that this is like a response to Twitter discourse. So, how, yeah, how yeah. recent is this video? It's this is his most recent ago. video. It's yeah. Okay. Ago, yeah. I, so I mean, like, this is a response to discourse that was happening fairly recently. So he knows that like Twitter exists, right? You like I assume this is where, find... where he's scraping this from. Like you can find one person to explain the... their feelings. They were all just going. Blah, 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 blah. I just don't think this guy's even remotely trustworthy in the handling of statistics. After that, so at this point, even if he was to present numbers, I'm not even like trusting that he would be able to interpret them in such a way that. Yeah. He's yeah. Anything no, he's cool. leaving numbers out that's, on purpose. That's that's what is making me like. It's one thing for the statistics to exist, but do you even understand what they mean? Yes. I wouldn't trust him with fucking Lego at this point. This guy's like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> you have some conjectures. First off, it's just expectations, right? 
we've managed. Yeah, yeah, we're just expecting our way to. <laughs> we're like expecting gaslighting ourselves. A decent yeah, it's, fucking game for are decent entitled. price. All over again. Uh, no, it's like it's I this fucking video is retarded because it's like. The, the things he said, like, we, we took out features so that the game is, the, the price of the game is maintained at, at $50 or whatever the fuck. Shouldn't that be, like, an argument wonder... against what he's saying? Yeah. Right? The, yeah, it's like, why, are, why do gamers wonder why they feel like they're being ripped off as he lists reasons of, like, <laughs> things that were taken out of the game? <laughs> I yeah, don't think so he thinks that. Cheaper. That's the thing. The impression yeah, I got with the um, the expansions, time. DLCs, and microtransactions, I think he exclusively believes those to be, like, additional things. Like, look at the extra stuff they created for us. Look like, at how they well, had the visuals of them cutting shit it, out. It, exactly. it did seem like, look at look at um all of the ways that these benevolent companies have managed to keep the price down for you gamers. That's, that's like, how it felt to me. Yeah. Gosh to hover at it. the $60 price point for so long that it feels like the price of a video game, and instead of creeping up a dollar each year for a decade, we're hitting that new jump all at once, leading us to really notice. Second, is that... Uh, no, we're noticing We're noticing it alongside of all of the other monetization shenanigans that have been happening. But he's this already stated, yet too. yet another thing. Yeah. Like, like, how could you bring it up and then not realize that would play into the feelings of people have about all of this? Like, oh, we exactly. jumped up $10 while also introducing every monetizable fucking format that's ever been known to any creative mind. Each of these companies probably has a whole board of people designed to find new ways to monetize. That's like their whole job. Absolutely. Yeah, there are yeah. people that do that. Absolutely. At the end of the day, that's all they want to do. Mm -hmm. They want to find new yeah, and like... more and better ways to gr gain money out of this thing that appears to be lucrative. Once upon a time, yeah. it was make good game, make profit. Now it's like, can we skip the game part? We, how do we get to the profit part? What's the best way to just get there? Let's just get there. I mean, yeah. to your point, Marler, oh. that I, I, I can't say I'm an expert in this, but the one time I was involved in a, in a pitch meeting for a game, um, the second or third interview with the developer, the publisher, they asked us for a DLC plan, like for a monetization plan. So oh, like before the game was even in development, oh, they were misery. like, hey, so yeah, <laughs> so that absolutely oh is God. happening. How do these other so, how do these other entire industries survive? Like how how do how do how do companies just make like microwaves? And ovens without and DLC, <laughs> mattresses, without DLC yeah. plans, and season passes. How, well, that's how is it that the rest of the entirety of all of the economy seems to be able to focus on just selling you something and you buy it, and that's that transaction um, complete? Rags, the black pillars, it's going that way too. <laughs> well, yeah, microwave totally DLCs. Are. Like you, you, you buy your, you buy your Tesla. You got to pay an extra fee to like unlock the heated seats or whatever. <laughs> in in the future, every single thing you own will actually be. Just oh, you're not wrong. You rent like license to. Um, yeah, it's going to be even your doorbell, yeah, I mean, right? It has a try. subscription service. I'm not joking about that one. Ring ring like to yeah. do that. Um, the yes, that's that's where everything will trend because it's more money on the table and people, if you do it incrementally, will be willing to pay it, which fucking sucks. It's more money and it's you consistent will, money. That's the main. You thing will own nothing and be it. happy. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. there are uh, treadmills well, we'll and their printers that don't work until you subscribe to their plans. It's it's Ugh. gotten insane. Yeah. Everything's the same as now. Yeah, mm -hmm. printers. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so for me, that, that is what John Radoff said earlier, right? It's like, it's consistent money in, but he, he claims that they need it to do the job, not that they want it because well, they no, like they money. they want it. That's it. Yeah, they want it. So it's, very bad. It's, yeah. They want yeah. it. Civilization got to this point somehow. Well, and like, there's so few uh, developers who are going to try and push against it, because like, uh, it reminds me of um, God of War 2018, right? No DLCs, no microtransactions, very long campaign, AAA, and hyper successful and then Ragnarok comes out they have a DLC but uh, I'd have to recheck this but I'm pretty sure it only happened because they wanted it to be a part of the main game they didn't have enough time to finish it it came out and it was free like yep they're trying <laughs> they're like we're not going to do this and you know they had that conversation they were like we should charge for this and then someone was like I don't think we should like I, I feel like the customer's going to be fucking mad at us if we do that and like w there could be a very pragmatic sort of a bean counting sort of argument for that like in the long run we'll be worse off because our reputation will be worth uh worse like goodwill mm -hmm. as has been mentioned in chat it goes a long fucking way but there might be enough math someday that someone says you know what fuck that we tried but we're in an industry filled with predatory uh 
you know, approaches. Let's just indulge a little bit. We'll dip our toe in the. Uh... I mean, remember how much uh, goodwill uh, Blizzard used to have? Boy, uh, they uh, just they ignored oh Diablo Three's bullshit schemes for a long time, but eventually their goodwill ran out. Do you yep. see how far they were on par with projects? They were. See how far CD Projekt got on their uh, goodwill alone, like by yeah, cultivating CD their, Red, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. their identity as like the industry nice guys, you know, the ones who yeah. aren't going to do any of this yeah. kind of stuff. And mm. then Cyberpunk yeah. happened. Whoops. Yeah. Mm. So they've been having to claw back their reputation slowly but surely over the years since then. And even they then, haven't they haven't had. The they yeah, it still won't be the same. And they've had to try and work their ass off to make that game, you know, into something good. I mean, there, maybe, there is a maybe business a minute model. Ago. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just giving an example of a. You can actually make a business model that you just make a good game and continue to improve that game, and it will continue to sell copies because of that. A great example is No Man's Sky. I am looking at Steam. There is not an a, any available way, at least through the Steam interface, to pay more money than just the base game. But that game no, has gotten not. like twenty also, um... or so exp free expansions or something like that. And it's it's up to like two hundred and twenty six thousand reviews. Like. The game continues to sell and it continues to get reviews, but they do not charge extra money for the game. So that's and it's, like... it's funded their ability to make a, a new game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's an exception. And they, they required, you know, I think they had help at the beginning, but they're still self-published. So, I mean, it worked out for them somehow. Yeah. Remember, the industry was full of AAA development studios and publishers that would just make a game, sell it to everyone and collect money. And that was just how the industry was. This idea that it can't go back to that. No, we, we can't do that. It's, like, it's, it's just a lie that they want to perpetuate. Or that I guess some people are pushing. Extra credits is this idea of, what, no, we can go back. We literally just could go back to doing that. By the way, so, this, uh, um, this image. But, is... No, it's entitled gamers. This image ah, is the first in the whole video where I'm kind of like, I like it for the fact of it capturing just the fucking pain of modern gaming in a lot of ways. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, at, look at it. It's kind of perfect. It's like, exit tutorial, welcome to the shop, and then the absolute... <laughs> what I think they failed to capture was that it goes 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000, then by the time you hit the dollar amounts, we're looking at, like, fucking 299.99 or something. You're like, how? <laughs> how is it, like, three <laughs> times the cost of the fucking game, even though that's too much already as well? And it's Think usually, about uh, like, the impact that this has on the player psychology as well, when like a game is constantly emphasizing how little you have, how there's always more that you could have. I mean, how the hell they... are you going to make people feel like they bought a game that's worth it when it's constantly reminding them that there's stuff that they don't have that they could have if they spent more money? Yeah, check out this sick skin you could be getting. Hey, there's yeah, a tier exactly. for there's a ten dollar oh, one. You could get five hundred right? gems. Oh, this skin is five oh five. Oh, yeah, just, oh, sure. yeah, just buy an extra pack. Paid, uh, gems. All this money, but hey, there's a little more. And it's it's that emphasis on the lack of something that's like, yeah, of course that's going to have a detrimental effect on the psychology towards these games when really it's baked into the business model to constantly emphasize what you're missing out on because you didn't pay more money. So of course it feels like games are more expensive well, and, on top of all of the other factors that are in, uh, at play. So gross as well, it's like at... infinitely pilfering other franchises too, to be like, oh you, yeah, this, this skin here is locked off. Which skin is it for the Star Wars game? Oh, Darth Vader. Like, you fuckers. I didn't, like, you, <laughs> who, who told you? Like, you're the vultures behind the coding, but like, who told you as a Star Wars fan? I guess everyone would know it. It's just, you know what I mean? They could do it with everything. Any niche IP, they'll lock behind that... Closed doors. Dude, remember the... how uh, Battlefront 2's monetization was so bad that it killed an entire business practice of loot boxes? Temporarily. <laughs> they It was a momentary you, delay God. to a sidestep to a better way of making money, which is a battle pass. And now they're making yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, well, they're I'm always just both. trying to slither in. That's all it is, every time. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, they'll like find that. a way to circumvent the law, whatever gets introduced. Yeah. I, I like, think they, they really. I think they really got noticed when it started invading RPGs because RPGs are traditionally single player games and they shouldn't really be touched by that kind of stuff. But the biggest one that people always reference to is the the five dollar horse armor for for yeah, the horse armor. which was just well, was really stupid. But I, the ones that stand out to me also are ones like, for example, I want to say it was Dragon Age Origins. They had a, an actual location in the actual game world you could you could visit. And you go up to this tower and you try to open the door. It's like, hey, sorry, you need to download, you need to buy this DLC to be able to access this area. And for that to be in a single player, like immersive RPG has got to be, it just so, it just really I think, stings. I think I remember Dragon Age Origins, there was a camp 
and there was part of the camp that you needed DLC to interact with. Was it the camp or the tower? It might have been both. I think actually. you talked to it was somebody because you were going it was EA, someplace. So it was probably you had both. To go, but... You had to go somewhere. I think there was a guy in camp, and it's like we can go to the such and such place. But it was like DLC, and that was how they like explained how you got to the DLC space. Some guy that um, you talked to. Actually, I just time ago. googled the know your meme, so I just realized we are oldies. So I don't know how many people in chat are familiar with the uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 situation, but a uh, quick read so I can get full context, right? You got, on November 11th, Reddit of the Hotter Potatoes submitted a spreadsheet revealing it would take 40 hours to unlock various heroes in the upcoming game Star Wars Battlefront 2. In response to the post, the official EA Community Team Reddit account replied that acquiring heroes through credits was intended to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment, pride and accomplishment. which has been <laughs> memed oh, into yeah. history. Okay. Well, well, that, that was like use... one of the most downvoted uh, yes. Reddit things Historically, ever, Historically, right? yeah. one of the most downvoted comments in history. Um, <laughs> all of the they think. And then that, like, that spokesperson for EA going up to court and calling loot boxes surprise mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> surprise mechanics fear flashes god the fucking <laughs> surprise fear oh, flashes oh, um, surprise mechanics on November 12th 2017 Redditor MBMM Maverick submitted a post to Battlefront titled seriously I paid $80 to have Vader locked within 24 hours the post gained over 70,000 points in the comment section the EA community team reddit account responded to the complaint shown below over the next day the comment received a score of negative 400,000 points becoming the Holy most downloaded shit. comment in reddit history which it reads because it wasn't just that it was uh, the intended to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes as for cost we selected initial values based upon data for the open beta and other adjustments made to milestone rewards before launch among other things, we're looking at average per player credit earn rates on a daily basis and we'll be making constant adjustments to ensure players have challenges that are compelling, rewarding, and of course attainable via gameplay. We appreciate the candid feedback and passion the community has put forth around the current topics on Reddit, our forums, and across numerous social media outlets. Our team will continue to make changes and monitor community feedback and update everyone as soon as we can and as often as we can. <laughs> Unfucking believable <laughs> A few years later, they uh, released a version of the game um, that just ended all of its microtransaction stuff. So none of it's in the game anymore either. Yeah, it's that's a shame because. The... Sorry again. No, no, no. That's fine. No, just the yeah, Battlefield Battlefront Two is actually really good once they take out all that stuff out. Dice makes good, used to make really good shooters. So yeah, I, I used to play it a lot, and and they actually took out any way to pay for those things. You just had to grind for it. It's still pretty grindy, but at least you couldn't bypass that with paying for it i yeah, hate like, the implication like that what they're hours. doing they think is fine yeah and then it's like oh 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 it's not it for you. fine sorry they're oops for you. thank you for our community <laughs> well, we had for no like, idea <laughs> for helping us error <laughs> like yeah for helping us adjust our trajectory but it's like they knew it's they like no they're all greedy we're towing the water just see what you'll accept because right. every yes, one of exactly. these extra credit style videos needs to come with a big caveat on the bookends that say you the, the, you, you're ultimately this is a bottom up problem. They sell you this shit because you buy it. Yeah. If you didn't buy it, they wouldn't put it in there. Oh, but I appreciate you buy it. Any and all attempts from the top down to actually like from devs who recognize this because they used to fucking play games and were a part of like the industry from an audience member in a sense. So they're like, oh, I don't want to do that because I know how it feels. Like I appreciate every one of them. The hell and back but yes you're right we need to and that's what the goal was to try and raise awareness and be like don't buy this shit because it's like really bad for you as well as everyone else not mm -hmm. to completely uh shit all over assassin's creed but i'm gonna do it again um a cup like a year or so ago uh there was a little controversy that when people would open up their single player game of assassin's creed mirage they'd sometimes get a pop-up to buy dlc like it just like trying to open Ugh. up their map, basically, yeah. like the inventory in the map. They just get this pop up, and they're like, "Oh, I'm sorry, that was a uh, a, a technical error." Yeah, it was a technical error. We didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so they took it out. <laughs> it was an error, all right. What kind of error would cause that? You know, mm, like, uh, what kind of error, error does graphic design, like you know, professionally Whoops, you designs graphic texture. ads? Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of an episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza has sex with the cleaning lady on his desk and he gets in trouble for it. And he's like, Should I not have done that? Was that not okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I shall, I'll think about that next time. So, the, so, so Mahler, you had, you had on screen the picture of that shop on for so long. It actually uh, 
brought back a core memory I want to share with you real quick. <gasps> so I was back at my hometown maybe a few years ago, right? And you know how it is when you go back home, you're kind of off the grid a bit. So you, you see like relatives and family members. And so I was hanging out with like a, a nine-year-old cousin or something. So I had nothing else to fucking do while I was there. And they were, and they were playing like um, uh, an SNES game. It was this game. It was this Mickey Mouse game, right? And there's a shop in it. And I played this game when I was a kid. So I was like, oh, this is neat. You know, seeing a kid go back and play games that I played when I was a kid. And she was like, I probably shouldn't buy anything in the general store. My mom doesn't like it when I buy things in games. And I'm like, this just costs coins in the game, right? And she's like, it doesn't cost money. I'm just like, no. That's, that you just sucks, get coins. Man. In... That <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, in, in this game, you just get, you just grind money on the enemies and then spend it for upgrades in the general store. And she's like, it doesn't cost real money. Damn. <laughs> That's no. so sad, man. Yeah. Yeah, because every Christ. game has like an abstracted currency. So, like, and they try to slip it into the, the game. Real and... and fake money. Yeah, to be like, it's all of the funny kingdom gems to spend on all kinds of wacky fantasy items and some dollar counts here, just so you know. <laughs> so it also it also directly informs game design because they purposely uh, design a game to be more tedious in order to, to incentivize paying for shortcuts. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so it makes all these like 100 hour games that are so fucking tedious to get through when you just want to oh, get dude. through to like the more fun part content, you know, the you, meme you, of you like be art. You can be artfully subtle with that. You know, just like yeah. perfectly riding the line where the, nobody's going to complain, but you can get away with it. Mobile games where they're like, you know, here's the training level, here's the maximum training, and then you get to fight the boss. And then it's like, okay, back to training levels. If you want to skip them, though, you can just pay a quick dollar here. We'll get you through them quickly. It's like, sorry, oh I thought those were necessary <laughs> for the fucking game. I didn't realize you're just wasting my fucking time. But of course, they try to do it so... <laughs> subtly that they're like whoa 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 like if the dev was there, be like no 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 wait no if you feel you're ready you know sorry I, that we actually optimized this through player data and reactions according to you know a bunch of words until you eventually have them just say like fuck you give me a wallet <laughs> and you're like excuse me like... <laughs> speaking of yeah. wasting our time <laughs> oh i have a non-time waster side quest there's no si side comment side this time quest right. okay. side quest yeah okay sorry um so Earlier in the video, he said, there's just not enough data to know how much, uh, you know, what percentage of a person's paycheck the average game cost at the time. We just don't know that, despite spending all night looking it up. It took me about, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it took me about 20 minutes. So, all night? and I couldn't, I couldn't find a one for one, <laughs> but you can pretty easily kind of find the two data points and then, you know, figure it out because yeah, you have a brain. Yeah, reasonably. Yeah. So, we do have, here, I'll post these in the chat if you want to look at them. We do have the average inflation adjusted prices for top end video games. You can see that like the prices went down after we switched to disc and then kind of remained around the seventy dollar mark and a little bit lower. And then you also have it's easy to find both of these figures. You have um how how much money you make adjusted for inflation. And so there's your two figures, right? And you can just kind of be like, well, if we use our brains and take these two data sets and think about how much did a video game cost per percentage of my paycheck? We can probably see if you look at them, if you look at the two of them, around maybe in, from the jump to cartridge to disc, it actually went down, but it's been about the same since since like two thousand. And that's also uh, considering uh, uh, first day MSRP. Um, games used to actually get lowered in price quite quite rapidly. They didn't used to be the, you know, forever $60 kind of Nintendo thing that they have nowadays. Like games used to be, used to be able to get games for like 40 bucks pretty regularly if you wait, if you wait a little bit. And games had like a longer legs, it seemed like. Like you could get the really good games a few years uh, later for like a decent price. So it wasn't like we were uh, stuck at buying a game for, uh, I never, I don't think my, my parents could ever afford like a $100 game. So we, we definitely didn't buy, buy them at full price. So that's also I mean, another this factor. Is there's a fair number of sales nowadays too, though. I mean, there's sales yeah, all over the sure. place. You know, when you log into a shop. But it basically, it seems like if we're if we're going to just say, you know, discs onwards, because cartridges were were legitimately more expensive to make, discs onward, the the price of games adjusted for inflation and also as a component of your paycheck has remained relatively consistent, um, which just means that if if it's remained relatively consistent, and then the manufacturing cost of the game has remained relatively consistent and it should have um 
because it, 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 it you know the games are more complicated, but also it's easier to make them because you have better technology. If all this, if it all kind of evens out, then they don't really need the extra money coming in from all these shops and DLCs and everything else. So it does just seem to boil down to greed that that we, we are slowly. More money. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they are they are boiling the frog in this and slowly raising prices and using these things as an, as excuses. Yeah, just but if, if finding the, data, the edges of all the monetization methods, seeing where people yeah. are willing to go before cracking. Yeah, and if, right. if yeah. they want to yeah. make more money, which they're like, yeah, I want to make more money too, and they were giving me shit that was worth the price, and I felt like I was always getting a good deal, and games were getting consistently way better across the board, things were way better value, and games were just full of amazing content and great details and polish and stuff, yeah, I'd, I'd pay more money, and I'd feel fine. But I feel yes. like a lot yes. of shit is just, yeah, we're just going to sell you white for 20 bucks. And we're like, wait a second, but... But white was in last when, game because it came with a game. Yeah. How come white costs money now? And it just feels like when because the industry was starting up and getting a lot of traction, it was dependent on proving itself. So you had to make something worthwhile as like an artistic art form, sort of like you had to actually make a good thing and then impress people and it spreads around. They weren't like monetizing like crazy back then because there wasn't as much faith in the gaming industry. Gaming's still trying to earn its like relevance despite the fact that it's dominating as an industry. Like in terms of uh, as an artistic outlet, it's 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 kind of insane to think that it still hasn't fully achieved that yet. In the same way that film didn't fully achieve it for a long time by comparison to, you know, books or um, prestige elements of like maybe theater and stuff like that. It's just as an art form, when it's the art artistry that goes into games now is absolutely fucking nuts. But that yeah, it just feels like because one of the things that has to be factored in here that we feel like we're in a historically bad age for games releasing unfinished. Yeah, it's yeah. got to factor in. It and, has um, to. I think, and, in terms of the artistic conversation, I think that's just a more general trend of how mass media works. Well, it's the, kind of like, what I'm saying. Artists, is it explains well, the lack of monetization earlier. The earlier you go, because I don't think it was mm -hmm. taken as seriously. It just wasn't. Right, right. I, I just know, in a more general sense, like art is one of those things that high status people use to signal that they're high status. And so, if there is an art form that is like um, it has mass appeal is generally not viewed as high status for that reason alone just another factor to this is that um generally you can kind of get away with charging more for a more niche audience so like a good example is if you get into like crusader Fetish kings artists. for example you can kind of see that they really heavily monetize that they're relatively niche audience um compared to something like more mainstream like you know i don't know call of duty or whatever right not as many people play uh, Crusader Kings as Call of Duty, but because they these guys want all this new content, the developers have kind of made the trade like, okay, well, if you you guys want a lot of more content for a relatively small audience, we'll charge you more, right? But the scope of video gamers uh, compared to like the 90s to now is tremendous. Like I want to say, I believe Final Fantasy VII was the best-selling game on the PlayStation for a long time. That sold, I think, in total about 10 million, according to this, about 10 million copies. GTA 5 sold 200 million copies. So the the scale of like what's considered the best selling game the world is, is, is connected. Changed quite a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, the, past the couple percentage decades. of the population that is like a gamer and will buy yeah. video games has increased so much and it takes you the same amount of money money <laughs> to like distribute that game digitally that you're just it's literally just amazing if you're, you know, if you're publishing a game you can digitally distribute a product and just there's just way more people who are ready to buy it. You don't have to ship extra copies. You don't have to make cases, print cases. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, on the note of yeah, uh, niche, because you're right completely. I was just, you reminded me of, um, I, I knew it was Train Simulator, but it's, there's a couple of other ones, but right, like you go to the Train Simulator 4, it's like that's the DLCs or at least add ons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God. What God. the fuck? Why? Yeah, in $886. Yeah, they basically assume that every player is a whale and they are willing to buy all these expensive DLCs. But I mean, they must they must like it because they, they continue to make those games. So, yeah, I, well, hey, I don't know at least about it. At least Train Simulator World, World 4 compatible Spirit of Stream Liverpool Lime Street Crew Root add on is 60% <laughs> off. What a savings! Yeah, yeah the the physical printing of games. I mean, to consumers, it's sort of a nostalgic, respectable thing. But to companies, it's simply a delivery mechanism. And now that the internet is here, you know, the digital 
delivery is you know that works so let's just do yeah. that and then we don't have well, to print the disc it's that and it also provides them with a bit more power because they can turn around in 10 years and say yeah you don't own it anymore buy it again on the new platform fuck you yeah mm -hmm. That's actually a huge contributor why GTA sold so much is that they released it in 2013 on the consoles. They released it in 2014 on the on next PC. gen consoles and then 2015 on PCs. They triple dipped some people. So it, mm. that's pretty well, sneaky, they but they still made a lot of money. Um, they re-released it again for ninth gen. All right. Yeah. Well. Oh, boy. Yeah. I, oh, the, the purpose of that of that little side tangent was basically to show that you could get this data pretty quickly if you wanted to actually put the data. They put in, in a whole video. night's work, Dev. Damn you! <laughs> Man had you, coffee in his you, sky you can castle. see, you you could actually see the numbers and take a look at these two charts and and realize that after the cartridges went the way of the dodo, games have remained roughly the same price compared to your average paycheck. And so all of this stuff being added on top of it, the increased prices, the shops. All of it is just them making more money. But Leading us to entitled. <laughs> Not the really company. No. no, 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 no. Second is that none of the new ways to monetize are going away with this price hike. Look, if a publisher said oh, to us, go. our oh. game's got a $70 sticker price, but there's no in-game purchases and all the DLC is free. I'm betting people would be a lot more accepting. But in Well, yeah. they were with Hogwarts oh, Legacy. Like they, mm -hmm. There are several examples mm -hmm. of this being more acceptable, um, but well, like, even something like Starfield, it's just well, um, worth every penny. It's it's something that people have talked about over time, like you know, like um, free to play games. Is like people are much more accepting of monetization stuff being in them because you're like, well, I get the main game for free, so I get it. I understand. That's that's chill. Um, it, it is a balance of. It's funny because you have that thing about feelings. It's like it really is down to that a lot of the time with the vast amount of gamers that just like we just want a sense of it being fair. But the thing is, you can do any individual like it. What well, any individual microtransaction is not treated all the same. Like if you pay, you know, ten dollars and you get an amazing skin complete with all new animations for a game like League of Legends, for example, versus you pay ten dollars and you get an earring, you're like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm feeling the fairness difference there. And then, of course, if you pay $5 and you get a whole set of new maps, you're like, whoa. This, uh, it just gives a different sense of what's um, what's happening. It's down to each individual oh, yeah. game and dev, depending on just how much they can nickel and dime. Or, God forbid, they have people who are like, we think this is fair. We think that we should charge this much for it because this is how much extra work it costs and we want to be able to make more in future. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just that... Like, I, Stardew Valley is $15. The whole game is 15 bucks, And it's got an e extremely extensive modding scene. And you'll go into some games, and it'll be like, yeah, 20 bucks for a skin for a gun. And people will just buy it. People will be like, you know what? I want to get this $20 skin for this one gun in this game. And I'm like, man, because it, it's... But that's just, I guess, normal to some people. You know, some people are so tied to singular games... And they just feel like the, they need to have it when entire games are that whole price and then some. Nuts to me that the, it's shifted. You know, like the perception of games and value has shifted that much. Yeah. Do you think he didn't bring up Hogwarts Legacy as an example of them listing a game for $70 with we no know DLC why as being successful? Didn't. Yeah, do I even have to... Do we even have to we finish know. that sentiment? <laughs> hey, man, or you, like, can, you can be off to draw Harry Potter, okay? <laughs> or, or, you know, any of the single-player games that didn't have DLCs and were just wildly successful, you know, like Baldur's Gate, Tears of the Kingdom, Stellar Blade, pick yeah. one. Right. Well, it has to specifically be a game that retailed for $70 for this, Th for this example those... to work. I don't think... Didn't... I think Baldur's Gate 3 was 60 I'm not sure about Tears of the Kingdom. Let me see. Tears of the Kingdom up their price by like ten dollars relative to like, I mean, I got I'm Canadian and you know games are typically seventy nine ninety nine and and uh, Tears of the Kingdom is eighty nine ninety nine and Nintendo is just like we feel like this is appropriate because of the with the amount that we're pouring into the game and I was like you know what I'll pay it because I'm I feel like I'm gonna get a lot out of this game so whatever there are, there are games it was worth it was worth it. You pay the base. It was price. seventy, though. By the way, I looked it up. In America, it was seventy. Um, because re yeah, we haven't talked about replayability as well. If there are games that have excessive replayability, you can buy it for the price it was at, and then eventually be like, I don't mind more money going toward this thing in one way or another, just because of how much fun it's given me. You know, 
which is nice mm -hmm. as an experience rarely happens but you know yeah no i, I did that with um freaking one of the best games ever it failed catastrophically was uh titanfall 2 that was a great game i bought that i think on pc and and on console and i ended up buying like extra dlcs and stuff even though they haven't touched the game really for years i felt like i should support it just in case somebody was looking at the accounts one day and said hey you know what maybe we should make a sequel or something they're still making money but mm -hmm. yeah a, a great game a, a great business model which is super super risky but i find it incredible that they're able to hold it up as um Path of Exile, that's still a free-to-play game. Like, there's no no uh, gameplay modification, uh, monetization at all. Like, the entire game's free, but they have, like, cool little mods to make your pets look different or armor or whatever. And just, like, if you want to support us, give us money and we can make you look, your guy look pretty dope. But if you don't want to, then that's fine as well. It's dead. The yeah. so oh, here, just real quick. There, here's the reason that, I mean, we all know why this is happening, but here's the data, okay? <gasps> Here's some data. More data. This is, this is growth from 2017 to projected 2026. All right. You see, um, this, this is specifically growth, right? So PC games will grow 65%. Console games, 32%. Integrated ads. This is their the revenue source. I mean, 38.2%. And then social and casual games, 258%. So what you probably have is a whole bunch of these... Um, these games that are PC games or console games, they're not casual games. They're going to start, they're going to start adopting these more casual monetization schemes because they see the growth and they want to say, well, Hey man, it's not a phone game, but can we make this work with this adventure game or this RPG? Can we, can we just shoe shoehorn in a store somewhere? Cause I mean, people, as you said, regs, people are fucking buying it and you can see they're buying it right here with the numbers. What, on this graph is the term social casual sort of interchange interchangeable with mobile. Like if the other ones are PC and console, like I'm just kind of uh, confused. Well, it, it defines like... them both here. Let's see. Social gaming means playing interactive video games through social media or mobile apps. Casual gaming means playing easy to learn games for short and simple sessions. Okay. Yeah, it kind of treats like Facebook um, and not the Facebook games are much of a thing anymore, but like any sort of online, uh, easy, like casual, browser -based mobile shit? thing. Yeah, browser based. Yeah. Oh, do, you, mobile, do you guys know that like that? YouTube has their own games now? Have you seen this? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so like, what? Playable, I think playables. on the homepage on mobile, they'll give you access to loads of, they're like Flash games. It's really strange. It's, it, I guess right. it's just an attempt mm. to, and a lot of them are clearly built to be addictive. It's just sad. Netflix has games too now. Just sad. It's also but, sad. Uh, but automatically timestamping comments. Oh no, we can't add that. That's too much effort. <laughs> 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 Wait, hold on a minute. That's right. Yeah. Netflix does have games because, um, one of the things that tanked Telltale games is the fact they had like a contract with Netflix and they couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't fill it. And it's like, well, wait, if you're going for the casual game, like, why are you putting a Telltale game in Netflix? It doesn't make any sense. Is Discord still trying to sell games too? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, they were trying to do that. Yeah, they were trying to be Steam for a while, weren't they? Yeah, they like, <laughs> they undercut Steam's percentage and they had like a couple exclusive games. Why does everything yeah, want to be everything? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wonder, like, if you if you bought a game on Discord, and they, they yeah, okay, they took, yeah, they took it away in 2022. If you bought a game on Discord, do you still have that game now that the feature's gone? Probably not. They might be abandoned. Where, like, no clue. There was some Souls game that came, Souls like game that came out on Discord. I don't know if it ever came to other platforms. Journey mm -hmm. to Singapore. Yeah, but like if if you're somebody who has who has like a Discord game, can you still go and download it in 2024? Don't know. I have no clue. I, I no there is not I mean, one single neuron in my brain that even entertained the idea of buying a game on Discord. Mm -hmm. Probably not. And if you dislike <laughs> that business practice of taking people's games away, you should check out stopkillinggames.com. <gasps> stopkillinggames.com. I agree. Stop fucking killing games. Yeah. I'm betting people would be a lot more accepting. But instead, the consumer is being told, hey, game's now $70, and you gotta pay for New Game Plus. Which makes us, the consumers, feel like garbage. Even I feel like some examples would be useful. Like, yes, the examples do exist, but we also listed examples where that also, wasn't the case. Let me explain to you how that's a losing effort. One, takes more effort. Two, there's more ways to prove him wrong. <laughs> Three, it's very intuitive <laughs> to just hope the audience goes, yeah, that is true. 
Yeah. Dude hasn't felt, <laughs> he hasn't felt interested in citing a single thing in the video no. so far, so I don't think he's going to start now. It would be That's funny if just a picture of a list of video games came up applicable to all of these points suddenly. We'd be like, whoa, all right, nice, okay, good job. Even though, to be fair to the industry, there's no way that $70 price alone is going to cover most of the budgets of a modern AAA game. For well, fuck you, you haven't given us the video for that your yet. your fucking numbers, because yeah. I don't believe it. How did the industry survive? I can't. How did it get to this point? Industry we can't take this on crazy. faith. You have to include this no, part of the video, video that you did are going to make later. Like, you cut out a part. Oh, no. Does he get the irony that he cut out a part of this video to make a future video? <laughs> Was, what is it? Indigo like, said that earlier. Well, there's going to be DLC. Be to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is nuts. Is because season passed. He, he cited it before, being like, "We'll get to the reasons behind what we think is this." You know, the time. Now he's citing it as just it's true. It's like, no, well, hang on, <laughs> like you can't do that. <laughs> like Skyrim well, wouldn't end... have been successful if it wasn't for the DLC. Be... Like, fuck off. It'd be bad enough well, if he was saying. Well... <laughs> if he was I saying that there's a video in existence that you can check out that would make this point clear, it's like we could at least do that. But he's saying there's not even a video that exists yet. No, no, Mahler. He's going to end the video with. They yeah, he's going to end the video. Yeah, he's going to end the video with subscribe to our Nova <laughs> to, no! to find out more. <laughs> Nebula has our full episode detailing how much of a piece of shit you are yeah. and how you should support oh, games Nebula, no matter not what. Nova. Yeah. And it's or just the. The basics of uh, budgeting like he, he treats all this as like a static thing you can't you just have to raise the price there's no other option like the basic economics of it is that you figure out how big your market is what kind of game of this genre uh how popular that is what do they usually sell are we going to sell about a million copies half a million or three million copies okay cool three million copies times the current average uh, acceptable price for that okay here's our budget that's how, you, that's how you figure things out. You figure out what you're probably going to sell, and then you can, that's your make or break point. And then after that, if it sells better than expected, that's your profit margin. Yeah. And that's just how things have been working since the very beginning. And you can always adjust that, you know, uh, however you, it needs to be done. Like, let's say, oh, you know, this game may not sell very well. Let's cut back, back our budget a little bit. But with these constantly expanding budgets and everything, you get these weird ass stories like, Tomb Raider not being a disappointing at 4 million sales, which that should be a great success. So it's it's not really a problem of of the price point not changing enough. It's just these companies not budgeting properly. What yeah, is that the remasters you're talking about? The original ones. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, uh, sorry. Right, right, right. right. Uh, like pretty no, much, no, no, pretty no. much. You were talking about Tomb Raider 2013, right? Where it sold yeah. 6 million yeah. copies mm -hmm. and Square Enix said that wasn't, wasn't good enough. enough. Square Enix yeah, has basically nuts. never had a successful game in the last several years because every single time they're like they expect them to sell like ten plus million copies, like all right. their games are unsuccessful because they have these money, crazy more money, break more money. margins. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're and, and if this video is telling me that ultimately a triple A gaming environment cannot exist where they release a game at seventy dollars, then that just means that there's this horrific, terrible rot. Then die in the industry. Die right? is an industry. Yeah, <laughs> die. Fucking yeah, die. die. Yeah. If triple A games I, have to go away for X you know, years before they sort their shit out, then I, fine. I'll be over here playing all the other games that apparently can survive and thrive without charging me $70 or season passes or 7,000 pieces of microtransaction. You know what else died, right, yeah. uh, didn't even get to live, was the $70 per movie industry. Oh, what a shame. That just died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, because why the fuck would we be okay with that? And it's like, I just need to, th this image actually infuriates me. It's the opposite of that other one. It's like, oh, look at us, our pitiful $70. We can't build a full game for you with this. What do you expect us to do? It's like, how about you move the blocks it around died. so he becomes a smaller little game man? Why does he have to be a yeah. yeah, huge this game man? Implicit I... assumption that it has to be this <laughs> giant monolithic fucking blockbuster creature every single time when that's not what a game needs to be successful. Absolutely yeah. not. No. Why, right. why, why does every game feel like, oh, we've got to be Anthem. We have to make all the money. We can't just make a lot of money. We have to make all of it. We have to make, Anthem. we have to take these massive risks all the time chasing this so... massive amount of money. Starfield had a two hundred million dollar budget uh, just to develop Jesus. the game. That's so to break Skyrim. even on that, to break even wait, on that, on their seventy dollar price point, they have to sell at least three million copies. Wait, where just was to that? Break, in just the to game? break even. <laughs> yeah, where was the two hundred million dollars? In the game. Where was it? Where did it go? 
Where's the money, Todd? <laughs> Explain. <laughs> It's just Skyrim in space, Jesus Christ. Was... Well, let me but tell worse. you, that game was worth <laughs> even more than that. I can't oh, believe I'm God. saying this, but please don't insult Skyrim by... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Well, fair. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I'm, I, here's the thing. I'm, I'm, it's not even like a bullet you're biting. I'm just like, yeah, if AAA needs to die, then fine. Let, let it die. What the is industry that? isn't... Yeah. It, the industry can... Well, it, it just... The nature of the system is such that if there is an emptiness, if a vacuum is created, other people will rise to fill it. And if you have oh, to, yeah. like I said, if trip, if the whole AAA industry shrinks and shrivels and convolutes itself and has to like die for X amount of years so it can sort its shit out, then fine, do it. It's fine. Yeah, we're do kind it. of we're kind of overdue for the crash. I mean, there's been there was a famous uh, video game crash in the '80s where uh, companies were just shit out games they literally made in weeks and try to sell millions and millions of copies that's what happened with the famous uh, famously bad atari et game is they like yep. printed like what three million copies but they they gave a guy like a couple weeks to make the game and of course it wasn't very Aww. good but they had but they had the brand they had the branding the license and everything um that that crashed that kind of reset the american market um but we're kind of over and we had another one sort of with the tech bubble in the early 2000s that kind of that killed a lot of video game companies too, because a lot of these companies were riding high on investors and the stock market and everything like that, and that that went to hell. Um, we're kind of overdue for another one. I mean, it, it's it's bad because a lot of people will lose jobs and a lot of uh, companies will probably go under. But I think we kind of need it at this point because we, this isn't sustainable as it is going. Yeah, but there were no there were no standards back then. Yeah, I yeah, don't like. Being I mean, it was on. It, it, by these respective it wasn't industries, just ET. it'd be like if the milkman said, "I, I got to be paid more because of I take your milk through Imagination Land. I walk through the whole place, which is good for the milk. So you got, I need to be paid more." You'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Just give me the, <laughs> give me the milk, <laughs> you fuck." <laughs> I need to be paid uh, thirty nine ninety nine. Milk is delicious. <laughs> it's made that of Imagination to... Land. You need to be uh, oh. subscribed to Milk Plus subscription at forty nine ninety nine, and uh, then you have to pay like another four ninety nine per milk bottle on top of well, that. That's the thing. <laughs> we talk about indie versus AAA, but there, there's just that guy who's like, you can just have some milk if you want. I'm selling milk for milk prices. In fact, lower than you expect milk prices. Do you want some milk? And you're like, yes, thank you. And then yeah, the other guy, milk <laughs> in a gallon, is like, yeah, sure. I'll just, yeah, that guy isn't right, even yeah. selling milk DLC. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, just, just real quick, because I, I, I kind of turned into this guy during this stream since uh -oh. they've done all this research and they're not showing fucking any of it. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm, and also you, you can do it in about five minutes. I'm going to show you some more research. Okay? Oh my God. Here is the price of your average AAA game. To, to, no, the cost of developing your average AAA game. Uh, AAA so games hit average costs of 200 million by the early 2020s. Yeah, so it is. They are just spending more and more and more money on these games, and I guess this is and where all their costs are going. going. So, well, where's the yeah, fucking so, money going? We would find out where, about all that in the in the next video. <laughs> next, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like okay, the games are coming out. They're not as good. Sometimes they don't even look as good. Like the, the graphics argument kind of falls apart because the games are uglier yeah. than they were 10 years ago in some cases. So they're shorter, they're shittier quality. Like, what, wh wh where's the money going? Like, you're not making a good game with this extra money. So, what are you doing with it? Uh, a lot oh. of it's just tied up in infrastructural uh, inefficiency because a lot of companies in the Western space are stuck in a human resources death spiral because they're so frequently lay, laying off people that there's no job security, so they just don't retain anybody. So you lose a lot of that because you're not retaining experience for, like, say, five yeah. to ten years like you used to. And so the, it just it, makes making games more inefficient. I imagine this graph is similar for movies, and when you look behind the scenes of any, like, fucking Marvel thing, you'll, you'll find, like, the immense amount of spending that goes on. The one example I always give, because you see it every time, is the uh, special effects, makeup, and costumes. Like, especially the makeup and costumes. They'll have people who are experts come in to spend millions and millions on everything, and then you'll see a scene that's about a minute long, and no characters speak who have these outfits on. And you're just like, is that just something... How is this happening? And it's just like, well, I don't know. It's just like, it's what you do when you make movies that are this big. And I feel like that's said a lot with games, too. This is the kind of money you spend if you want to make, you know, immense amounts of money with, with video games. 
is bloated yeah, hence the uh, need for an explosion slash implosion at some point yeah i did a similar thing um with uh the indiana jones series i took the initial uh budget production budget of indiana jones one two and three then i took their respective years and did an inflation calculator to figure out how much that that budget would be from like 81 83 85 whatever they were to now and if you combined all three budgets from indiana jones raiders lost ark temple of doom and last crusade combined they cost less than dial of destiny like that's just how and dial of destiny is the most horrible looking one and horribly written yeah. and... It, <laughs> something happened with these budgets i mean we see it all the time with the movies and with games it's making me wonder too like where is all this fucking money going it's going yeah. somewhere because Some we are not down seeing down the quality if if you made a two hundred million dollar game and it felt like a two hundred million dollar game and you said seventy bucks, I'd be like, yeah, sure. That sure. If I can see the quality, if I'm getting my money's worth, yeah, I'll pay for quality. But where's it going? And I guess just I to was... put the uh, to, to put a nail in the co- the final nail in the coffin of the um, of the inflation argument. Here's your average inflation from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty three. Here's the inflation in prices on Steam each year. Games, game prices have gone up faster than inflation has. Well, that's where you're so wrong. You oh, <laughs> and then doesn't say My anything happy else. <laughs> tells me. <fuck> <laughs> so, so even the we must keep up with inflation argument just doesn't make any sense. Uh, because it's kind of a fairly well known, you know, good indie game example, indie ish game. Uh, I guess they call it double A game. But Deep Rock Galactic, the the devs of it, Ghost Ship Games, they had a goal of Deep Rock Galactic selling 200,000 lifetime sales. Uh, In 2018, they sold 502,000. They sold 404,000 in 2019. And in 2020, they sold 1.18 million. Great game. Love that game. I think something you've got to consider as well. This guy's nuts, so I don't think he cares. But if we had a dollar to spend when a game was a dollar, and then we, you know, game goes up with inflation to a dollar ten, and they're like, "Yeah, but your pay went up to a dollar ten. Let's just say that's true. It's like, yeah, but the game isn't the only thing that's gone up. Every single thing in my life that I buy, semi regularly, mm-hmm. has gone up, and I've not accounted for that in full with my fucking wage increase." You know, just like accounting for it all over. This is what I mean. There's so many gaps. You could kind of logic your way around just using whatever material is useful to you to make whatever narrative you want. But like, no wonder everybody was fucking linking this video, being like, "This is insane." It's like, yeah, because it just it's just cherry picking random shit, which is weird. Why does it want the narrative in this video? I wouldn't have thought extra credits would even want to say all of this shit. But I guess uh, this is somewhat yeah, consistent. Yeah, there's, there's not know. really a there's not really a point because he hasn't really advocated for games should be more expensive to offset these costs. He's just kind of trying to no actually prove everybody wrong, but he's not bringing the data to no actually, so. I mean, I've got a tinfoil hat theory. I have no evidence to back it up, though. Let's go. I, I, I think... I, <laughs> fair enough. I think, you know, because the... This is going to be a political answer. I think because these guys are more progressive at extra credits... And because a lot of these AAA dev studios have definitely become more progressive, and now they are, they are creators of progressive culture. This is them just kind of taking one for the team. But there I have is, no proof for that. Uh, it's just a well, feeling. I did notice that the team is the, the corporations, though. So how does well, that Well, yeah, get but the corporations like? hire a well, bunch of lefties in California. Yeah, so. bunch of lefties. Yeah, yeah. Whenever, so, whenever you see reconcile with like yay EA and Activision, like these massive companies, and particularly as as these companies it. have been laying off a lot of employees. That's that's our viewpoint because we've seen what they're doing. But the, the the way they frame it in the video all the time is the innocent devs, the innocent, well-meaning devs who are just trying to make ends meet. I don't know what to yeah, make of that. Other than just like a it. weird tunnel vision. Do they not realize that like publishers are also part of the? Like, not uh, only are they part of the conversation, they're the decision makers. They're the well, ones which, who make the this decisions image. on all of these. Products. This, this image is the narrative oh, of the video in full. It's the the game isn't going to be completed unless you supply more money to unless the innocent dev who's just trying to get the job yeah. done. Well, I mean, if you think about like, it, just the way around that the, they need to present to you a pitch for why you should give them money. 
I don't know why the onus is being put on players as if it's like, well, no, you, yeah, need this to, is a... you need to generate the value for them. It's the opposite way around. You need to present something of value to people so that they pay for it. Because all, all of that inflation stuff, like really all of that comes secondary to, if people don't want to pay that much, that's it. That's yeah. the end of the yep. conversation. It's only worth what people are willing to pay for it. So you can't, yeah. you can't like present these arguments for how like, well, morally you should be paying more money for these games. Like, it, it just doesn't change. If people don't want to, they don't want to. End of story. Yeah. More no, like the willingness to pay is, is the hard line. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this is now getting into the political conversation, right? Because I mean, I'm sure you guys saw that uh, 2017 or something, there was this really obese black woman who was like, and she, she had like a big sign behind her, and it said, all white people are racist. And that had her PayPal address on oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, send me <laughs> reparations. But there, there is this view that like among very far left people who are nonetheless engaging in capitalism in this way, that there is, there is a moral obligation on behalf of the people buying the products to buy their products because they're the good guys. You see that a lot. And I think that's probably what he's pulling on here. Even though he's, he's, not, he's not explicitly saying it, but it feels like that's what he's pulling on here. But I mean, well, it's so generic, you would apply to, like, Call of Duty and stuff, though, right? Like, there's no, it's not like he's directing you to any type of game, seemingly. Well, Wouldn't so you... far, there is no therefore dot dot dot. There is no, yeah, like, yeah. thesis well, there's or an call to action. Or... There's an implication, for sure, of, like, hmm, maybe Stop they should bitching. talk more. Definitely Wouldn't... an implication along those lines. Yeah, if it, the, the implication it, is stop bitching. You have it better than ever. Stop being mean to the devs who make. I guess I just games. yeah. I don't know. Like to yeah. me, I find it really bizarre, especially if this is you, this video came out in the last couple of weeks, right? Two weeks. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is like after. Oh, or do you think that that might be it? That like they've erroneously seen all of these developers get laid off, and they think. Well, the solution to that would be if they charge like 80 bucks for the games, that would fix the problem. Yeah, if gamers paid more, then the companies would yeah. be happy and, and the devs wouldn't lose their but jobs. The, even the though the problem even was that the game that... Themselves recorded like record profits. And well, it, and the, and pro it, the problem was defeats... Hi-Fi Rush was sold for, uh, it wasn't sold traditionally, it was put on Game Pass. Game Pass. So mm -hmm. it wasn't well, even like we had the done. option. That's something that's making things more. It's it's kind of already exists in you know film and television is that it's it's much more ambiguous the nature of what it means to succeed on Disney Plus or Netflix compared to the box office where it's just straightforward. You make your money back. Well, if you made your money back, you succeeded. You didn't make your money back, you failed. And it's almost like that's starting to become a thing in the gaming industry as well with stuff like Game Plus, where it, it's starting to kind of obfuscate the success or failure of any given game. Um, it makes it less predictable what it means to succeed. And and it just it's it's the priorities of Microsoft with Game Pass are not gonna be the same priorities as I'm trying to sell a game and I hope you buy enough copies of my game to turn a profit. There's gonna be a big difference between what counts as succeeding for Game Pass. Main one being is it bringing in new subscribers, which is probably what they're hoping will happen with Call of Duty. I mean, right. we saw the same thing happen with Epic Games exclusivity contracts. Like they get, like they get about like ten, twelve million dollars some of these games to to go Epic exclusive, but that would severely hurt their initial sales and their hype. So they wouldn't really see sales until they finally were able to, uh, after that sort of exclusivity period passed, to come on Steam, and it's, then they'd actually see like okay sales because people actually want to buy it onto that platform. But uh, going back to the whole um, seventy dollars, if if only we would pay charge more money, we wouldn't have all these bad things. The video kind of already defeats its own argument because, as it's as it's demonstrated, once games started being charged uh, seventy dollars, we saw all the same bullshit. So if, oh, yeah. if we were to calculate down to the dollar, how much do we have to charge to to line up with with the exact, uh, you know, not that there is an exact, but the you know. According to the inflation calculator.com, how much should we be charging for games now? If we did that, if we bumped it up to 100, 120, or whatever it needs to be at, at this point, to be fair, it would just become the new baseline. There would be DLC packs, there would be expansions, there would be the premium edition, that, there would be the this image, yep. right? If uh if the if he said in his next video it, that box needs to say 100. That will solve it. That's the correct amount. You'll have enough material to be able to make the game fully excellent. But you could just remake this image with 100 on that box, and the AAA game man is just bigger. Yeah, because the budget's gotten higher. They'll just yeah. keep pushing it. And you it keep up and pushing up. it yep. until uh, Extra Credits goes, well, that's an absurd amount for a game to cost. And it's like, aha, 
Interesting. I don't know. They probably thought it was been spelled out for a game that cost two hundred million dollars twenty years ago. That's what I'm saying. Like, like holy shit! Where the fuck is you the know, line? When do we say up. like, "Yo, why are you spending so much fucking money on the game? What are you doing?" I'll decide how much that yeah. game's worth. Thank you very much. So, much. so here's the thing, Mallory. What what you just said actually segues into the final bit of evidence that I want to show you during my twenty minute all nighter pulling mm. all this stuff up. Okay. Oh okay. my god. This, oh this, my this is the last time I'll torture you with a graph. Okay. Oh my goodness. So Look check this at out. this graph. <laughs> this is a graph that shows the average price of a game made by AAA developers and also indie developers per complexity of the game, right? So you have it's divided 10%, 20%, 30%. Those are all the various levels of complexity. And it says it says at the bottom there is measured by how big the game is, how much CPU it uses, how much RAM it uses. So a basic metric of how complex the game is. Um, and you can okay. see for for the for the same relative amount of complexity, indie games are cheaper than AAA games. So they're they're so like, let's say you have a game that is 60% complex, so that means that it uses around 60% of what the most complex games use for CPU and GPU and storage. Um, and yet it costs $18 as, as an indie game and $40 as a AAA game. So where is that wh like what's the gap there? Why is it that these indie studios can can, can make a game of that of that size and that quality but you, AAA, AAA you, company has, has more. Yeah. It has to charge more to get the same thing. Guarantee yeah. you extra this, credits this, is this... enough of an anus that you would say, that's actually the result of poor optimization on part of the indie games. They don't know well, how uh, to make games that run more efficiently. Well, I was yeah, gonna if say you want, if like you want a real, is a strange metric. Yeah, I agree. It's a weird metric. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, it, it I is. assume it's it an, is. a metric. There's not much data on this. On this. Yeah, this, this is hard to create a metric for this. This definitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. all the aspects of complexity here, like CPU, RAM, VRAM, that can all be chalked up to like bad programming. Yeah, but that can also you know? be in Where AAA and AA like... games. That's why all things equal, this is something. It shows us something. I guess you just, yeah, what's right. funny is you'd be like, well, surely AAA and AA games will have better uh, efficiency for use of, you know, uh, compression or whatever you have you to increase the game's performance. But the irony, of course, is that what are most known for the broken games releasing is like, well, AAA. It ain't indie. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. And here, if, if, you want the, if you want the final dick punch, uh, I pulled this graph yes, from Daddy, an article. Please. Yeah. Please. I, I, I pulled yes. this graph from an article <laughs> that is using this data to say that indie games should cost more. Not oh, yes. games that cost less. Right in the dick. <laughs> and it's like indie games cost too little, and they're actually hurting AAA developers because they're undercutting them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's their angle. I thought their oh, angle would, was maybe that like indie devs could make more money, but if it's that the poor the poor AAA publishers are being devalued by low price indie games, fuck off. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not really getting punched yeah. in the dick that's the problem. It's it's getting punched in the balls. The dick can take it, no problem. The dick's got nothing to worry about. It's the it's the soft boys underneath. It's I would rather the... be punched in the shaft than the balls, personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? That's yeah. madness. There's no way. <laughs> Don't at industry. me. There's no way that You're seventy dollars price alone is going to cover <laughs> most of the budgets of a modern AAA game, for better or worse. But I don't even know what you wanted to say oh, with that. That's, you, what, that's all my conclusion is. I guess we we'll have to wait for that video. But again, man, does it feel bad when they ask you to wait, pay wait, for wait, the wait. car? And look at this guy's hair. <laughs> okay, so wait, he has wait, like which guy? Which guy? They, well, they both look bizarre. <laughs> One of them is clearly wearing a fucking wig or a. Like, what? Yeah. Like, it's weird. He's got like one of them killed a Pikachu and then skinned it, dehydrated it, and then slapped it over his head. It is weird. Like, it looks like, like he, yeah, layered got... hairstyles. You've got these people that look like they have hair with ice cream smashed on top of it. I don't get it. Yeah, it's like he has like a, a shaved side head with, with the top intact. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. What is this giant spike in front of your face, though? <laughs> oh, we've all got those. Yeah, oh, I guess. Yeah. Nose? No, 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 no. I mean the um. Okay, the single on, on the blonde guy on the left. Yeah, yeah there's like there's, there's that there's that triangle of hair coming down. But I thought you sh shaved the, the entire side of your head. It oh, looks that's, like sort of... that, that's the ear thing. Yeah, it's to that's denote the that there's an ear. Presumably behind it, which is really weird, but yeah. yeah. Just draw the ear. It's just a, no. Just a C, no. basically. Just draw a C. <laughs>
But again, man, does it feel bad when they ask you to pay for the car and then they tell you that you have to buy the keys separately. So maybe yeah, there's some. Yeah, it's fucking yeah, 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 yeah. Why would it's you say it feels yeah. bad? Does that not? It yeah. is bad. You should be saying it's unacceptable. You should yeah. be saying that is absolutely unacceptable and it should be stopped and there has to be another way. Yeah, he's pitching it like, boy, I sure feel weird that I feel Gee, golly gosh. mad about this. Why am I mad wish, about this? Yeah. Well, yeah, he should be pissed off. You, he should be saying it's just not, this can't happen. That you have to buy the keys separately. So maybe there's some messaging to work on there. It's not messaging, you fuck. Mes it's not messaging. Oh, <laughs> it's bad PR. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm it's sorry all, you misinterpreted oh, yeah. what it's we PR told issue. you. Oh my God. Also, so I do want to point out, uh, I predicted this exact image. You know, Mr. Moneybags rubbing his hands with money. This is the Where's greedy the capitalist. Hat, Here he is. Yeah. Right. Oh, he's in a top hat, right. No, he's Trump that. instead. Got it. Ah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Third, indie game Look. pricing structure. Oh, nice. Because indie games tend to do their own thing when oh, it comes to go. price point. They yeah. remind consumers that games could cost less. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this, of course, with most of these games costing far less to build, but it serves as a... Why is that? Mm, oh, God, weird. I hate how much it's he's, weird. like, avoiding. If only, <laughs> if only Our... that was in this video instead mm -hmm. of next What is it time? about... Because, yeah, indie games and, like, double-A games seem to be willing, happy, and some of them fucking grateful to make a profit, period, or to be happy with less profit, potentially, than these massive companies with these huge bloated budgets that can sell millions and millions of copies and still not be satisfied. So, hmm, maybe there's yeah. some, maybe there's some, some, some philosophy when it comes to you know, satisfaction and things of that nature that go into it. Just, just interesting. Also, uh, from chat, huh. which I think is very true, he's placing all arguments against price increase as feelings and all for uh, the increase as research. Huh. Like, mm. that, true, yeah. Categorization mm. there. Well, it's all yeah. into research the like, entitled wherever, gamer yeah. complex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, who, who would know, win? In the, in the a video. whole night's worth of research or a bunch of people's feelings? I don't know, man. I'm just saying. Feelings, well, I thought I thought feelings were over facts. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Suck. What facts? I hate facts. Too. I don't know what the facts. He did a whole are. night of research. Facts. I've heard uh, of this mythological night of research. <laughs> <laughs> this legendary night of research in the Sky Castle with the happy coffee, but I haven't seen any fruits of that labor. Well, why, why would you need actor? facts when we have these colorful illustrations? That's true. Yeah, why? Yeah, Why where's Sonic the Hedgehog? I need my keys. I don't <laughs> need, <laughs> need the keys jingling. I do. Please, please can jangle the keys. Guys, extra credits. Can you guys group. explain the image? Because, like, what is this? Oh, I guess Anchor if we roll it back, we might know what he's gonna say. Uh, I'm sure it has context. Okay, don't okay. you worry. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this, of course, with most of Why these games. Why does the game costumes. have arms? <laughs> Why not? Those are ears. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got legs and arms, but they're connected to the body. Yeah, legs that's normal. The face, Leg, legs connected to the face, as per usual. <laughs> <laughs> Far less to build, but it serves as an anchor point in our minds, you know. You Plus, go. it sort of rankles no. when you go. I spent seventy-eight hours on Vampire Survivors and paid a dollar for it, while I played something like, say, Redfall for an hour and a half, paid seventy dollars. Oh, so, oh, are we finally getting to the quality oh. of the game argument now as well? Uh. But do, um, do you think that there might be a link between what I'm willing to pay? No, it's it's entitled gamer the quality. Feelings. I'm expect. Oh, okay. It's so funny because yeah, like the <laughs> the big elephant in the room is that a lot of games are shit. Like even when the they're the only completed. difference between those two games is price point. Okay, don't yeah. think of any other differences it, between those two it's games. It's simple. If I pay seventy dollars, I expect at least a thirty dollar quality game. It should be seventy <laughs> times better than the other game. <laughs> enjoy it nearly as much because even though your whole rational brain knows that vampire survivors cost way less to make it is still true well, that do doesn't mean shit that doesn't <sighs> yeah <laughs> Why would, about, about arcane? Why, would wow. arcane? why would i arcane why would i give a shit about arcane if they don't give me a good game in the first place it's it's just not it's just not relevant like how much you know, money yeah spend, it's yeah not a, it's not a pitch that's gonna yeah. make you go Oh, well, shit. I okay. mean, now that you tell me that, then yeah, I'll give you more money for something I perceive of being of lower quality regardless. Uh, yeah. If I go to yeah, a restaurant and I order some food and the food tastes like shit, you can't say, 
Well, I mean, the chef worked really hard really on it, hard. and it was expensive. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, well, so so here's the thing, right? This logic works, but it has to be voluntary because there's tons of people who say, "Yeah, I know my local mom and pop shop charges a little bit more for a little bit less, but I like the people. I'm going to go support small cool, businesses." Yeah. You can you can have that yeah, feeling, yeah, but this person is shaming you for not having that feeling. But it has oh, to be a voluntary thing. Well, yeah, he's doing the. the uh, corporation. <laughs> It's like, like you're both yeah, considering yeah, having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like if you're mom right. and pop it's the, were assholes a, and they hated you yeah. and they were ruining everything well, you liked like and they were mega billionaires the, already. It's, it's like it's Walmart. It's, it's, it's the meme. It's right. the meme bringing. You're right, you're right. Well, well, what, the, the, what, what is with the insane narrative the in this video to shame us for being like you're focused on fun when paying for an experience as opposed to worrying about arcade? You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? What that, that's <laughs> I came here to buy a, fun. You don't have a moral obligation to worry about the health of a studio, like if, the, if they've delivered a game that you don't like. I yeah, think where like the studio the mismanaged the shit out of them, and I'm supposed <laughs> to pay for that? Like, come on. Yeah. That's just really good. I, I think we're the leave the multi-billion dollar company alone. Now I am starting to wonder because um, uh, uh, Redfall was made by the studio that got shut down, right? Arcane Austin. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe that was what. Wait, but that was wait. Oh well, maybe maybe this is out of date, right? Because that was less than two weeks ago. So in the time that the video came out. I think two uh, weeks ago we were. Arcane has been in some, you know, it, some. I mean, the specific studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Arcane Austin. When did that was, was that in the last two weeks? When I'm just thinking about like the timing and how. I'll look it up real quick. I can't so it, is I think Arcane the... the name of the developer of League of Legends yes. as well as the name no. of the team? No, 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 no. Oh, Arcane okay. is the developer of they made Redfall, but they made Dishonored Prey, and uh, it's Riot makes League of Legends. Oh, okay. It looks like this was in. Show. Yeah, Microsoft we'll gets close enough for Bethesda Studios, including Arcane Austin. Well, dates. Yeah. That's what I want to know. My, no, well, this is, is May seventh. Is when this came yep. out. So. Okay. Yeah, May seventh, May 9th, I'm seeing articles around that time. Lost okay. ninety six jobs. This came out in the second. Oh, so this came out before. Well, the worrying was founded. Um, in the case you of see, the case you entitled Redfall. gamers, you should have been worried. You should have yeah. bought all the Redfall DLC so that they stayed in business. Yeah, so yeah. Funny, we get cause... more Redfalls until they got shut well, down eventually. Anyway, <laughs> one of the, the this. Funny... Oh my god, this, is this conversation shit. has me wondering about like Dishonored, Dishonored 2, Prey. Like, these are games that are, are really good and they're super fun, and I really like them. And yet, apparently, they weren't selling enough or doing well enough or whatever. And so, people got shuffled around and games got changed and whatnot. And I'm wondering, is like, is it did they just not make enough for you or were they actually not profitable? Because now I'm super second guessing everything when it comes to. You know viability of studios and franchises. It, it's a lot like there's a story, story behind story. Arcane, um, how they got acquired by Bethesda, and then switching over to Microsoft and Microsoft's change in expectations and why that just didn't work out. It's, it's a decently long story. I, I yeah. believe Dishonored did sell pretty well, but um, they all their games get reviewed well, but they underperform compared to what they should perform. Like especially, probably the best example was probably um. Death Loop, which you could argue whether that was their best game or not. There's actually a lot of flaws in that game, but that game got an obscene amount of like tens out of tens. Like it got rated incredibly well, but it did not sell very well. So there's a weird disconnect between the, how the games were rated versus how they sold. And but but there, it did come a point where Redfall wasn't really Arcane's baby. It was basically like, okay, you've got to make a live service yeah. multiplayer game that where... sells and makes there money. Was a there was a thing where um, I think it was like 70% of the devs who worked on Redfall didn't want to make that game. Yeah, so basically crazy like they that. were Yeah, they were mandated like to make it. Was, I'm, I'm yeah. not surprised it was a terrible fucking game. It didn't seem like it was, was the kind of game that Arcane would make. Yeah, all their other games so, have been story-driven, single-player, immersive RPGs, basically, or, or immersive uh, kind of FPS hybrids. Sold well. That's the yeah. thing. Well, uh, but, but, uh, Dishonored one sold well, but I remember Dishonored two prey would well, notably unperformed. Isn't that the core of the issue? Actually, it has nothing to do with the price of the game. It's actually the sales. As in, uh, there'd be no problems for something like well, any of the games that are getting referenced at AAA level if enough people were buying them. And why yeah, aren't I mean, they? Grand it's Grand like Apollo, well, right? like 
Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it, you know, these games could be charged at fucking $30 as long as they got, like, triple the amount of people buying it that was expected at the $70 mark. Like, that's actually the important part. It's so weird to compare these two games, being Vampire Survivors and, uh, what would be, the, this would be, uh... What the fuck? Red, uh, Redfall. Redfall. Redfall, yeah. So, and, and it's yeah, just like there's... you see, Redfall needs to be seventy. It's like no, Redfall needs to sell enough that it makes it back what it costs. In the same vein, yeah. Vampire Survivors need to do that. Turns out, Vampire Survivors doesn't need to price too high. And what's funny about that is, Vampire Survivors co probably could have cost ten dollars and it would have been fine. As in, like it, yeah, people know, would have paid course, that much. You know, like some pretty, some pretty um, basic sort of uh, you know business thinking, right? You might be able to sell a lot more copies of your game if you sell it for less money, like a point of sale. Well, and also make it good. For Forty dollars, right? Yeah, yeah that would yeah. help. But it, but so, it's uh, the case, you know, like if there's a uh, how much does Stardew Valley cost? Is like fifteen dollars. Yeah, 15. and that game sold. Hasn't that game sold like ten million copies or something like that? I don't know yeah. how much it sold. It's got six hundred thousand reviews on Steam. <laughs> yeah, the, the point Dude. being that if it was selling for a hundred dollars, it probably would have sold fewer copies. <laughs> Um, well, yeah. just imagine, yeah. it just takes us just a second for you to think about all the things you'd buy if they were a bit cheaper. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. I just and wish how that extends to fucking microtransactions. Like, gro like groceries? Th this I, video I, just I, makes me angry. Because, like... Oh, the last thing <laughs> no, I need is my more, no, last thing no, I need like, is my more groceries. <laughs> because he, like, says, oh, guys, we're going to talk about inflation, how, th how these factor into the cost of making the game, and then he boils it down to Think about the devs uh, and basic economics. It's it's retarded. It, it's so fucking annoying. Why I, um, why is I he really citing, like, yeah. citing I, like he's not bringing I, up like the publishers enough? It should be the devs it's... and gamers versus the publishers, but instead it's the devs versus the, the gamers and the yeah, yeah, entitlement. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was I about think to get into that. A bit, uh, of, a bit of the I, I think we we can put a little bit of the blame on the devs as well, though. So yeah, some I, don't, yeah, I don't like devs. Right. I don't like devs yeah. at all. Yeah, oh like, yeah, yeah, but... yeah. No. <laughs> so, I was about to, I was about to say way, like the. Was uh... asking, someone was asking about the Stardew Valley sales. Uh, two months ago, it hit uh, thirty million yeah. sales. Yeah. Holy nice. Shit. Yeah, so I don't like just, how this. I don't like how this video just kind of paints a black and white. Like, okay, like when you whenever it shows like charging more money, it always shows like some n faceless person with a business suit on. But they don't like and name names. But whenever they show, like, oh, we got to increase the prices because the poor little devs who are shoveling the coal into the mines or out of the mines or whatever need to make more money, it's just very, very one dimensional. Where there are some shitty devs, there's some devs who absolutely do the minimum amount they, they can in order to make the biggest profit, especially self published devs who flip assets and whatever just to and, oh, yeah, and well, ride yeah. on the popularity of, of, other, of other franchises. But really, I think what a lot of, a lot of this argument really should boil down to is the publisher bloat like for example the next game that blizzard uh releases you're not they're not expecting to just meet the uh demands of their the budget of the game that they just released you're they're also needing to meet the the demands of the game the last three games they canceled too like there's so much bloat especially from the publisher side of like just how many games have failed how many risks they took that didn't pay off like they, they're trying to make enough money to make the whole ship go even though uh that game they're they're putting so much weight onto each individual game's uh shoulders that it's so hard for one game to live up to that standard that's that's what we're running into with uh square enix for example every single game has to be a crazy success and when it's not they release oh yeah yeah disappointing four million sales Ugh, disappointing yeah i just realized I another thing that triggers me about this picture redfall was not fun that fun should not even be in this fucking image <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a superfluous addition to it, and I think it's only there because he's taking this developer-sided per perspective. He doesn't want to say that the game had zero fun value to it, and he doesn't want to pitch it as solely being that his $70 experience was worrying about Arcane. So he wants well, there to be a little bit of fun, just so he can be nice to his fellow devs, but not necessarily, like, a lot of fun. So it yeah, wasn't you, fun enough. It's not that it was you, miserable and everyone hated it. If you want to support Arcane, just buy their other games. There are other games that were good. Don't buy Redfall. Yeah. Buy Prey right now. Buy Prey, buy Dishonored No, don't, don't buy Prey. The money doesn't go to them anymore. Fuck! Yeah. Pirate Prey. Pirate so, Prey. Um, buy their milk. <laughs> buy their milk. I think, uh, 
a bit earlier they were comparing they were they were comparing Redfall to um, Hollow Knight. I think it was like I think I saw a picture of Hollow Knight in the video like a yeah. few frames back, and I was like, okay, so I, I just had to look this up because it's real quick and easy, and I know I've seen these pictures before. Here's your Hollow Knight development team. It's uh, yep three guys. I think it was a fourth guy now. It's a small team. Now to be fair, Hollow Knight's a smaller game. Right than a lot of these AAA games, so you don't need a ton of games. Oh, Hollow Knight Hollow is Knight. a huge it's game. Big, yeah. It's oh no, no, listen, listen. I love Hollow Knight. I love Hollow Knight a lot. It's probably my favorite Metroidvania of all time. Um, but it's like it's, it's a it's big. a big we game. Know, we know how you but, feel about those. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like just just to compare, like here is the here's the the development photo for Suicide Squad. Right now, oh, Suicide Squad goodness. probably has um just That's in total. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's not even a whole team. I think yeah, they have by like four thousand people. Yeah, they have all these other studios working for them. They also have marketing and and uh, localization, um, mm -hmm. and still yeah. support studios and stuff too. But that's probably the core team. And right, right. now, there are yeah. fewer people playing the game than in this photo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I mean, not a great oh, exchange like rate. So, you know, so, so basically, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. Yeah. 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 What, what I'm thinking is like, you know, Hollow Knight is a great game, but I mean, it's it's hard to compare because they're very different games. Suicide Squad's probably a bigger game, which is a much more empty game. But there's, like, compare it's also a much shittier game. Yeah. It's it's a it's oh, a way it's worse game. Fun. It is it is not nearly as fun. It has so many so many other things that are just worse. But like, you know, what what did it cost to develop these two games? Uh, I think Suicide and, Squad, we now know, lost $200 million. Yeah, compared to Hollow Knight. And, like, some well, of that's going to be... With, what, like, a probably 10,000% return yeah. on investment? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right, exactly. So, you know, you have, like, a small team versus a big team. Well, do you really need this many people? The counter argument is, well, is Suicide Squad a bigger game? I mean, kind of, but it's a shittier game. So what if you cut the fat and made a better game instead? You know, so, so some of this will be on the... On the shoulders of the developers, not just just the publishers, right? Oh yeah, they if you make look at, the like, game. They're the ones who like make you, the game. And then if you look at this is Rocksteady's development team for um for Arkham Asylum. This is actually in the Arkham Asylum game. This picture. It's like about the same size crowd, maybe a little bit smaller. So it's well, still no, like a I big crowd. Arkham Asylum was made by wasn't it like sixty or seventy people? So actually, like for the time, it was a uh, you know, it's like yeah, decently sized team. Sure, yeah, yeah. Did, but, but did you I, see I the I'm, previous I'm photo like, in Suicide Squad? So it's the same company, right? Yes. Or, okay. Same company, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is every single face that you see is a salary. And like that's, that, that eats up a lot of your money, right? And I mean, how many of these people really need to be here is, is the question mm -hmm. that you want to ask. And that's, for some people, that's a really uncomfortable question because they don't want to fire their friends. But it's like, hey, listen, you're, lo you're burning money. You're making shitty games. No one's playing these things. Everyone hates them. Something has to give. And it's not the consumer's fault. So, like, like what's, what's going on here? Like, what, why does the game suck when you have this many people? Like, are, do, do some of these people well, actually need to be fired? To clarify, though, mm -hmm. would be that if you were looking at a game... Uh, like if you look at Spider-Man 2, which I think that I can't remember how much expensive game, real expensive game. Um, and like, oh well, how many people would you have needed to like create all of the assets and to to build all of the these areas and everything like that? It's like, okay, let's say that you make a game and it ends up costing like two hundred million dollars. You accept the risk of making a game that costs that much money, which is if it's gonna cost that much money. I better sell a lot of copies. It's the reason why, you know, Grand Theft Auto V costs like $250 million when it came out. I mean, that's a lot of money, but you know it's going to make that money back because it's Grand Theft Auto. Like, it's yeah. just kind of the nature of you spending a lot of money. You're taking a big gamble. It needs to sell well. And you're competing not only against other games that are a comparable budget. You're competing against, like, Hollow Knight. You're competing against Stardew Valley. You're competing against all of these indie games that are selling for, like, 10 15 bucks. And middle market games as well that are maybe selling for 30 or 40 bucks that are going to be competing with you regardless of whether you say, well, but look at our graphics. Look at how high fidelity they are. It's like, yeah, but at the end of the day, you're competing on content. You're competing on what people are interested in. You're competing on what's fun. Like, that's just it. You accept that. That's, that's part of the deal if you're going to spend that much money. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's not just the strength of the IP that saved Grand Theft Auto. It's, it plays well as yeah. well. Like, it's just, yep. it's just a well done game. Dollar for dollar, Redfall didn't give you anything like the entertainment value that Survivors did, and that's how our brains want to compare them.
because um, that's that's, that's, that's brain normal. Brain because that's that's a fucking that's game. Normal. Also, to be clear, yeah, if Vampire Survivors cost seventy, it would still dollar for dollar outplay Redfall excessively. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. idea that's like, yeah, but that yeah. was cheaper. It's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Do we have to remind him that like people people yeah. make a limited amount of money and they have to like spend it on food and shelter? Yeah, they can't infinitely and, like, spend money no, on your games. They need to make choices about which games they want. This is the thing I don't is... like the way he's saying it's like, oh, it's your brain doing it. Because when you say yeah, it like we... that, it's implied that it's like something that's not rash. It's like it's it's like something's gone wrong. It's your brain tricking you. It's like you're not it by by ascribing it to the brain. It's it's almost like paradoxically describing it as being like not fully rational, but it's totally rational. You're just making a choice about which thing you think offers more value, more bang for your buck, or you just don't have enough money. Yeah, I mean on, that that know, fucking part of your brain kept all of your ancestors alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, this is happening. My granddad yeah, didn't pay it. seventy bucks for a video game. No, to me, to me <laughs> this feels like explaining how like dopamine, right? Like how all of that is kind of making your brain react in a certain way, and how it's it's kind of like a glitch in the system of your brain. This is normal, but it's being presented as abnormal. I don't get it. No, you just free, gotta remember free. that this is coming from a bit of an infantilizing perspective. It's like, hey, so you're sp we're talking inflation, but here's your favorite video game characters. You can't yeah. help it. You're just Man, too dumb and naive. Yeah, free. I like how you phrased it. it it's like a, he's using the brain, but it's really an emotional argument. It, it, <laughs> it comes yeah. across, right? Well, he, well man, let's like put it this, this way. Was... This game, the, or sorry, this game, this video is telling me that I should be more comfortable paying more money. That the onus is on me as a consumer to spend more of my money. The onus should not be on these massive corporations making record insane profits that they should be satisfied making less money. It's up to oh. me to change, not them. And for that, well, I say, I, fuck you. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just also, in, like, yeah. an incredibly naive attitude to take into it when really, ideally, the way that it should be working is that the companies the companies will aggressively pursue their own interests so you should aggressively pursue your own interests which is getting a better deal for yourself and for you know fellow players right yep. instead of and being a lot like, of people are going to oh, see that as give, piracy you know, that's just it's oh, just how it's going to be I, I was curious about the like to dislike ratio on this video it's like 3.8 dislikes versus 2.8 still likes. too high but yeah. awful. not not yeah. surprised not surprised well and i wish, wish i wish more the developers brain thing. Go ahead, no, go, ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. I wish developers and publishers would consider more the benefits of giving the consumer a good deal and lowering their price point. Because they, I, I feel like they just look at it as like, oh, like we could charge seventy, but we're gonna, like, if we charge like five dollars, like, we're we're not gonna make that much money at all. But like Vampire Survivors, for instance, it's just like when I. Like, I saw the reviews for that game and the amount of buzz it was getting, and I saw it on Steam, and it was like, what, like five bucks on Steam? I was like, hell yeah, I'll grab that. And then, like, the most recent DLC, it was they re just released, like, a Contra DLC for it, and it was like two bucks. I haven't even played it yet, but as soon as I saw it, I was just like, fuck yeah, I'll grab that. Well, yeah, yeah, a lot two of the bucks, time you whatever. feel good supporting a game that you like. When I buy a Deep Rock Galactic, this, that, the other thing, or something like that, I'll be like, oh, I, 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 when I buy a RimWorld DLC, I, I'll be like, I, I don't even know when I'll get around to it, but like, I love this game. I've sunk all of these hours into it. I feel good knowing that I have supported an indie or a AA level team that has made this experience that I really, really enjoy. And yeah. I only, I can't even imagine all those fucking people who spend a hundred dollars on Fortnite all the time or Apex Legends or Call of Duty or all these games where they fleece you with these insane prices. It's like, man, what if, what if you use that money on, you know, like these other games that are really, really trying hard and make really cool experiences and are okay, you know, not making, not feeling like they have to make these insane profits. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot, a lot of long-term success if you charge stuff fairly. And I think in the case of Vampire Survivors, they're erring on the side of like being generous, where it's just like, yeah, five bucks, here you go, here's the game. Two, two bucks, you get this awesome DLC, and it's just like, fuck, that's nothing compared to what I would pay for like a quote-unquote triple A video game. So like, of course, here's my money, dude. And then it's like you, you gain 
that huge audience right and then whatever your next big release is like you know your whole audience is going to be like oh yeah this is the new game they're putting out sure i'm like i'm on board because yeah, like, the your last game is fucking awesome but yeah but john what about halo infinite it's free why don't you feel that excitement for buying <laughs> shaders in halo infinite <laughs> yeah <laughs> buy white oh oh yeah oops there's someone else i was just thinking well, about don't you want to yeah. pay 20 dollars I mean, for the halo one skin <laughs> with this comparison here he's trying to like get through to us like don't let your uh your sort of substanceless surface level feelings distract you from the truth like this is just something that feels intuitive to you meanwhile at the beginning of the video i'm gonna be flashing pictures of your favorite characters to keep you attentive while i talk to you about boring economics it's like oh, what like like you don't even trust yeah. my brain power at all <laughs> you, you think that... <laughs> it's such a manipulative little video yeah, also, I don't get the yeah. art. If if you oh, didn't, he probably would like to call us retards if he could. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I think Dev it's was going to say something that... as well, but he's muted now. Uh, Little bitch. What was it? The Ooh. Um, it's, you know, it's not a big deal. It, it was a bunch of gay communist philosophy. Let's keep going. Ooh. Okay. Right. Fair enough. That's all communist <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> So as individuals, maybe it's worthwhile to look at that specific value prop and vote with our wallets towards things we enjoy accordingly. Then, of course, you got well, things like... That's what people are doing! That is what they're doing. That's why we said fuck Redfall. Yeah. Hold on a second. Can we go back like 10 minutes? I want to hear that whole... No, that we're whole not going to go back. No, sorry, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Oh, oh, just don't comment, right? Anybody, you've got to let him finish his whole flism. Yeah, all right. Knows that vampire survivors cost way less to make. It is still true that dollar for dollar, Redfall didn't give you anything like the entertainment value that survivors did, and that's how our brains want to compare them. So as individuals, maybe it's worthwhile to look at that specific value prop and vote with our wallets towards things we enjoy accordingly. Then of course, what the fuck? What, what? what He's fuck? That's what people do? This? Yeah, they're buying well, what, indie what games. What doing? Well, I think yeah. what. What he's trying to put a big focus on your brain making direct connections between the ratio of fun to money instead of just, oh, I bought this game, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this other game, which also is a lot more expensive, is, is not fun at all. It's actually quite miserable. When uh, I, I can just weigh up fun versus fun, not think about, oh, well, if, if Redfall it needs to be 70 times more fun than Vampire Survivors is. So if it was just more fun, it, no, it's like, don't overcomplicate it. It's like one thing is very expensive and not fun. One thing is cheap and very fun. Like, don't, don't, if, yeah. don't overcomplicate it. If you uh, walk up to a little 12-year-old uh, Jimothy and say, hey, little Jimothy, play this game uh, Redfall and play this game uh, Vampire Survivors, and almost certainly Jimothy will play more Vampire Survivor without any concept of the economy or price or whatever, just because he enjoys that game more. Like people will, will gravitate to, gravitate toward whatever they want or whatever they whatever they enjoy more, regardless of yeah. And arguably much, that is mostly regardless. Despite all the information we do actually have access to, that is still the fundamental thing that's happening. Yeah, and that's kind of like the the market as bad as it might be. People enjoy mobile games. People enjoy these kinds of games. People enjoy Fortnite. And that's why it's so successful. Like we're we're trying to we're trying to dissuade people from like you know these really really predatory games, but the unfortunate fact is they are very popular, and that's why they are continue to be made. So I thought yeah. I thought that was Captain Marvel in the middle for a second. <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> This story <laughs> bothers me. This story bothers me it's because so the Gith Yankee, though. the Gith Yankee has the pointy ears, but these are both elves, and their ears are not drawn. With the pointy ears, it, what is the the, what, the, the, the green the skin wasn't enough yeah. of an indicator? So funny. Well, yeah. he didn't want like, you to what? confuse the green skin with a black person. Yeah. Well, what oh, what good is good point? Yeah, that's good point. Well, yeah. What are the metrics of this fucking? How do they draw shit? Well, like you because... have the game bo game box with arms, cats with limbs. Uh, well, you can tell the difference. Ears. You can tell the difference between an orc and a black person because black people don't have pointy ears. So that's oh. the, that's the real giveaway you see with extra oh credits. That's how they Why make would, sure you know. Don't they have like face patterns, like spots and stuff? Yeah. Like I wouldn't that be the way yeah. you communicate it? Hold on a second. Why do they have shoulder plates and they have shoulders? <laughs> to, protect their, to protect their shoulder holes. Yeah, the shoulder holes are yeah. weak spots. 
you know what they okay, say right. the quickest well, they're way erogenous to... zones she's covering oh, that's right that's right yeah oh yeah yeah because right. without yeah, the, the middle plate ones there but yeah there'd just be a big hole in there like the vest so you could stab a sword right through there and yeah like, puncture or their lungs else. and their heart <laughs> yeah <laughs> But you got things like Baldur's Gate 3. That beast feels AAA. Heck, it feels a lot more AAA than a lot of traditional AAA it games. But it is. And yet, how come the AAA yeah. can't do that when they have did... all of this insane money and backing and finances? Why do people think that Larian is a small company? Yeah, they, they're yeah it's not an indie game. It costs $100 million to make. Baldur's Gate 3 had a $100 million budget. A lot of I feel traditional... like they have 470 employees. They're not... They're, yeah, they're, they're a AAA like, company. Right. I feel well, like people, people get very Halo confused 3. about and what AAA a, means. They're an independent company, right? But like when people think like indie, CD Project Red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, like $100 million in Belgium goes a long way. Um, yeah, I, I knew I, a lot of waffles. Oh, yeah, the, the creator, <laughs> the original creator of XCOM, actually, he's from the UK. He actually went to Belgium, moved his, his wife and his whole thing to Belgium in order to start a studio there because he knew that uh, pound for pound, you could get more bang for his buck in Belgium yeah, over UK. Yeah, ninety three percent success rate. Mm. So, definitely uh, things to consider. Right. But yeah, that's is the AAA game in all respects, budget and everything. Triple AAA games, but it came out on Steam at a sixty dollar price point. So why can't these other games that look worse and have nowhere near the content do the same? Again, that's what my live. Wait, what? Why'd you huh? pause him? Yeah, that, I wanted to no, see what he was going to say. Don't give that, him that's off. actually a really good question. Well, no, no. He's Rags, about to give the punchline. Rags, you did that. And you I know. Interrupt. I was confused by what pause? he had said. Because I was he's confused asking a good question. He and he's about okay. to answer it. So I can be confused by the phrasing. <laughs> so he said, the phrasing. Well, it's pretty straightforward. Why are the games that are worse costing more? That was pretty much the straight version of it. I, w I want him to get yeah. to the part where it's it's our retarded brains that just aren't. Yeah, powerful. that's what I mean. That's what I'm <laughs> very, yeah. I'm very that's interesting. Like, that's what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he's preempting it because it's like the the next picture was like there's a snake behind him. It's that their primitive lizard brain. Probably, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Let's, Let's see, see what it is. Oh, yeah. same. Again, that's what my lizard brain is always asking. Before oh my god, you predicted it. It's, it's, it's a snake. Finally, it's a snake. Let us, uh, let, us, let us hear it all again. He actually yeah. said lizard brain. He said, it. oh my fucking god. Snakes are lizards. Rep reptile, reptile brain. Okay. Reptile, that was, maybe yeah. that was what I was Serpent. Maybe. It's more general sure. term. But Why can't I, these other games that look worse and have nowhere near the content do the same? Again, that's what my lizard brain is always asking before I look at pricing models, early access, etc. Finally. But he doesn't this, answer that. He just leaves it open. It, oh, wait. It, no, well, the answer is that, that you're a retailer. Pricing right. models and early <laughs> access. That is well, not that a change? fucking answer at all. Pricing models yeah, and early access. He asked a question access. and went on to something else. Wait, so was he like and not actually well. providing an answer to that question? Because, yeah, that's... That's yeah, 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 the point of the video. I guess they could just do that. If you, Who knows? If you boil it down, the question is, why is it that Redfall costs $70 and Baldur's Gate 3 costs $60? And the answer is... Pricing models and early access. Which is not an answer at all. In fact, you could argue those two answers are the, the answer to why Baldur's Gate would be cheaper as opposed... Uh, sorry, why why <laughs> why uh, uh, Redfall should be cheaper. Because if it... Like, pricing models, is he referring to, like, deluxe packages and all that shit, right? He's, he's maybe, maybe he's saying that no in idea. order to pay for the continuous development over the course of years, they took advantage of the early access and getting money from that to pay for their budget but again this is all just a, a budgeting thing like you can plan a budget for a seven-year development i feel like you could say uh, early access is a reason the game was cheaper not more expensive yeah but it's it's how they were able to fund it and without just raising the price to 70. especially Let's if they sold a bunch they wouldn't have to because of that's just how it works if you have a lot of people buying into it you don't have to raise the price so wait did Baldur's gate have early access Baldur's gate 3 yeah, it was yeah, access, yeah, yeah. Access for a long like time. Yeah. Three, four, bought, yeah, three I bought, years. I bought it because I love Larry and I bought it. Oh, so the access. so the argument is that that's why Baldur's Gate three is cheaper because it was supported during its early access. Yes. Maybe. I mean, the, well, that's the that's the counter I, to that. Of course, it's like, well, that could mean that. That doesn't necessarily mean that, and that doesn't answer the question across the rest of the fucking industry. It's really he weird moved, for him he to moved on from it way too. Quick. Yeah, that's the arguably well, yeah. the most important question yeah. of the whole video, and he said pricing models and early access. Yeah, no, and, just, and, and, that could be and, and your retarded things. lizard brain. 
This is like saying, how do we fly to the moon and land on it? It's like, oh, math and physics. Moving or is on. He like, or is he about <laughs> yeah. to answer it? Because I am like genuinely baffled as to whether or not he is actually going to like answer that question. Well, I don't did think he, that did... he knows. Did he, he just asked the he... question though. Like he's about <laughs> yeah, to answer yeah. it, right? Yeah, he's, like, that's he doesn't I'm know, here. so he's asking the question. And I feel like he's posing it to here. us. He's a viewer. Well, it doesn't wait, account for why the games are so much worse either. Did he leave the answer like as blocks building blocks for the audience and figure it or out? Just, figure like, out what we, I'm trying to say, guys. <laughs> like, no, I'm like, here like, to do seconds. Can we like to see if yeah. you about to answer it? I doubt it. Okay. it Let him like cook. Let him give it to him. Before I look at pricing models, early access, etc. Finally, it's time. No, coming out of COVID, the whole world. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, no, he's, he's, he's not going to answer the question then. All right, he's just moved yeah, on. Okay. No, why yeah, the fuck are we, we here? So yeah, what, what's contained in that etc. Like what, what what's what's in there? Well, he's well, just couldn't think, he couldn't yeah. think of anything else. He that'll be his, of his next yeah. video. That's the next video. Well, his phrasing was, was and that's oh. boy, that sure is something I ask myself before I think about these other things. Moving on to the next point. I mean. The like, answer is probably that they have. The, the answer is probably that all these development teams have like hugely bloated HR departments, and the director has three hot Asian secretaries. Like that, that's what it is, really. That's where the money's starting going. <laughs> I, that's There's, fair. That's, that's, that's fair. fair actually, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There is something I, to be said though. Like the bigger the team, the more um, the, the diminishing returns. Though, like you get a team of like ten, you know exactly who every what everybody. In that team does but you get a team of 100 you're going to be getting some redundancies you're going to be getting some you know jerry doesn't quite pull his weight you know samantha kind of is like new she doesn't really know what she's doing etc um but then you get to like 400 or you get like five ancillary studios like some of these games i think it was like uh cyberpunk and and uh gta they, they were in like the thousands of people that actually worked on the game it's like you're going to get a lot of wasted money when you get that many people involved and uh yeah i, I you get a nice small focus team that kind of does a slow burn on a project, you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. There's, there's just so much to consider, and the fact that this whole video is dependent on it is insane that he gave those two words to essentially move on from the whole subject, but that's like, like the whole reason we're all here. Uh, also, a second, yeah. Extra Credits has taken their first victim. Patrician TV needs to head out, but uh, we appreciate all the time you gave I, us. I'm tonight. on the edge of my seat. I want to know where this is going, but I do have to depart. Very well said. We'll tell anywhere. you about it all. <laughs> we'll see how the end if it goes. If I wish you guys. Build. I wish you guys the best of luck in the yeah, we'll years. We'll DM to you come. the answer before we find uh, out. Before you go, do you want to let chat know what you're up to, where they where they can find you, in case any of them are uh, new to you? Yeah, you can you can find me here on YouTube. I'm still working on the WoW thing. I'll be wrapping up the script soon. So. Mm. Oh sweet. Um, there's a link in the description to the channel and. Uh, we always appreciate you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for it's having me. great hearing me. from you, man. Later. See you guys later. Bye. See you, man. See you, dude. Take care. Bye. Bye. One down. And to be honest with you, I'm amazed that it took near six hours to kill one of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's been that long. Oh, my God. Near the content, do the same. Again, that's what my lizard brain is always asking before I look at pricing models, early access, etc. Finally, oh. it's... I see. So he's saying, like, yeah, I ask that question until I educate myself, which you yeah. then I know. <laughs> oh, that's that's, that's, that's like you. the whole outrage is that uh, those, yeah, two, yeah. those two things don't <laughs> necessarily account as an answer. And then the et cetera is doing oh. fucking amazing lifting for that whole sentence. Because, like, what is in there? Like Dev said, it's like, what is the magical chest that is the et cetera? Can we open it up and see what answers <laughs> flow out? <laughs> Yeah, it's like one thing led to another. It's like no. Also, don't, don't besmirch that. That, that. Don't besmirch that snake. He's he's probably an intelligent, thoughtful snake. Just hanging out, and, yeah. and yet he's blaming like everything him. on him. Other I games like that, that look worse and have nowhere near the content do the same. Again, that's what my lizard brain is always grin. asking before I look at pricing <laughs> models, early access, etc. Finally, it's timing. Coming out of COVID, the whole world experienced Not massive up. inflation. Oh my now, God. even though we in the U.S. have had it lighter than most, it did bite into everyone's pocketbook. So this is all no. happening at a time when our entertainment being more expensive, justified or no, no. seems like a little bit of a slap in the face. What a stupid fucking oh. argument. <laughs> wow. Oh like COVID? God. Really? We, we, <laughs> we did all this to blame COVID? But, well, no, well, they tried would... it with movies for a while, Rags. Why not try it with games? Yeah, yeah. I was wow. gonna say, Mahler, like the, the argument, like 
uh, Captain Marvel didn't Captain Marvel two didn't make money in the same year. Barbie and Oppenheimer broke records. It's like it's it's just a stupid. Excuse. It was all the way back to uh, No oh. Way Home destroyed the notion that COVID was uh, yeah. affecting superheroes significantly. It's like no. If people want to see the movie, they'll go see it. COVID. Yeah, exactly. How come we had the right. same oh, problem right. before COVID even happened with all the microtransactions? Well, remember, and he said, and no, but see, it's all tying together, Rags. He made the case that, you know, back in 2019, games were cheaper than they've ever been. Now, the last few years, I have no data, but I presume it's cheaper. <laughs> But the inflation, <laughs> it still makes you feel like it costs more money. You yeah, this, see, yeah. you're irrational. That's what's happening This whole thing here. truly yeah, has you're... felt like it pat, pats you on the head and says, it's okay you feel that way, but you're wrong. Like, okay. Allow me to explain to you. Also, why does the, why does the hand detach from the game console now? It's going to fall Cartridge, off. Cartridge, the box, see? His I mean, arm, right. Yeah. yeah. What happened? Yeah. And also, it's got fingers now. <laughs> when it's this is, this oh, is you definitive know proof they're not ears anymore. So yeah. when when these ear. characters <laughs> when these characters aren't moving their limbs, they like slowly reattach to the body to refuel. <laughs> and then when they have <laughs> to move them, they re detach <laughs> and then like go off and do their thing. <laughs> and then when they have detach, to like, oh, my fingers. Oh, oh my okay, god, I just yeah, realized that's how it works. Friggy, this is the, the, what Dev just said describes the angel monster of the week. It's the guy who could detach his limbs, but they have to return after a certain amount of time to refuel. <laughs> so here's the thing even if what he's saying is completely correct it's still not really a reply to what's going on let's say it actually is all just feelings you know it's like oh it's it's numbers on the sheet it's inflation things aren't actually changing and and you're you just feel like they are even if that's true you're still not like you're just not addressing why they feel that way you know, you're still, still like, okay, you feel this way and you're factually incorrect but you still feel this way and the, the, the reply to that is going to be yeah, but I still feel it. So, what are we gonna do about it? And also, like, should I just ignore? Like, should I just ignore own. my own experience? Like, like, what do you want me to do here? And it's not gonna change just the the the, the dearth of quality in AAA games and how I'm not getting my bang, you know, for my buck out of those. Like, yeah, COVID yeah, or not, inflation it, it, or not, that's actually kind of irrelevant to the the quality differential that I'm seeing well, fairly consistently. Also, the quality is part of the feeling, and it's actually the most important part of the feeling. Right, it's like yeah. I feel like this game sucks, so I'm not gonna buy it. It's like, well, your feelings are kind of irrelevant. It's like, well, hold on, no, they are. Don't aren't. you understand they're, that they they're the most important part in on this game? <laughs> Don't you understand inflation? Like, have fun, damn you! you know, have like, fun. Yeah, like like fun is a feeling, and if you're not having fun with the game, yeah, it's your feelings, but it's still also why you bought the game in the first place. People yeah, pay if a I lot. I'm spending of... seventy bucks and loving every experience. You'd get no complaints from me. People I better pay. feel good when I spend seventy bucks. Yeah, it is my feelings. People will cough up a lot of money if they if they want a certain experience. I mean, people would buy yeah, a PlayStation crack. to play uh, Final Fantasy VII because people had to play Final Fantasy VII. Like that, someone that out game... there bought all that Train Simulator. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> they they were out there. a lot of PS4s. Yeah, no way. A meth addict. Uh, no way there'd be that many DLCs for Train Simulator if they weren't fucking selling. <laughs> they know, they, they know yeah. someone out there. Imagine it. they just keep making them, hoping one hits. <laughs> yeah, well, like, like one guy earlier, in like... Germany in his apartment who's keeping the whole game afloat by himself. <laughs> like I mentioned Commander. before about Tears of the Kingdom, like paying ten bucks more than I normally would for a game. Like I paid it and I had a blast with that game, and like I just I don't regret it. Like it was, just, it's yeah, just same. so much fun. So I felt like I got I my like three hundred hours into it. it. Yeah, it's a great game. So yeah, those are just some thoughts, some musings, if you will. I mean, random, disparate oh, musings without any connecting. Thread well, there was a that connecting thread. Any particular location. Leave alone oh, yeah, the billion dollar corporation. Bad, yeah. What's what? Are, what is going on with the cat? He looks like he's really startled. The cat's a fucker. By... <laughs> no, actually, that's what? their mascot. That's that's like their mascot cat. He's you wearing, up in all right. videos. I was about to say, was that a scarf? But it's just a collar that's purple, like all the way around, and yeah, on the tag. Yeah, that's an odd. Yeah, the, cat is bottle is top. the cat is drawn as if like the guy just cuts across in front of him, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, hey, I'm walking here! Cat. Well, so I'm <laughs> willing to bet that the fucking artwork may have been done in, in the same night the research was, you know what I mean? Like, they I think they rushed it <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> All yeah, of my a little bit, yeah. I, you know what it was? He was like, I spent all night researching, working on this video, and just mostly artwork. 20 that's minutes why the cat's got no nose. How does it smell? Awful. 
<laughs> but like, do you think I'm crazy? Am yes. I the only one that yes. feels like video yes. games are more expensive today, despite all the data to the cut? No, no, no. Oh, it wasn't yeah. data. Oh, it's it's not data. You didn't show the data. Fuck off. Yeah. He's got the papers. Show me the papers. You well, back there with the papers. That they cost you with more the money, despite the evidence to the contrary. I like how we just haven't talked at all about the nature of microtransactions and DLC. And, he mentioned and them for the accounts. He mentioned them. You know, yeah, when it yeah. came down to the evidence, he was like, we'll have that in a future video. <laughs> was it, oh, well, then you can't have this conclusion then. This is, no. yeah, this is like showing up to court saying, my client is innocent. I know he feels guilty, but he's innocent. <laughs> Despite all the evidence. Do you have any evidence to, to prove he's not guilty? Yeah, look at all my that papers over there. will be presented at a later time. I got loads of papers. There's just a guy running around in circles, yeah. dropping all Lish. the papers. <laughs> this is Jimmy. He has the information. Look, look at this fictional everything. illustration of all the stack of data that I have. Like, oh, wow. That's such <laughs> a look, large look, a representation illustrated of the stack. You're not allowed to see Ooh. any of it. Boy, sure also, I'd good. really just like to know what reasons for that you all think we what? missed. So please what let us know what you thought. Oh, we just, you know, we kind of created like a six hour podcast with anything. informative information oh. for you. <laughs> yeah, you didn't well, show anything. Maybe he'll watch it. Yeah. Like, why are yeah. you assuming you, you own this with data and uh, show us what you show us what we missed, guys? We did so shit. Oh, this oh is just ramble. This, this is engagement farming. That's how it works. Every video should do this, right? Yeah. It's like, comment below, and I'll be very interested in checking comment out what you below. have to say. I want to know what you think. And remember to hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe, sure subscribe button if you want some more extra insightful new videos. Extra credits. This video anyone... was brought. Oh right, we have an ad just... read, so that's probably. Oh what yeah, it true. Oh, it's it's actor, right? Support the devs. Oh my god. Human. Is, no, is the like... devs yeah. need to start making not shitty games. Support the devs, the devs that make good, good shit. Games, yeah, so, simple yeah. as that. Yeah. So, yes. so the cat yes. is thinking rather than I want to eat some food and go for a little run. You know, the cat is also yeah, thinking. I don't necessarily really. support the words behind me. He's forced me into this position. I'm blinking twice. I don't know what See, your this is why I have that. Be. I had that tinfoil position earlier, right? Because I know that the the political alignment of the devs is all a certain way. I know that the political alignment of these guys is a certain way. A bunch of them just got laid off. They're all talk, talk, talking on Twitter about how terrible it is. The big evil corporation laid them off. They can't afford to hire us anymore. It must be those evil gamers' fault. Well, it can't we be that gamers we are right wing. Not anyone blaming the yeah. gamers. Well, yeah. Whenever the gamers are getting yelled at, nine times out of ten, it's lefty leaning people doing it but why doesn't it yeah. why does it say support the devs instead of support the multi-billion dollar corporations <laughs> i am supporting are, the yeah. devs, devs that are making indie games big, and double a games i am supporting gonna be them. a big beneficiary of uh of this push for like yes ubisoft charge 80 dollars for the video game well, please the moral <laughs> yeah. imperative the implication is like i should spend all my money on every single dev that's currently working just to make sure they, as if, they are supported as if any product that you ever buy ever in your life isn't going to be funding somebody's life somewhere in exactly. some way shape or form. every industry where's, every where's the support buy. the writers support the directors support the every just fucking like, person in every industry the yeah. retail yeah. workers by going I, to like walmart <laughs> you know support see, them by spending lots of money at a walmart store i actually did hear a bunch of that um mauler N not what you said Frank. i don't think i gonna give it gave a shit about the the retail workers but in terms of like support the writers i've seen a lot of that when it oh came yeah to those writer strikes with the writer strike that yeah. was all over the place that's the yeah. thing well and the same and I, thing was said on these streams i'm going to support the writers that do good work yeah it's never their oblig it's never you don't there, get there's support never an obligation just... to them to make better stuff it's our fault because we're not just throwing money yeah at you don't have access to all of our money yeah. just because you chose a particular career that's not how that works you need to be good yeah, at it it's my money not yours so, so... Yeah. Whenever I've like I've gotten into like a a, a debate with some with, with some lefty, usually on Twitter, but sometimes on stream, like on someone's channel or something, and I've kind of done this sort of thing. And the few times this topic has come up, the the logic they've always given me has been something like, "Well, they are the cre they are the creators of of culture right now, and they do have the correct politics, so they're going to push the correct politics. So we have an obligation to support them, whether or not the products they make are actually good or fun or interesting Boring. because they're politically correct. And I'm just like, I don't want to give you my money for your fucking propaganda. I don't care <laughs> if you think I'm immoral for doing so. Fuck you. Well, I wouldn't uh, want to do that with anything I agree with anyway. It's got to be like, just because if someone said like, you have every position I have, no, support everything I do. I'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wasn't there, it, there was the, uh, what was it, who's that guy that was talking about uh, God of War? Um, Jaffe? 
Synthetic Man. Oh okay. yeah. Oh, people oh, were like yeah. saying like, but he's yeah. on your team, guys. Like, what? <laughs> hey, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm changing teams. <laughs> oh man, I saw someone sent me a stream clip of him, and he's like, man, that SFO guy, like, he he he's pretty smart, and he gets some things right. But he just doesn't talk about the Jews enough. And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said the same thing about uh, Critical know, Drink. Uh, it's so funny. You know, Dev, you can, you can hang out with us anyway, Dev. We'll, we'll allow it. We'll, we'll support we'll you. Look, we'll, we'll look past it for now. Well, see, when they say support the devs, they're talking about Dev himself. That's what this means. Oh, That's right. Support me. That's what this all means. Ad, we gotta, we gotta see the ad read. Let's do we, it. What, we just what, came in here to remind me that maybe I should just start shopping on itch.io. But my mama did teach me. You never go shopping on an empty stomach. Oh, there you man. go. And that goes uh, double for video games, nice okay? Good thing I can... Support your sponsorships. Oh <laughs> Get a great right. tasting meal ready super quick thanks to Factor. Factor, of course, Wait, being my he favorite. He has more ready... effort here than in the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, have you like noticed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, more he effort animated, in the animation. He's stopping here. Yeah, like in the other parts, he was just still images. Now, hey guys, time to show my sponsor. And have um, you ever anime? felt that Factor is now cheaper than it's ever been? Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like shut the fuck up. The second he starts with a word of any guys, the meal really delivery good. service that I've been using for a year and a half. Whoa, what is this? Oh Damn. my gosh, that's so Half-man. much. Each my God! Their meals is it's ready in just two minutes with no mess, no prep. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's clearly a different artist. It's an old <laughs> ad if they use. Yeah. It might be. Yeah, uh, it could be that. Yeah. It's just funny how much more effort there is for the ad. <laughs> it's just <laughs> mess, no prep, and my absolute favorite, no cleanup. Just really great food ready when I have time to eat it. It's seriously the least stressful yeah, part man. of my day, and I'm actually I, super I don't, thankful we, for it. We've talked about it a little bit, but seriously, like the line delivery is so grating. <laughs> like, can you stop God, doing he, it? His like, voice it. sucks. He yeah. said, "He said eating." It's like making factor is the least stressful part of your day. Like the least stressful what part is of happening your day in your is day? <laughs> waiting for a microwave to <laughs> heat up your food. How would you? Matter, you wouldn't survive in another century. Regular cooking for you. How stressful is it when you regularly cook food? You know what was so you stressful? Measure... A whole night of animating and researching. Okay, that was stressful. Yeah. He needed. He needed if food making to food down. is. I never <laughs> cooking. Well, making be food stressful. would be stressful in like a Michelin star restaurant. I, I or guess any maybe restaurant, yeah. But, you know. have guests coming over. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah like I if you're bad. making food for a lot of people, or you bought like a really expensive piece of steak or something, and you're a little nervous that you didn't want to mess it up. But like this is this. What is it? Is this goop in a tray that you throw in a microwave? That's what I, was, I was about to mention it. Like I feel bad for the artist, like trying to animate this. It's like, hmm, this is some great green schloop. <laughs> It's like well, trying to make that appetizing. <laughs> Has anyone here had Factor? Nope. Uh, I've no, never I've heard never of them until now. I think I've Each seen an ad for them once somewhere. I get to review Factor's like... rotating menu and pick what I'm feeling from their tons of seasonal meals and add-on options. Things like cold-pressed juices, protein shakes, oh, wellness shots, cat. and smoothies which continue to smash my cat. expectations. They have so many options to choose. Wow, he looks exactly like I imagined he would. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how I can always be sure that everyone in my house yeah, gets the sleep that they love fast. And with spring in hey, full swing, I went with their the, spicy the sweet the potatoes and peanut sauce, which is now- that doesn't Wow, that looks- kidding me? That that become one of my- Look at that. Yeah, look, it's beautiful. Look, Man. Let's Your put it this way. It looks healthy. It, yeah, it looks, <laughs> yeah. So my, it, it does look like your average, uh, you know, TV dinner or whatever, right? Or just, you know, you heat up a meal from, from, from Frozen. It's just factor. It's the slot Yeah, factory. I looked it up. It's $12 a meal. What? Uh, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, wait, $12, you, $12 like a no, month and you get shot. meals? Or what, do you, what do you mean? No, no, no. Ready-made meals starting at $12 per meal. I don't know. Oh, no yeah, that was twelve dollars you're looking at, boys. <laughs> that's got to oh, be wrong. Dude. I don't believe it. it, it, it that's, no, that's, no that's, way. Dev is lying. If, if true, that is Dev particularly is a liar. about you know the he cost of games and everything. And it's like you know what's going to help gonna, you with all of that quick. inflation and all of these costs? Twelve dollars. <laughs> twelve dollars for a meal you could probably get out of a fucking vending machine. Plans. Here, just give me, just give me a second, okay, guys. I'm gonna. Well, wait, if you don't mind. 
Mars. You carry on. He's, He's going to take all fetch, day. Let fetch him do your it. data. Uh, I want to get to the end of his ad add. to see what his prices yeah. are. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Go Absolute ahead. new faves. I'm going to be reordering that one. And since I didn't have to cook a whole meal from scratch, I was actually able to camp the PlayStation Direct site and finally snag a PlayStation portal at cost. Aha, <laughs> take that. Oh, oh my God. Fuck. Get on with it. Dude. Oh, it's so it's the worst PlayStation product. The PlayStation portal, the Wi-Fi doesn't even work sometimes. This the, is like the a portal? The PlayStation yeah. portal? What is that? Is that yeah. like a... It's you like a that? stream like... gameplay from your PlayStation 5 to your handheld, basically, if you're on a Wi-Fi yeah. connection. That's oh, that is. sounds like something I'll never do. Factor75.com yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. or click the link below and use our code extra. 50% off your first factor. Week. Please tell me he's going to include the actual prices and he's not just going to say no, you get money never off. Do. Credit no, 50 to get 50% off your price. first factor box and 20% off your next four boxes. Wait, for real? Oh. Heck yeah. So now it's Tasty oh, Test time. Dude. Get fast and flavorful yeah, meals at a yeah. deep discount right here. And then once dinner is done, check out our next sweet... No. Oh. Okay, so oh. I did put in... I did put in the, the meal plans link if you want to take a look at them real quick. For 18 meals, it comes out as uh, $225. What? Six I'm meals sure. is $81 before tax. So price per... Oh, price per serving, $13.5 per... Yeah, that ain't cheap. Don't forget $10 like, delivery. Guys, look, I... <laughs> you, you guys, everyone, y'all need to get into the... For those of you who aren't, and thank God my parents sort of like instilled this into me at an early age. But you need to like make it a regular thing cool. to go to the grocery store cool. and like buy some food and make it yourself because it's going to be better for you and it's going to be so much cheaper. Yep. I yeah. can't imagine fourteen dollars a meal as like that can't be normal. The the efficiency at which you could create your own meals with the money spending on this shit is insane. I know that that's the whole appeal. Oh, you don't have any dishes and you can you don't have to do any cooking yeah, time, but talking about but you can have a pan. Video games, everything Dude. like that, you know, you <laughs> All you need is you have a <laughs> you have a bowl to mix stuff in. You have a pan to grill it and then you have a plate to eat it on. And it's like yeah. you can't fuck it up. You just chop Rags. up a bunch of veggies, it's grill stressful. them, season them. Rats, yeah, you know, yeah, you know I might touch the Rats. stove with my face. Rats, <laughs> my so, listen, just because your wallet is currently being raped by game prices and inflation doesn't mean you can't spend twelve fucking dollars per meal. As long as I get some of it, I guess. Well, this is this is per box? week. So, uh, how much if, is in one box? So, if you get this discount, does that mean you get fifty percent off like one meal and then twenty percent off four meals, or are there multiple well, yeah. meals per box? How much? How much is in a box? Hold on. Yeah, how many, okay. how many the is cheapest. In? Yeah, it looks like the cheapest you can get a meal is if you buy eighteen meals oh, per you week. Have to get that's oh, eleven. Okay, right. That makes sense. So the box, so the minimum you can get is six. And that's okay. the most expensive, which yeah. is which is what I clicked just because I'd be like, okay, I'd I'd want like six meals a week. Sounds probably good, especially if you're kind of watching. Especially if you're, you know, you're not really moving around. You you don't want to eat too much and everything. All right, six meals a week. And then I'll just do something else on the seventh day or I'll have leftovers or whatever. And that's the most expensive. If you want to have... How come these fuckers, these fucky fuckers oh don't have... No, fuck them. How come they don't have an option for seven meals per week? It feels it's weird, awkward, doesn't it? Right? Yeah, you can have awkward. six or eight. Don't eat on there weekends are for there some are reason. seven days in a week, last time I checked. And there is not a seven meals well, Rags, per week option. You're in luck. They have a fourteen package. There you go. Boy, oh yeah, boy, that was, that's uh, like it's funny that you said that. That was making me think about how with microtransactions, you know how it's never a clean number. Nope. Yeah, it's always, like, nope. yeah, just know what you need. Yeah. Proxy yeah. currency, yeah. yeah. Proxy. Oh, justice. dude, the amount of times yeah. um, there'll be a store that sells like, let's say, there's standard skins and legendary skins. Standard skins are all five dollars, and then legendary are all ten. And you're like, all right, I need to buy some gems for in-game currency, and it's like, yeah, sure, five dollars for four. You know, like just under the actual. <laughs> Skin price yeah. was down. You're like, exactly. okay, so I have to buy. Like, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> always, it's always a little bit we'll less or you. more than the price of any oh, yeah. given item. We'll sell you yeah. two weeks of food, but you can't buy a week. Can they just food. install a hose yeah. that shoots the slop out instead? Like, it, it, <laughs> it feels like it'd be more efficient. So, so yeah, I you, do, you don't, you don't understand, weeks, guys. Though. You don't understand, guys. The pricing for this is because of COVID just hit. So that's why we have to have these prices. $100. It was put in my email yeah. to get started. You can. 
you have to understand it's because Disney is failing that this is happening and the video game industry is about to <laughs> crash. That's why this is happening. If only if only COVID didn't happen and I could get my uh, my my factor meals at under what well, yeah, was exactly. the cheapest eleven dollars per serving if I buy eighteen meals per week. The last thing I need is eat eighteen meals per week. You'd have to be like I guess if you're buying for multiple people and none of you can cook your own food or will go to the grocery store or it will be like never an adult. not be cheaper than just going to the store getting stuff on sale like getting Chicken meats and on sale pork is and, like and, cheap and, and vegetables up. are cheap well especially if you're looking for sales if you're just looking for you know it might not be yeah. the cut you want, but those sales can just yeah add i up. never go to the grocery store knowing what dead animal i'll walk out with but there's always something they're trying to get rid of there's always a sale there's always stuff they're trying to move around and that's what i get yeah, it we buy in bulk, normally go to a big bulk store. Normally it's chicken or pork, and there's a lot you could do with both of those, and you could always get something else. There's always cheap fish that you can get. There's always, you know, a steak here and there. I, I don't yeah, know, I don't, I, like, I don't want to fall into the... You don't want to make I, it a normal thing that a meal is, you know, $12, 13 14 Well, yeah, that adds up. Um, yeah. And if, if you're cooking for yourself, dishes are not a big deal either. You can get that all, yeah. all that done you in can, like 10 you can minutes wash at most. all your dishes while your food's yeah. cooling down. Yep. I want to play true. that video that Dev uh, linked us, and then I want to see Nintendo shit cube, man. Right? Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, wait. This is going to be copyrighted oh, this might music. Be, this might be copyrighted music. Yeah, that's oh, just, just, just mute it. Just mute it. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, mute it. It's okay. I've muted, so, so you guys, I, you guys can keep it know. on, Dory. Oh, okay, I gotcha. So, so that he's he's winning That's on cool. uh, skins or something, isn't it? FIFA? Yep. This is loot box in FIFA. What game is this? FIFA, yeah. FIFA 2017. Yeah. Oh. I, yeah. Look at and he's selling out about I it. Became famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hope it was worth it. That was performative. He meant to do that. <laughs> He meant to throw the chair. I don't know if he meant to destroy the monitor, though, or TV. Yeah, He's throwing a I chair agree. around. To yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think he meant to hit the it. TV. People yeah. are very good at fucking around and not so good when it comes to the finding out. So I'll yeah. buy it. He's right, you know. This listen, listen, Rags, it's still real to me, damn it. This is reminding me of all those montages of people playing Nintendo Wii. Oh, uh, yeah, they're flinging their fucking controller into their TVs. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. So many TVs. Good times. I remember Good times. one of them where, I don't know what was going on, but there was this one kid who was like a steel baseball bat, and I guess he was like, yeah, I'll hold my Wii remote there with the baseball bat. And now that flew with the TV. That we are about to delve into a past that has not only been long forgotten, it's been long forgotten by those who long forgot the long forgetting of. This is like, this is so early, it's hard to exact. It was re uploaded 11 years ago. So it's old. Some all right? deep lore. And there, there was a time Shit. where AVGN was like the king of influence on media review, along with The Critic being nostalgic. Those two are oh, titans. They led to so much yeah. of uh, industry growth in so many ways. But they had a lot of copycats. One of the most famous would be Irate Gamer copying AVGN, but lots of other people were inspired. And one of those people is called the Pissed Off Video Gamer, which is a great name, I think. It really captures what he's going for. And this. As opposed to angry, this guy's pissed off. He's pissed off. <laughs> yes. He's ready to fucking get in. And, and you know what? I way prefer this compared to. I don't know when it happened, but the video essayist sort of um, oh, craze. High and mighty and hoity toity. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they reference one person with one quote from a book they said is amazing and that everyone should oh, read. You know, and then they cry Mark's about how blah, blah, blah. And it's 10 minutes and then there's a better help ad. Like they're all the fucking same. This. <laughs> This was from a time where as much as they're kind of ripping off AVGN, they they bring their own personality, okay? And there is... Look at this. <laughs> we had this much oh, age in this guy. video. Oh, oh my god. We're already in for a fucking treat. You don't know what's gonna happen. I think oh, this is his intro, which by the way... Sugar he's drinking. Back then, that was another element of this that was always so fucking wonderful. You can see Remnants be making fun of the whole intro craze. They totally died out, by the way. Everyone's got, like, artistic intros or none at all these days. But back then, right. 
Oh, dubstep? Yes. All of it. Oh, Put yeah. It in. <laughs> dubstep intros, yeah. I find that still a thing, yeah. Is it playing? Does it need to be playing? Hello? Wait, is it not playing for you? It no, it's playing. Just what the fuck's happening? Oh, it, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't playing for me. Let me reload my page. Okay, well, it worked for I just me. Saw... Yeah. yeah, I just saw Mario. Mario for some reason. Yeah, this is. Okay, I think this is, happens happens is his happens intro, happens. Happens. which is okay. Oh, expertly. This is the intro. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Mario giving in. All right. Well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> giving up. Did you fuck that up? for being mega mangy. <laughs> oh, oh god. Am I time traveling? Wow. Yes, you are. Like, we're going tough, angry, hardcore We're going back before the back before the back before. Yeah, man. These are the preset little text, you know, things. I don't know if this would be copyrighted. This is Windows, definitely two thousands, mid two thousands. Assume yeah, that it is. Many songs that used to be royalty free aren't anymore, so just uh, assume it is. Oh, the stop again. This is my PlayStation Two. This is my Xbox One. <laughs> this is my <laughs> Xbox Three Sixty. <360. laughs> Has he this... got a broom? Has he got a broom handle? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is he using a yeah. broom handle to yeah. point to Rags, the He it's, can't it's point to it. Yeah. Yeah. This is my <laughs> Xbox 360. Why is he talking Russian? Yeah. <laughs> he said this... Xbox One. And I Have was like, some what? fucking respect. This is the pissed off video gamer. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right here. <laughs> What? Is my PlayStation PS3? 3? <laughs> is my PlayStation <laughs> 3? This is PlayStation 3. Uh, this is, a, by the way, PlayStation. This is how you know he's an expert. You understand. He knows his shit. And this is what, what I like to call <laughs> the Nintendo Shit Cube. <laughs> cube. <laughs> shit Cube. What I like to call. Oh, it's perfect. And the reason I call it the Nintendo Shit Cube because it's a piece of fucking shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, it, it does follow right. The original <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> Entertainment <laughs> System sucks <laughs> because he had to perform a certain amount of blowjobs on the cartridges what the <laughs> in order for the games to work. Why are you pausing? I can't stop. It won't, it won't stop on my end. It just kept going. I'm not pausing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it's it's being floompy for me. Watch together. Hold it. Hold yourself together for just another. I don't know. Ten minutes. All right. That's all we need. And then you can go crazy. No, it means I can. Nintendo sleep shit cube. Nintendo shit cube. All right. <laughs> oh my god. I, I saw the guy. The guy is oh, very no. handsome. I would say. Your mother. Uh, oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> so He's like Baron Harkonnen. <laughs> he he looks like the. the... He looks like the character from Smiling Friends, the guy who wanted to kill himself in the very, very first episode. That's what he looks like. I shoot myself to watch. <laughs> 10 out of 10 audio. In this. Also, yeah, the audio is just so horrifically bad. I, I, love, I love the mythological, like, grandiosity he gets from being obscured by the fucking garbage quality. Like, <laughs> with the man behind the oh, You cannot yeah, gaze upon his the... true visage. I'm scared of the voids in both of his eyes. This man can only be described as landscape oriented. You That's... can't see his eyes. He's a darkest dungeon character. <laughs> so that so darkness in his eyes was created by the <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> shit cube. So many years I to play it. He looks like a he looks like a character from a uh, Corpse Bride. Yes, yes, yeah. The darkened eyes. That's uh, like I said. Just he's been those, through so much. Just, it's not just the darkened eyes. It's just the inhuman, bizarre shape of him as a person. I mean, there, there, there's a couple people that would match in in uh, in Corpse Bride. Sure, need some long people now as well. Original Nintendo Entertainment 
Sir Song <laughs> thought because he had to perform a certain amount of blowjobs on the cartridges in order for the games to work. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> oh why, why don't you just wait there while I get comfortable? <laughs> and then... I'm, I'm so happy I'm not this fat. Uh, uh, yeah, I think most people feel like, that way. He got tired of yelling, which was the only exercise he had all week. Well, we'll and then he tomorrow. decided to lay back in his chair with a big cup of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's intentional. Cause putting, making blowjobs on the cartridges—that's fucking brilliant to get he's, them to work. He's got a style. Nintendo, uh, they release their second console, the Super Nintendo. Now that was a very good. Now that was a good system. That was a very good system. It, it, um, it feels tiring to watch him. It's like he's running out of breath again. every time he talks. Uh, well, yeah, when you're that size, tomorrow. like just speaking. Well, he wants you to know whether he's, he's fair. He's, he's saying breath. the uh, you know, there's there's other consoles released that were pretty good, but he's not just a Nintendo hater. He's trying to make this clear. Uh, the, the fires oh. of industry in his background <laughs> noise as well. Like it's sending. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> the games. They did not freeze, and the games, <laughs> they did not stop while you were playing. Yeah, huh? And, uh... <laughs> he fell asleep for a second there, you saw that. He has apnea while he's still awake. He has deep apnea while he's awake. Like, he just <laughs> falls asleep, and then, he... oh my god. He just suddenly wakes up, he's like, oh shit, I'm making a video, fuck. <laughs> I will perform. cut this out in post. <laughs> Be clear, the dark eyes actually make him look really creepy. On ironic, yeah, I'm telling you, he's it's like actually it's... quite terrifying. He's a creepy. Hey, he's pasta. played. He's played so many shit games on the Nintendo shit cube. His mm -hmm. eyes have become. My solid. eyes are but shadows. <laughs> of my prior life. I peer only into the darkness of Nintendo shit cube. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Nintendo, they release the third video game console, <laughs> the Nintendo 64. Now that also easy. was a very good system, it didn't have full motion video, what? it wasn't bad for 90s system. It wasn't bad for 90 <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Did he say, did he say it? I'll think about picking one so, up. Explain to me why this man wasn't funded completely back to front. Why did he get a TV show? I know, right? You just send, like, know, pilgrims yeah. up into the mountains to go and hear his wisdom and bring it back to the rest of us. <laughs> what oh, do you have to say about this? <laughs> Is Zarathustra come down from the <laughs> Please, the provide world. your wisdom on the, 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 the Microsoft <laughs> shitbox. <laughs> I said I said the shit tube, and it's YouTube stares had no monetization me. back then. It was tough. Okay. <laughs> exactly, this poor yeah. guy. YouTube made money off him. This guy, was, how it this guy was just wasting away. They came down and they laughed at him. They laughed at him. Yeah. <laughs> they laughed at him. <laughs> Nintendo shit cube, he said, and they laughed. <laughs> and he fell and rolled. And then, Nintendo releases <laughs> the fourth video game console. The oh, they've invoked his wrath. He's angry. Oh, oh, <laughs> he oh, he oh shit. He he <laughs> oh, shit. He's faster than he is. He couldn't, he couldn't do it. He, he, he <laughs> reached for his... No. I can't he had to reach. Turn, he, he had to swivel his chair. <laughs> He couldn't lean forward, he had to swivel no, the chair around. Well, no, 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 he, he knew how to edit the videos to cut out the parts where he's having trouble, but not the parts where he's thinking about what he's no, this we can. He took so, so yeah, long is... to sit up, he had to cut it out. <laughs> he couldn't reach it from the... <laughs> That's that amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> The Nintendo shit cube. It's <laughs> another one. That's a, oh, is that the same one or a different one? It's like a different same one, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. One, I think, I think it's different. Yeah, they're both silver. They're both silver. <laughs> okay, okay. By the way, He's what a wonderful 
fucking result of people trying to make things work by copying other people. You know what I mean? Like, today it's boring and, like, sludgy, but to, like, back mm -hmm. then, oh, this is fucking hilarious. This is, this is <laughs> peerless euphoria. Yeah. Cinema. Now, the reason I call it the Nintendo <laughs> Shit Cube because you already said that. Yeah, you said it earlier. Because it's a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's a piece of shit. Because it's shit. There can be there are layers to this, I guess. Yeah. Because. <laughs> Take a look at the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Look at the what, what size of it? this disc. Behold, it's a pathetic, <laughs> it's a pathetic size. I like that he thinks it's, it's self-explanatory. Like three <laughs> donuts. It's just bad. Oh, yeah. shit! Is the shit cube? This is a Nintendo GameCube game. <laughs> What's wrong with it? <laughs> yeah. He's thinking about why it's bad. <laughs> yeah. He's trying, yeah. He's trying to come up with a reason. <laughs> That would make that would make sense that it was in the GameCube. The fact that it's a GameCube game that that does check out. It's obviously it's bad, bad Rags. Obviously. No, I'm I'm following. I'm picking up what he's putting down. <laughs> I'm with him. This looks like a fucking chocolate chip cookie. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's so true. All true. that I can think about. Yeah, that, see, that for me is a core memory. I saw this when it released. The chocolate chip cookie line just sent me into fucking stitches. <laughs> the <laughs> diameter yeah. does check out. It has the diameter of a chocolate chip cookie. It is round. Sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, what else do you need? Oh, what a legend. <laughs> He's so right. And plus... <laughs> He's still thinking, He's thinking about really what? hard about this. Like, what damn. plus? <laughs> What's a wisdom? Staring into the easily. abyss <laughs> right now. Yeah. 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 Staring back. Yeah, yeah. Why the shit cube is staring back at me. <laughs> I gave it to the shit cube. <laughs> shit cube. <laughs> Like, back the weight of the reevaluation of all values is not like a light burden to carry, okay? So, <laughs> not no burden he carries is light. <laughs> he carries it for us all. You can, hear him, you can hear him like breathing. Yeah. Like, you know, what are you doing? Now. It's such a thoughtful <laughs> thing. Like, all you have to do is <gasps> fuck this. Up. Put it back the way you uh, put it back the way you got it. It makes it feel like his like, thoughts have to literally line, cut it out. walk from his brain to his mouth in slow motion. No, like, we're getting you there. Can't, you can't cut this, Dev. This is good stuff. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Graphics by ATI. A <laughs> graphics by ATI. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, a ATI was the uh, the company that AMD bought, and they're the predecessor to the AMD Radeon, Radeon. whatever. Yeah, yeah, they contributed to the chipset for the console. You have to understand what happened. Set. He didn't know about graphics by ATI. He just I spotted it. <laughs> I'm surprised he can spell what? ATI. I just love how much it shocks him. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> Something's yeah, written in yes. here. Something is right. Fuck you, Etty. <laughs> yeah? Right, yeah don't. See, look, what, what the, the fuck, fuck is ATI? <laughs> the way he the says, what the fuck? ATI, <laughs> <laughs> my ass. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> it was ATI was dissolved in an instant. ATI, <laughs> my ass. ATI, my ass. They're all just blown away by distress. This is what we call facts and logic. Explosive <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> you just knocked the Manhattan right. ATI. <laughs> the Nintendo GameCube. It has good graphics. But wait, I thought I thought you just wait. wait, wait. You said <laughs> shit. By wait, wait. You said my ass. <laughs> you just so, said my ass. 
<laughs> also, why is he rubbing it on his mouth? <laughs> he's <laughs> hungry. He's <laughs> hungry. He's hungry. He's hungry. He wants to eat it. He wants to eat it. It's been I moments since it. he's eaten. He's 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 hungry. He's thinking about that cookie now. He, you know? wait, wait, the, well, the way it's paused, he's, he like it looks like he's licking the GameCube. Yeah. Mm. I mean, don't <laughs> I, I, I am going to shit. eat Nintendo shit cube. I think we all lick our GameCubes. <laughs> I know I do. I know you do. <laughs> no. Yeah, you do. Nice hard work. No. All that we graphics, all, all that hard work. They included the. They made the fucking system so small that you cannot even play DVDs on it. <laughs> you can't oh, no. play Damn. DVDs. On it's it. true. No, what? It's not wrong. Wait, right? well, I guess you'll have to. I guess DVDs. you'll have to. Play the DVD in one of the seven other devices that you have. Under yeah, the well, <laughs> where exactly was gone. the lie? He just he that was Wait, objective. Yeah. What he just said. The man, oh, I guess the man <laughs> technically. Yeah. Okay. Can you can't see the mirror DVDs. behind him? Yeah, yeah. yeah look, look behind him. Look, look, look yeah. behind him in the mirror. There's that tiny little chair he's sitting on. <laughs> Yeah, I fucking love it. Giving us the reverse chop, you know. No, dude, that's <laughs> I'm telling quality. you, the chop composition. And we can't instruction. tell if he's wearing anything below the waist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. No. Probably wearing some tent or awning or something. <laughs> no, the PlayStation 2 they sold more than the GameCube because. It had a DVD. It's a DVD. <laughs> and that's true. Oh yeah. <laughs> the thing I is, mean, we, oh, we're yeah. like four and a half minutes into this video, and I feel like he said about 12 words. <laughs> He's <laughs> getting there, Rex. Right? Give him time. Genius that's takes true. He doesn't look like a speed demon. <laughs> I just love, by you the way, it's like though? the PS2 won because it had the DVD aspect. It's like, you know, it's it's not insignificant. It's an element. Sure. No. Yeah. Uh, so that here's was the thing. one of the selling I'm, points. Uh, I'm pretty sure this video has more factual information so far than the previous one. It has a, a CD the size of a chocolate chip. Cookie. I mean, like, you literally <laughs> pulled the thing over to show I, I, my I, I certainly disagree yeah. with the shit cube thing, but look, all right, at least he's <laughs> arguing with That's, that's what we call flavor, okay? What he said yeah, is yeah. absolutely <laughs> true. Your opinion. And another similarity this has to the extra credits video is that I also cannot imagine a skeleton inside of him. Well, it's wriggling in there. <laughs> but, and I like this guy feels more sincere than anything extra credits has said any, at any point. Well, this, yeah. the, uh, and we yeah. can see like the the there. core primary data, the research happening in real time. He's looking down and he's spotting yeah. what's written on it. That's excellent. That's that's. I think if more yeah, people were like this man, the world would be a better place. This thing is a chocolate chip cookie, not a DVD. This thing can't play DVDs. <laughs> well, one thing yeah, I know for sure, there would be no wars if we were all like them. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> one thing I know for sure, this guy's ordering the 18 factor meals. <laughs> per day this or the what? almost food. <laughs> Drive. <laughs> I love these cuts. <laughs> you have no idea how much time has passed. He's like, I, I have an additional point. It's, I need, I need the light. Seventeen minutes later, he's caught his breath. Yeah. He's ready to make his two sentences. Yeah. Oh, Wait, it's, like it's, it's dark outside. <laughs> Can you go back five seconds? Yes. No, yeah. the PlayStation Two. They sold more. Oh, no, wait, than a little bit more. A little, more. A little bit more. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Here. Okay, let's play it now. So small that you cannot even play DVDs on it. Now the PlayStation 2 they sold more than the GameCube because it had a DVD. True. Drive. Drive. I don't want to drive. Really traffic. Because okay. it had a DVD. So drive. drive. <laughs> when, okay. When that cut happened. There was like a significant change in the light in the room. Yeah, so he, I think yeah. he actually needed like a half an hour just like he needed to catch his breath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, the yeah, sun actually angle. shifted. You know when he did his? Um, up, I don't know if you caught it. <laughs> it shifted, yeah. When he did, uh, when he said it was a fucking piece of shit uh, near the beginning of the, the video, he actually repeated that line in slow motion. I don't know if we actually caught that because I was going to say as a stylistic yeah. choice, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like repetitious <clears throat> information. Like I said, we're four and a half minutes well, in. Well, it, it's like, like Zack Snyder's work. It lets words. you capture the emotion in case you missed it. 
Oh Ooh, yeah, no syllable it. goes to waste. Mm -hmm. no or... Random <laughs> selections yeah. of the cuts for it to just be nighttime, unexplainably. But he hasn't moved from his position. <laughs> oh, so you wonder Dude, how many in the middle of a sentence cutting to nighttime and then back to daytime. Like this, we took. <laughs> <laughs> this is a multiple day project. <laughs> this is. It took him all weekend to shoot this. I was gonna say maybe maybe it was a new day, but I'm like, oh no, he's wearing the same shirt. But I'm no, I'm not so sure that was a problem. Maybe he just wearing, the same <laughs> <laughs> he's been wearing that shirt for weeks now like i said the nintendo gamecube it has good graphics good <laughs> hardware but, but the but playstation 2 is way much more better <laughs> Yo, <laughs> way much more better. Jeez. Way much more better. Much more better. Way there. much more better. It is way <laughs> much more better oh, guys. Okay. In case you're not he's, yeah. he's looking at that GameCube like a homeless man looks at a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god. god awful piece of shit. <laughs> hey, it's good hardware, nice. but it's great. a god awful piece of shit. It's good hardware. So won't play DVDs. <laughs> good DVDs. Not DVD. Not play DVD. That's why I hate the wife. She not play DVD. <laughs> Did he want to play a DVD? Uh, this hatred is like, where is this going from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's the thing. Brain have no thoughts. You, usually we can get a good it, idea of why he's, someone's mad at a thing. You can find a motivation. But like he hasn't even talked about a game he hated or anything. He's just... Yeah. He's just the shit yeah. cute. No, Mahler... It's, star, it's more but... confusing because he's like saying good graphics, good system, but no DVD. <laughs> no <laughs> DVD, damn you. No DVD and no DVD. In my ass. So it's, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> shit cube, but no play DVD. Like I, I feel like he's really angry about it, but the way he's telling us his point, I'm just mock. It's just funny. That's just raw passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just he is angry. He is upset. He has. Thoughts, yeah. feelings, and emotions. He's a person. That's what this is. It's he's art. He's expressing himself, and it is, let's be honest, a better fucking time on YouTube. Yeah. This is yeah. oh, pure fuck yeah. <laughs> this is fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. it was. The um the the deep dev lore is that I actually started as one of these guys, you know, 13 years ago. And I have like a like a fondness for just being someone's ripoff. Or no, being a, a ripoff of someone, because I was a ripoff of someone. But hey, you get started somewhere, right? Yeah. Yep. You're either Usually someone, how it does start for a lot of someone's people. Someone's ripoff. Inspired, yeah. and then you, you know, carve out your own little personality, your own little niche. Like this guy's yeah. clearly carved out his own thing. This isn't AVG anymore. This is yes. he's got his own thing. <laughs> My yeah. father is Danny DeVito Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> My mother, I don't know. <laughs> you leave me with GameCube, which is shit. <laughs> If you look underneath your GameCube, As we all you do. see that. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Is there a cookie in there? Mm -hmm. Some nerds, maybe? It has. Uh huh. A separate modem. The modem is sold separately. <laughs> what? The what? The, the modem, modem is sold so separately? Separate. The bug the in the PlayStation 2. It had a built-in modem. Oh, oh that's... modem? <laughs> Is he oh, saying yeah. modem? Yeah. yeah. Modem? He's saying modem, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was a number of things you could plug into the base of the GameCube. One of them was a network adapter. One of them was like a Game Boy Advance player. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a few mm. things. Yep. Yep. Oh, DLC and season passes. Yeah, I know. Excellent. Terrible. He's off like again. He's, he's falling asleep. Yeah. He's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he returns. Sorry, to the orange juice make me very... The shirt is bursting. Like, the yeah, it's, you is, know. Like, trying to pop out of the shirt. That shirt is a trooper. It's doing a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> the chair, the shirt. Everyone's holding up this whole production. <laughs> he's truly no. a might just, He might have just put buttons in his... <laughs> bed sheets. Dude, this, 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 yeah. Can I just say, because Rags brought it up and I, and I can't unsee it, this man is actually terrifying. That screenshot with the right yeah. amount of blur, look at that face. <laughs> He's about to raise his eyes up and they'll be like... I know, it, it really is crazy, but like, see, there is a skeleton in there. 
There There's are a whole <laughs> skeleton potentially a demon in, in there. I don't know what's going on. You know, you see that oh, in the yeah, dark corner. Might be. He might be the, like the Oogie Boogie Man, where it's oh, all just, just yes. bugs. It's just bugs. What if he looks up? Oh my God! Whoa! Oh, whoa! Whoa! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't get to whoa. see it. Watch the guy lagged. I'm Let's so go. sorry. We gotta go back. We gotta go back. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> the, the simmering no. rage. No. Why the fuck would Nintendo make a modem for Nintendo's GameCube <laughs> if you cannot play online multiplayer games? Oh, see, that's a good point. If that's oh, true. That, oh, yeah, that's he's over there now. There's like two. There's like two games. So fair enough. How yeah, did that happen? Kind of a, how, did the, as, how did this happen? That's kind Fair of a good point. point, because I thought there were some games for GameCube you could actually play online, like Mario Kart Double Dash, but then I heard from somebody that there were actually only online leaderboards for that game. There wasn't actually an right. online multiplayer mode. So uh, I wonder um, if, like, besides Fantasy Star Online, if there were any games that were actually multiplayer for the GameCube online. What you're I saying like is Double that Dash is this... fastest ever moved. This this review is very good, is what you're saying. This is pretty top notch right now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Banana. Why so, not GameCube Two Online? It is shit cube. It is piece of shit. <laughs> I actually kind Don't of I, I did all this stuff back back in the day because I actually had like all this all, yeah, you all the online stuff for this. No, no, no. I don't mean I don't mean oh, the movie. No. I don't mean the fucking video. I mean the, the GameCube stuff. Okay. Oh, so I had, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the only online game for the GameCube was Fantasy Star Online. That was it. Everything else oh. was local LAN. So like they, there was like Mario Kart and there was like a Kirby game that was local and there was like a snowboarding game, but you had to just get like several people with several game cubes and several adapters that plug into the bottom, and just run Ethernet cables between them. Right. There was no. There was only one online game. So. Hmm. Oh well. And now I would like to show you the <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> shit cubes. He's waddling. I love shuffling. Yeah. Fat guy shuffling yeah. on the chair. It's just the best. <laughs> Controller. I need another day. Was that? It Probably sounded like he was earlier. asleep again, or someone else in the room sleeping. I don't know. But uh, GameCube controller was legendary. Okay, I love it. It's great. It's just. It's not as yeah, good yeah. as future someone, controllers, yeah. sure, but it's really good. Someone one might have fallen. And they're just there now. Oh, that really was. Well, that did take a lot out of him. He did. He yeah. 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 Like, did you see that? I think he moved he several was inches. Simmering with rage. Yeah, it was a rare action sequence. <laughs> he had to get his like... stump double. <laughs> I think it was just the emotional toll of the like unleashed rage. Emotional from just like... toll. Oh, like... <laughs> <laughs> this is the <laughs> controller's wireless receiver. Very you important. just put it on the GameCube. Shit cube. Like this, so... as you would look like a, a regular GameCube controller. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> Battery don't work. <laughs> oh, that is sausage fingers. Controller is piece of shit. Is he like too. reading the instructions? I <laughs> yeah, I, think I just so, yeah. remember the C stick reminded me of cheese. <laughs> you have to put in batteries. Batteries on the back. Uh huh. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And press on. And press on. <laughs> oh no! You don't. No, wait, not press on. Well, oh no. no. I that doesn't even look that. like a wave bird. The wave birds were gray, weren't they? I thought the, all the regular yeah, yeah, they were. controllers were. Wave bird yeah. were, were there blue ray words? <laughs> like I don't think so. Look, I think all the wireless controllers were gray. <laughs> you wave bird I think clear, yeah. <laughs> you mean pelican? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Even when you have the, even when you have <laughs> fresh batteries inside. It's a third party. Yeah. Guess what? What? It's a mad guess. The game. The shit cubes. <laughs> you remember? You get. Yeah, yeah. We are getting one hundred percent of his brain power in verbal form. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Oh, like he yeah, the background he took a beat there. Like, okay, let me get the name shit right. Cube. The shit cube, <laughs> as opposed to GameCube. The shit cube. Yes. Wireless controller. It's not good. 
Mm. I have a nickname okay. for him. I think it's a because of his control, that's why. Because yeah, on account of I, his impressive lexicon, I think we should call him Milk Shakespeare. Milk Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I I do love pissed off video gamer. It's such a great name. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's accurate. I think it's also. pissed off angry video gamer. Oh, of course. Sorry, okay. I wouldn't want to fuck that up. It doesn't even work. It's a third party. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh my goodness! Look at this CGI budget. Is this the part where he like there. infiltrates your computer and then beats you to death with a shit cube? <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah. This is the this is the part of the movie where he he, he manages to. Oh, it's to like the ring. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's like the it. ring. He just can't get through your fucking screen because he's too big. You have <laughs> now been infected with uh, angry video gamer virus. So, if you someone not, if someone you said not show his... my channel, subscribe to my channel in the next seven days, you will die. Someone said his English is probably better than your Russian, to be fair. What do you mean, to be yeah, fair? <laughs> like, what, yeah, yeah. What, 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 none of us are going to be like, oh, yes, we're good with Russian. He's, his voice no, is I'll, wonderful. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I love yes, his English. I would never want to change a his fucking English beat. English is beautiful. Oh my god, what's happening? Where? It, what's what, this? Oh my god, are we on the this, floor This could now? be oh. anything. I don't oh, know what's happening. What is? Are you throwing this in the hammer? I think he's oh, I think this is, oh, he's destroying it. I think this is what it looks like to gain insight. Oh, oh. careful! You don't no, hit your hand. Oh, right. he's destroying the controller. That, he's destroying yeah, the shit that killed the controller. Kind of that, that little bit there kind of reminded me of Movie Bob doing a green screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's slowed he's, himself he's, down. He's, he's, he's becoming a demon. His true form is coming out. Yeah. He's expended enough calories. <laughs> it's five calories for the day, and then it's time, time to go rage mode. I don't right. think that'll fix it. Hey, maybe. <laughs> that snarl, wow. He's just trying to eat it. <laughs> Take I like pieces it. of plastic and put it in his mouth. My rap is Man, for all those it. hammer hits, oh, yeah. also the controller managed to maintain its form it's somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's, it's not, yeah. Like, not that impressive. Shit, controller. He's on his window, window sill window? as well. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was like on a bench or something. The world must I, see I what I do. Yes. Someone walks by, is like, what the fuck? It looks kind of like <laughs> it always does. The long yeah. shot, no. roller, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is artistic. That really did take like, a lot he's out of breathing. Him. He is an autist. Is like a, oh yeah, he's tired piece. from the smash. This is Kino. This is yeah, this is, yeah. This should this be in cinema. Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. This is peak 2000s, people. This deserves a seven minutes standing ovation. He's so winded right now. <laughs> <laughs> he burned so many calories just now. It's got a flop. Guys, yeah, it's it's dark. Do you see? It's like 5 it's p.m. now. Dark, uh, <laughs> I need to know, <laughs> Law Masters. We need to know: is that window behind him the the same windowsill in which that event took place? Because wow, the law. Great boy into the windowsill. The legendary sill. <laughs> and he's so tired. He's he's like leaning back. On the chair now. As opposed to the shit like, cube yeah, will be good for a pillow. Video gamer mecha. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a second, hold on. If, if this is if he's doing an AVGN thing and this is about the Nintendo shit cube, why didn't he actually break the shit cube? Um, maybe, maybe he doesn't next. want to break it. He'll break the shitty controller. He don't want to break the cube. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't break the yeah. system, you'll still Besides, play it. it has good graphics and good hardware. Why would you? ATI my, my ass. Maybe it was too heavy and he wouldn't have survived the journey through like the fucking <laughs> awesome <laughs> 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 The Nintendo shit cube. It goes around $120. Do not buy the other <laughs> okay. things you can buy with that kind of money. All right, all right. Yeah, fair, all right, yeah, we can buy some pinups. And who would want to buy the Nintendo shit cube? Nobody likes it. Nobody. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Oh no. Why is he gonna destroy it, dude? Oh no! Don't do it, no. Not the game, <laughs> That's a really bad idea. Just stop really microwave it. Just yeah, stop acting really gamer, don't do it. Oh, this is cinema. His, his house is gonna explode. It's not even oh, on my <laughs> No, it's not on a light. Tired. I got it. Struggle. <laughs> Tw 
12 minutes. Wait, is it in there? For... Clearly not in there. That's what it takes. <laughs> Obviously not in there. <laughs> oh yeah, he, he shot it out of angle, so... Yeah, it's he not in there. He's lying shit to you. He's just leaving it up to your heart. It exploded. I hope he's okay. That That's was... wonderful. Oh, wow. Okay, so... I, I remember back in the day, because I, I was also an AVGN fan, we would make fun of people like this. It's like, you're clearly a ripoff. Like... Thinking back yeah. on it, this is so much better than than the slot we have now on the internet. Oh yeah, uh, not even yeah. close. Like fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, take I'll, I'll this guy like... over some FIFA guy fishing his next rare soccer player. Yeah, yeah. or like so, some what? some like E thought or some terrible fucking streamer or some like mm -hmm. oh my, there's so many terrible internet archetypes that exist he, right now. I, but this I guy is. Easily... Huh? I would pure. easily take terrible production value over somebody like bullshitting me. Yeah, manipulating yeah, the audience and, and yeah. just doing oh, all yeah. the things from the, soul. from the playbook. You know? What if, what if now this guy is an OnlyFans guy? It's hard to believe that he's <laughs> fighting to the death in Ukraine right now. Yeah, what do you mean? What do you mean? What? Guys <laughs> right now, just like, um, just like I actually did a quick look up. He moved. He moved to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, man. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, he moved to New York at some point. He lives in America. Um, he posted his COVID vaccination card online for some reason. There's like a bunch, of, there's like a bunch of internet archive pictures of him just like living a normal life now. He's just like a guy. No he's totally one fat looking like that lives a Damn, normal life. So he's not, he's not talking about the the poop s piet or something. The place poop, poop nope. station piet. Nope. Nope. Okay. No, he talk about Dick's box, well, uh, really uh, Nintendo sure Switch's so. piece of shit. You should switch <laughs> it to some place, not here. They also, should switch it to a console that is not shit, like games. <laughs> we got a because he's. We'll probably check it out another time, but he's got the shit box 360 review as well. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but for now, we are probably going to say goodbye, We're reaching the end of the stream, but not yet. We're gonna first see oh, what wait, everybody's. What? Uh, what were you expecting to go for? Twelve hours, Dev? Is that it? Well, you guys always go for like 18,000 hours, so why not? No, not every time. 72 hour yeah. episode. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I will say, I mean, we did it with our game. Actually a, and we'll see, I thought there was actually like a, another, another extra credits video queued up, but I mean, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, we spent one. a little while on that first one. Yeah. A, 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 little, a little longer than. <laughs> <laughs> also, you've never been here for this long. I didn't know that you would be willing to do that. What? Yeah, that's crazy. Sure, I have. Yeah. Literally you never. Shit yeah. tube. Literally, Hold no on. other time you have done this. He's not I gotta go like back DVDs. and look up. I gotta go back and look it up. Well, well in any case, not... Dev, why don't you go first? Tell people where they can find you and what you're up to. Uh, before I do that, I have one quick question, Muller. All right. What was the video we were supposed to watch? I'm kind of curious now. Uh, what was it? See here. What well, even yeah, we watched was the, We watched the one oh, we were supposed to watch. One? We had oh, potential. Oh, what was the other one? one? We had potential backup ones in case uh, we went through that one too fast. So you, you, there was the one that I spotted randomly that I have no idea is even worth. Touching. It's called Why I'm Lonely Gaming, which is pretty funny. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> a skill issue. Why and then there's a gaming? How Hard Should Quests Be, which sounds like it could be interesting. What does that even mean? Like, how difficult, how difficult quest should, a quest should be? be? Should a quest be difficult or not very Or much somewhere difficult. in between. <laughs> That's just your reptile brain talking. Like, quest yeah. be quite difficult. The lizard go. brain, Why and by I'm lizard I mean gaming. snake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dev, go okay. ahead. Um, oh, my name's Dev. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet everyone. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hi, Dev. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Dev. I think, Hi, I, Dev. I think I've spoken to every single one of you in here, except for um, um, Ixon. Yes. What's up, man? You've never hey, encountered the you? bullshit man on here before? That's crazy. Not oh, yet. No. Not in poison. Wow. No, no. Back I've seen you comment on a few of my videos, but I haven't actually talked to you before, so it's nice to meet you. Yeah, man. Wow, wait, gonna... you're the Das bullshit of oh. the short fat otaku comment section? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't think I've commented on a video. I stopped by a stream every now and again though. Oh um, it was like it was there was like one or two comments, I think like three years ago or something. Uh, wow, I remember you have every... a really good fucking memory. <laughs> I remember every comment. Oh, you're that guy who commented on every my comment. stream three years ago. I love that dude. <laughs> oh, Yo, your comments were so good. <laughs> um but yeah, I'm I'm Dev. I'm sure most of the chat knows who I am at this point. But 
the uh, the the channel's called Short Fat Otaku. Though I think I'll finally get I'm probably gonna finally name change it. It's probably time. I've been talking about name change for like five years now. I've just been too lazy so to do it. You're just gonna be dev now. Yeah, I'll just be dev. Why not? Oh. Um, in terms of what I have coming up, I'm making the big um. Hold on, hold on. There's always politics videos coming up, but this is not a politics channel. In terms of content that you guys might like, I'm still working on that big Suicide Squad video that will probably be a lot of fun once it finally drops. Mm. Right. I'm thinking maybe maybe next week. So yeah. And if you're uh, if the missus gets out of line, you could always tell her that you need more footage when you don't really need more. <laughs> <laughs> That'll show her. Oh God! So she, she she's currently grinding out just just to see how long it takes to 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 grind out the Joker unlock and the new DLC, right? Oh my God, bro! You can pay you're, you can pay ten dollars. You can pay ten dollars to unlock the Joker, or you can grind out thirty five levels. And it's like, well, how long yeah. does that really take? How does it really oh, take? That sounds bro, very no, unpleasant. It's going to be a long fucking bro, what, what, like... what did you do to your waifu, bro? You're punishing her. That sounds her. like torture, man. I, I, um, and, I mean, she, she said she's okay with it, so... I'm going to call yeah, her. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you're force okay her if she said it. no. Probably no. It's fine. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have forced her to do it if she said no. <laughs> of course not. Oh my God, I suppose we'll never find out. Yeah, we'll never... <laughs> yeah, who knows? It's strange. Well, link to channel in the description... Hey, <gasps> uh, I, well, I was going to say, since it was not really going left to right at this point, Weekend Warrior, what are you up to? Where can people find you? Hey, guys, it's me, Weekend Warrior. Uh, it, and it's been a hot minute since I released anything. And I'm actually also making a video on Suicide Squad, which Ooh. is funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm also uh, making a video it, on ShitCube. Yeah. ShitCube. ShitCube. <laughs> Very it's the funniest thing about Suicide Squad is that even the, while it's dying, there is a season one, episode two that just came out. So the the ride never plenty ends. of fun to be had is what you're saying. Mediocre. I had plenty of people saying you should stream it, and I was like, no, just, no, just no. no. You stream it, stream it. Let now. it die. Let it die. <laughs> it needs to be forgotten die, now. Bye bye, Suicide Squad. Die. I mean, they've already made a bunch of content for eight fucking episodes. To okay. release over the course of the next year. There's no Ugh. fucking way that's coming out. Yeah. Oh, she knows on the on the chat. Maybe I will make a video on Stellar Blade because I'm playing mm. it also. It's Are significantly you liking it? funner. Yeah, I Ooh. like the unlockable costumes. <laughs> that's Does it play yeah, that DVD? makes sense. It plays DVD and it plays Blu-ray. Oh, DVD, Blu-ray, oh, and oh, HD good. DVD. <laughs> I like it. It plays DVDs. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Oh, it was a yeah. pleasure, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah. Theo, what are you up to? You make videos now. What's what's in the uh, pipeline? Yeah, I've I've been stuck in development on a, a thing for a while because of personal circumstances. Suffice to say, I'm working on it. We we'll be there at some point. Have you got any clues oh. as to what it's about? Any bait? Any um, teasing? Variants. You know, when like you roll a die and it comes up one when you wanted a six, and how that makes you mad. It's about that. Ooh. Wait. And what can you bait people in with of the things that you have done? What's out right now? Um, a couple of videos on, on, you know, the action video games. I think one of them's pretty good. One of them's okay. Uh, they're on a channel that's mine. I want to tell Theo you said that. Uh -oh. Hey. Speaking Come on, you can't <laughs> tell him I'm talking shit. Come on. I thought this was a safe space. <laughs> it's a shit cube space. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll be back to it soon, you know? Beautiful. Uh, John, what are you up to, sir? I can think of something you could talk about, but I'll leave it to you. Yeah. yeah. I'm John Graham on YouTube. People know me for making RB and the Chief. And uh, I make cringe machinima, because we all know machinima is unwatchable garbage. But I do it anyway. Yeah. And I'm, I'm making a new show now called Hard Justice, which is a hard-boiled cop show done with Halo Reach on original Xbox 360 hardware. And I made the first episode of it. I put it out. It's an hour long, and I have an amazing voice cast. And you might just recognize a few voices Maybe. in it. Maybe. So uh, <laughs> check it out. Oh, subscribe. Sorry. All that bullshit. You know how it is. <laughs> Do it. And, uh, Do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, links in the description. Uh, Indigo Gaming, are you here? I wouldn't want to... Oh, yes, you are. Yeah, I'm here. Beautiful. <laughs> what, what, where can people find you? What are you up to? 
Uh, still working on the stuff I mentioned last week. Basically, um, yeah, working on a shorter follow-up video, just kind of a little bit on the figuring out the scope of my uh, video, but it'll be about the business end of what kind of killed the initial Fallout series before it was bought by Bethesda and why. And then long-term going to be uh, probably like a three-hour video that may or may not come out this year, which will be my hopefully uh, continuation and finale of my cyberpunk uh, genre series that's gone over all basically all cyberpunk media from like the 60s to now basically so the fourth and final part is going to come out at some point oh, cool. those are my big big things that are on the on the horizon now awesome possum <laughs> reference also uh we just had a meme hot off the presses here she is <laughs> made in real my time. games my consoles <laughs> My shit. My shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, it's too good. <laughs> Look at him. If you zoom in, he's got his little point and stick. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his shit. It's not fitting right. <laughs> Is that his orange juice on the other hand? Yeah. Yeah. Orange juice, right? <laughs> the little plugs behind him. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Cube. Very good. Um, yes, uh, Das, is there anything you wanted to maybe mention, maybe talk about in any way, shape, or form? Uh, nope, I got nothing. Sorry. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Bringy Rags, anything you guys wanted to mention in any way? Nothing I'm ready to mention yet. I'll just leave that there for now. Um, you know the deal. Just working. Very <laughs> well. Uh, all I'll say is that, uh, the update for now is the next week... The plan is to finally do the thing that we wanted to do for a while, has been alluded to here and there. And that thing is having probably what's going to be a pretty long stream doing a huge tournament of loads of characters from all different IPs having a series of 1v1 battles and running the whole thing based on votes given by the cast we will have and points and probably some influence from you at chat figure out who will be the winner of the uh, I guess I guess the, the ultimate showdown. That's how it would be called. That's what we would say. There's going to be uh, a whole explanation before we start up to make sure we understand what is being called the rules. We'll do our best to make it somewhat consistent. Um, there's going to be three white classes so that we don't end up having Homer Simpson fight Magneto. I feel like that might be unfair. But uh, <laughs> at the same time, there's probably going to be unfair fights anyway. But it's all going to be characters from fiction. Should be rather fun. And so, uh, you know, get yourselves excited for that next week. And until then, who knows what things will come out. <laughs> People are like, how is that unfair? It's like, what? I don't know. I guess uh, Hoba can pull it off. He has his gun. No, the gun one work. Plastic gun, right? From, uh, what was it? Uh, X-Men 3, they have plastic guns. I That's think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. And they have them in, um, what's it called? Uh, X Men Days of Future Past. I think they have plastic guns as well. Uh, Maybe. In any oh, case. Yeah, I only remember them in the prison cell scene. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wooden gun. Yeah. That's unfair to Magneto. In any case, that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to head out now. Uh, mm. Super Chats will be answered in their own little section. We've got plenty of them coming out week by week. And um, possibly more surprises as time goes on. Who knows? But for now, bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.